Good Tuesday morning, everybody. John and Lance along with Dell here with you on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. And off we go here. A lot of Cougs and a lot of Astros talk today. We went to the game last night, and boy, what a – that place, we set up – I was, you know, I was, I'm a man of the people, obviously. We sat up in the corner. Um, well, there's no bad seats. There. Look, at, there's not a, I mean, there is I mean, frankly, literally. It, frankly, it's not built for what it needs to be. It needs to have more seating above it because the Cougs are big time now. Yeah. You need to be able to pack. I don't know. It's a perfect place. Oh, no, it is. I mean, but you'd it's like to have best, more. It's our best arena, period. You'd like to have more seating available. Well, you're saying it's the best because it's snug. Yeah, I'm you're, saying you're on a, the action, like you're seeing everything. Yeah, I mean, but it 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 it, it but makes you even because of how snug it is, because of your proximity, because there's not a bad seat. I mean, everybody's really into it. No, you're really into it. Yeah. But you know, I used to go to Hoffines Pavilion during Faisal and Majama games on a regular basis, and uh, I mean, it's it's different. I mean, they've done some things, obviously, with the concourse. They've turned yeah. those areas into you know lounges and VIP stuff or whatever it is, Cougar clubs, whatever. But um, it's still fundamentally that's that's where Dream played. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean Dream well, and Clyde no. played in the same thing. They have not made. They changed the seating, but the structure itself it's no different. Yeah, right. It's a it's much different than Hoffheinz was. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's a, it's the same. It's location. different, and the, the interior design yeah, is different. A lot different. But in terms of the spacing of seating, it still can't go any higher than it is. And there are games you wish it could because man. You could probably sell another. Well, you know th- that what there, a job Kelvin Sampson has done to bring this program. Yeah, back. seriously, he re- really has. So there was standing room only. I mean, it, it there in where we were, there is a giant. I don't. It, it looks like it's just a countertop, and then it's and anybody can just come and stand there. And even where it's just roped off by you know uh, just regular stanchions, whatever. It's it's four, five, six, seven deep of people just standing and watching the game. There are so many standing room only seats yeah. that it it does bring it. Uh, it does make it. It is just so good though. The the and here's the deal is it's so Kelvin Sampson has made it so that the most exciting part of the game is when the Cougs are on defense. <laughs> it really yeah. is. I mean. Yeah, you f- there's an electricity to every time. It, it's true when they're on defense. I mean, I never really thought of it that way, but it is true when you have a great defensive team. You always like seeing when your offense comes on the field and anything, right? Yeah. But but sometimes there you can't wait to see the pitcher work. You can't wait to see uh, the 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 Ravens from 2000. The 85 like, Bears. Yeah, I mean, it was just, you, there's certain yeah. defense like, man, I love when they're on the field. And it is this, like that, I guess. It is like that. It, it in the offense. And it's almost like football in that when the Cougs have the ball, everybody sits and everybody's quiet. And then as soon as it's going the other way, everybody stands up and gets and goes crazy. It's it's like offense at work. But, you know, you don't have to do that in basketball, everybody. But But even still... They they do, and the Cougs they they have their flaws. There's no question about that. It went, you know, in the first half, they were they had eight baskets, eight for twenty seven, or eight for twenty eight, and they were the you know, and Iowa State was nine for twenty eight or whatever they were. It was it was like oh my goodness, it's just not. I mean, good luck scoring on the Cougs in the first half. They're an unbelievable defensive team. They usually set the tone defensively they are going to you know jump out to their lead in the first half based primarily or strongly on their defense and the second half sometimes it well, loosens up a little well, the bit, last time they played iowa state it was like 14 to 2 iowa state so they yeah, yeah. well at that in their building not in not in the cougs building right. this building but they're not going to give up a lot of points in the first half they set a tone and then usually can boat race teams in the second half which is what happened here the, iowa state was leading i don't know if they still are i think they are they're leading the nation in turnover percentage third in turnovers forced and and they can they can play defense as well so that the cougs struggled offensively is not surprising it's what the cougs do though they miss i've never seen a team how is it we were there you know with uh elmer and you know and kathy from from wildcat and we're just like, my wife is like, man, you should, you should hear him watching these games. I scream at them because of all the chippies that they miss. This oh. this team misses so many under the basket, 
what you appear to be rather, you know, Jawan Roberts. Sometimes he just doesn't have much touch. He, you know, no, what, he doesn't have any. He, he doesn't right have. Back. He doesn't have much. I, I'm being nice. And Javier Francis as well. It's like the big guys. You know, I think JoJo Tugler is going to be their next. Is you know when, I will say this, of all in this run of all of the guards that they've had, Jamal might be the best. Jamal is, and he's kind of unassuming in the sense that, like, he doesn't look like a pro, a typical pro guard in terms of what you're used to seeing. He's got elite leadership skills yes. and personality and intangibles. Like, he is the heart. He is the heartbeat of the Houston Cougars. If you meet him, he's one of the most impressive people you'll ever meet. But there's, but he's gotten way better as a as a as an offensive. Yes. player. he's gotten so much better. I think playing next to some of the offensive players he's played next to the last couple of years has really helped because he's got a confidence. I mean, he had it last year, too. You could see it last year. But he's not afraid to take over games when he needs to. And he's a he's a viable – you know, I think he's a viable second-round pick in the draft. And and But he's going to be an extraordinary success in life. Yes. I don't period. care what he does. He yeah. is going to be – he is. He is. He's extremely impressive. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go at the end of the first round. But he is he is the reason he's the reason that they're where they are right he's now. He's a great conduit between Kelvin Sampson and the team. Yeah. I think. But you look at I mean, how rare is this, John? Uh, Iowa State, I, I was like, man, they were hitting threes yesterday. Oh my God. They did, Gilbert is they were nine of seventeen. They they yes. shot fifty two point nine. Houston shot twenty nine point two, seven of twenty four. Do the math on that. And I mean, you know, that's that's a six point differential there, and you think how did Houston how did Houston win this game? Well, they had twelve more free throws made. They forced sixteen turnovers to sixteen assists for Iowa. You know, for Iowa well, State and Iowa State dominated the board. And Iowa State didn't shoot. Iowa State what? shot fifty three percent, John, from fifty two fifty three from three. They shot only forty one percent for the game. So their two point percentage. Yeah. Was crap. Well, I mean, they couldn't go. make a they they couldn't make baskets inside the line. Oh uh, well, and and listen, Gilbert and Jones outside. I'm telling you what, Iowa State's going to be a hard out. Whoever they're, they're probably a two seed, um, or, or if they're a three seed, they're uh, dangerous for one and the two. Oh, they're going to be a tough, tough out in a, on a neutral oh, yeah. site no, because no Gilbert can fill it up. I don't know why he ever takes Momsolovic out of the game. I didn't understand that at all. He, the kid, can create his own shot, and I just didn't get. I didn't get what he was thinking there. He put him on the bench for a while. It just didn't make any sense to me. Uh, and I was like, "Thank you, thank you for keeping that kid off well, the floor." Well, yeah, I mean, he was one of the guys who wasn't making threes, though. He was zero for three and only three yeah, for but, nine from the field. But, but, but he he could make what the twos. he does. He can make twos. Yeah, he made three baskets, but he's active too. Yeah, I mean, he's. You know, it's it's crazy. You show me a game where the other team shoots. 53% from three and out rebounds you by nine boards. Yeah. I would think you there's no way you won. And and it's so unusual to be, for them win. to be out rebounded because they're such a tenacious. That was just that was just a lot of fun last night. That was for first. Yeah, they got place. beat on the offensive boards, which almost never, never happens. happens. Right. Exactly. And and here know, they and then they win by eight. And they won by head. Well, they're just so tenacious. Houston shoots twenty nine percent from three. The opponent shoots fifty two point nine. They get out rebounded by nine and they win by eight. And and listen, it wasn't like they were open. It looks, oh, Iowa State knows how to move the basketball now. I mean, the the, the Coug, they got some looks, and Gilbert and Jones were knocking them down. John, this game yesterday, one of the things I was thinking is this is the reason that yeah, it's harder. It's harder in the Big Twelve because you're facing an Iowa State on a on a Monday. But you know what? It also prepares you yeah, for right. the postseason. That's like right. you're gonna you'll be more battle tested coming through the Big Twelve, even when Texas and and Oklahoma leaves, you're still going to be more battle tested. There's no Samson about. Uh, there's no uh, doubt about that. Here's Kelvin Sampson on the win last night against uh, Iowa State. What? Why? Uh, what? Tells us he's got. He's up in the arm. Well, I said, I said, Kelvin, and you were like, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, okay, we'll get to Kelvin in just a minute here uh, because Dell's up. Dell's upset in there for some. For, what, Not upset. I was doing something else i didn't hear anything you said until I samson said, at the end I, I said i didn't hear you until the end oh okay all right uh anyway great win by the Cougs last night Maybe number two in john the country little, now show john a little more respect you're being yeah. very disrespectful to john thank you you told him you said i got it you did like john cena said i can't hear you 
No. And he doesn't your, do that. Your hand thing by the ears. I don't. Is do that a that. John Cena thing? I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't see. It's you. I can't see you. Oh, okay. like this? Like this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry I, he took that from Angel Reese. No, uh, actually, yeah. he's been doing that for a long, long time. They all got that from him. Angel Reese. And Reap. actually, it was actually done before John Cena. He took it from somebody else. I think I from Dikembe. Dikembe did that. No, no, no. no. Uh, anyway. Uh, Number two in the country now. UConn's number one. Utah, UConn's going to be. UConn could go back to back here. UConn, UConn, is, UConn is considered a uh, a relatively big favorite to win a national championship. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. I saw the odds on that, and I'm like, they they feel fairly good about <laughs> Utah winning a national championship. Well, yeah, and that's hard to tell though. I mean, I'm going to tell you what. You're right about the Big Twelve. I mean, you, last year you go through the, you know, and you're playing East Carolina or whoever that you're playing. I forget who's an American, whatever. But you're going, you know, and it's like, wow. And then are you ready for the, they're going to be ready. They got, they went to Kansas. They went to Iowa State. They, you know, they're going to Baylor this weekend. Kansas is coming here. Texas came here and you took care of that business. I mean, you're going to be ready because you've been playing good teams, really good teams. One of the things they have to do is make sure that their big guys can make some free throws. Holy cow. Well, that's not that's not, the case. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. There's you can wish in one hand and crap in the other, and you can see which one gets full first. Yeah. But I got a feeling the missed free throw He's hand gonna, is going to get full first because that's what it's been now for four years. Well, bigs don't make free throws. Here's, uh, I think this is Kelvin Sampson right now. If that's Del, what the Del, word Del, can, Mr. Dell, can, can we get that or no? Or don't you just throw to the clip? Just throw the <laughs> well, you had two teams that were really tough. I, I, I want to give a shout out and uh, much respect to Coach TJ and uh, Iowa State. I mean, that is that's the toughest team as there is in America. When you, when you beat Iowa State, you know you're, you're, that's an accomplishment because they're so good and they're so tough. So in this league, we just played the number six team in the nation. I just heard you say we got the number 11 team on yeah. Saturday. Uh, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll feel good about this one. No celebration. Feel good about this one. And then uh, get a little time off for our kids. That, that Saturday, Monday, bounce back is a little bit tough when you're playing teams like uh, Iowa State and Houston. Yeah. It, uh, but it's different. I mean, that's what you, that's what you're in for. But that's what uh, that's what's so fun about this season right now. And number two in the country, when you're leading the Big Twelve with as many good basketball teams as there are, this is uh, <clears throat> you know you're doing you're doing something. Whether or not you know, the, here's the thing: in that building, I don't know the I don't know that Purdue, Connecticut, Arizona. I don't know anybody can beat them this year. Well, they can. But you're not playing your home games in the tournament. They can. I mean, the flaws are still the flaws. The best teams are going to are gonna give you – you can't have your flaws. Like, you can't miss a bunch of free throws. You can't – you can't – well, you got to win on the board. So, you got to play the way you play. Hmm. You can't have one of these. Like, to beat a UConn, we saw them lose to Alabama, who was a good team last year. And that was with a very good Houston Cougar team. We were – was at the game in Cincinnati where they almost lost to Cincinnati there. And that was – you know, if you don't do the things that you do, Kelvin Sampson's built it out where he goes, okay, hmm. we're not going to have a good offense or we're not going to have a good shooting team. But, and this is why I always say there's so many different ways to win. There's not one set way to win a game. And Kelvin Sampson realizes, okay, we're not going to have the best shooters, but we're going to get, we're going to beat you on the boards. We're going to turn you over and we are going to, uh, um, get easier baskets because of our turnovers. And we're going to defend and make you take bad shots. You can't have one of those areas break down if you're not going to, and if you do, then you got to make more free throws you, than you usually do. You got to be mm. a better three point sh shooting team than you usually are. So Houston has actually created more margin for error in a way because of how they play. They actually don't have to shoot well and they can still defend, and you're not scoring either. Um, however, to win at the highest, highest level, man, you got to like. They're gonna to win a national championship. The Cougs are gonna have to be better offensively. That's well, all there is to it. They're, they're Crier, I mean, they're so, be playing at home. They're so guard, guard heavy with 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 Shed and 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 Crier and, and you wish with, you had a big that Sharp. you could just go to and he could go get yeah, his own baskets. Yeah. But they're all you know they're all guys that are rim runners or dirty work guys. Well, that's a, all right. We're gonna break. We got so much to do. We got a lot of Astros talk in this show. We got some good we, stuff with that. We Astros. got some good. Outside of here, there was some good college basketball going on, too. 
I mean, there were some there were some hands thrown last night. <laughs> we will talk about and a lot more right here. You first, you're talking tequila. Well, I'm talking about Maestro Bell, and I was uh, I was at uh, the Blood Brothers 10 year anniversary the other day uh, on Sunday, and had a great time with Robbie and and Kui and Ter Ter and those guys. It was it was awesome. And somebody uh, I saw, so our guy Rhino, who listens to the show, he was there with a girl who's big foodie in town, and she was talking about how she never. This, I swear to God, this is a true story. She said. I never drink tequila. I am not a tequila drinker. I used to have this, you know, an unnamed tequila that you guys have all had. Just the burn in the throat and the chest when I was younger. I'm like, okay, I never want this again. And she said that she had a Maestro do Bell for the first time. Somebody brought a Maestro do Bell out to their table where they were, and they had a shot together. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I couldn't believe how smooth it was. And Rhino wanted her to come tell me the story because – he said he speaks for them i said isn't it unbelievable and it really is you've never tasted anything like it if you're used to the burn of tequila then you've never had good tequila and you've definitely never had maestro do bell maestro do bell is made with a, they make a variety of tequilas but all of them are distilled properly with great aging process and that and they have a great flavor it's always smooth and it's great by as a sipping tequila or in a cocktail it doesn't matter wherever fine liquors are sold you got to get your hands on a bottle of maestro do bell Welcome back here on ESPN 97.5. There's nothing in there. Welcome back to ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. John and Lance here with you uh, here on the show. 713-780-3776 is the number. 
If you would like to get in here and uh, hang out with us, you are more than welcome to do that. Texas A&M Commerce and Incarnate Word. Is it Commerce or Kingsville? Uh, is it, it was Commerce. Texas A&M Commerce. Oh, Commerce. Yeah, yeah why did you tell... Right. You texted Ballard and told him his yeah. school was throwing hands. I said, "Nice job, your teeth." Never mind. <laughs> well, wait, say it was was commerce, Kingsville, commerce. same thing. Yeah, commerce, Kingsville, commerce, same th- Kingsville, same thing. Comma, Kingsville. Yeah, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> same thing. Um, so uh, they were throwing hands. It. Th- this is the. the wait. This is where we congratulate each other on a nice game. Yeah. This is where we show fellowship. This is not where we throw hands. What is what happened to America? I've seen a kid get punched in the stomach before. We've yes. all seen in high school. Yeah. That one kid sucked the other kid in the stomach. Right. Yeah, this one got a little ugly. This Man, one this lasted. Went, this, this I went. mean, mostly it was a basketball fight with a lot of you know, squaring up and people wanting to get to other people and but then nothing happened mostly. But the guy who took the worst of it was just some manager who was trying to stop things who got like trucked and got a face full of blood and yeah, it was ugly. Uh, Texas A&M Commerce and Incarnate Word. I say it was ugly. I, I mean, it wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. There will be some suspensions in that. But, yeah, that happened uh, last night. Our Houston Astros, one of the cool things I saw on, online yesterday was the the battle, a live BP between Alex Bregman and Josh Hader. And I tell you what, Josh Hader has created some excitement uh, around the ball club. There are pitchers, you know, Josh throws some gas. And you talked about seeing that video where the pitchers are standing around watching J- Josh Hader throw, and Hader and Bregman was pretty cool to see them scrapping in a uh, in a live you know in a live at bat. Um, Bregman said is saying all the right things. He's saying, "Man, I am in great shape. I well, feel great." Well, you, well, you want to hear Bregman? I do. I do. So this or is, Kelvin Sampson. Here's either way. something. Well, I don't know if we can hear Kelvin Sampson. Um. I don't know that. I don't know how he's got it ready because I put it in there. Uh, you got ready? It? Yeah. Del's 23. That a pro. 23 pounds he's put on this offseason. Well, he did look bigger, but 23. 23 pounds. When Pena was asked about it yesterday, he said, I put on three. Uh, well, Pena couldn't. Pena, can, yeah, no, don't do that. That's not what he did. Here is Bregman talking about the 20. Now, it sounds pretty natural because he lost. Like, here, here he is talking about. I think about, I've done that since the draft started, but that's. Yeah, no but one that's, talks yeah, about me like, uh, oh, look at this. It's great. It's great. You're like, Alex Bregman, yay. Oh, and my wife talking about it. And then my wife, yeah. And then my wife says like, hey. And I'm like, it should be like, hey. Hey. You put like we do for Bregman, like, congrats. But no one says that about it, me sitting in a chair. Is it going to that bubble, as you like to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, my yeah. bubble is starting to really get pop. You got, yeah. you do. My wife said you have got a flat butt, and I'm like, no, oh, that I'm working on popping. some. I'm working on some burger chine right now. Yeah. Well, here is Bregman talking about putting on uh, 23 this off season. Some years is different than others. Like some years, I'll put on maybe 15 or 10, but. Um, our job now is to, I'm, at, I'm right around like 204, 207, it fluctuates, but I'm trying to keep it as close to that for for the full season as possible. And um, last year I, I maintained really well. I was, I, I ended the year at like 196 or seven. And then the two weeks you take off during the off season, you lose a little, little bit of weight just because um, you're just not in it. And, and kind of relaxing a little bit but um as soon as we started training boom it, it got back on and i feel feel faster stronger and and um obviously gain weight with that you so, don't want to gain weight and be slower and and kind of stuck in the mud you want to be ready to roll so so quest a couple of things first of all i see this goes against everything that you just said when you sit around and relax and you don't do anything you lose weight that's what in, now, as opposed to what you're going well, through. Well, his right relaxing now. is not eating a lunch and watching a TV show before well, you be. write up a you bunch of players. You don't know what his relaxing is. His relaxing is probably going to a beach or doing something where he's throwing a football, running around. Uh, I don't know how Alex Bregman relaxes. Yeah, I don't. I think- don't. I can tell you, it's probably not with spicy tater tots. With <laughs> Jesus, or maybe his natural weight isn't 
his baseball weight, so he has to put on weight to play baseball. See, that's what I'm thinking. He, he talks about every and he, he could is be, a, a littler guy. Yeah. yeah, and he could be one of these guys also who lose weight during the season, which actually happens a ton. I'm always yeah. shocked when I hear how light some football players get at the end of the year. Yes. It's like Darius Leonard was 218 pounds when he was an All Pro. Yeah, 218. At so, linebacker. so, so here's the problem though. We saw Pena put on weight last year, and yep. what happened? He lost his power. We saw. Remember when Steve Slayton ran for a thousand his yeah. rookie year, and then he put he came back and put weight on because he wanted to be able to handle the yeah the the which is always it, 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 running is Alex back, Bregman it's, Steve Slayton it's counterintuitive. Well, I hope not. <laughs> well, I hope not. That guy ended up having a narrowing of the spine and was out of football forever after that. Well, right. That's I'm hoping he's not Steve Slayton. I hope he's not Steve. I don't think Jeremy. I don't think it was about weight. I think how many Jeremy people swing, know who Steve Slayton is and well, is listening right now? Every a lot of people. Really? Unless you're yeah, unless you're thirty. So yeah, if you watched the Texans back then, you know who he was. Well, we got a lot of listeners. Rush. That was two thousand nine. Daddy, who's Steve Slayton? Well, Steve Slayton was two thousand nine. I mean, I know it was 14 That's years 14. ago. The 14 year olds don't know Steve Slayton. No. I will guarantee you. No, neither, no, neither probably the 18, 16 or probably 18 year olds. 20, yeah, probably 22 and under don't right. know Steve don't Slayton, know Steve actually, Slayton. now that I think about it. I West, guess you're right, but. But, okay, another great West Virginia player that you always poo poo. Yeah, well, because they're not durable. Um, but, no, I think that. Uh, I don't think Alex. I think Jeremy Pena, his thing was had more to do with the swing plane and stuff like that. I don't think it was the weight or the muscle. I think Alex, I think Jeremy Pena was because a lot of guys actually end up hitting better with muscle. It just depends on how functionally, you know, flexible you are and all that stuff. Alex Bregman obviously loses weight during the season. He must because he's already talked about 23, 10, 15. Yeah. Like he gains weight every off season, which is he talking about? Okay, so he's saying he lays around and doesn't do. Or, is first, he gaining muscle or bad weight? No, he said for two weeks. The first two weeks you lay around, you don't do much. Yeah, and so you lost. He lost a little bit more. Well, try five. Well, months. When I lay around, try I don't five do months. anything. Yeah, I, I don't lose. Uh, yeah, what? no, that's not possible. That's, no, now it's true. When I was younger, I could. You could do whatever you want a lot of times. Yeah, and it's like it's, he's almost thirty now, though. Yeah, are and you he had guys a kid? Could, are, just to be clear. Are you two comparing, comparing ourselves? your your off-season regimens to Alex Bregman? Yeah. And well, you're look, trying to figure out how it doesn't work for you, but he loses weight when he doesn't yeah, do anything? that's exactly I right. I like how you your little your your fun little character you've created called Voice of Reason. I'm just trying to figure this out. This is yeah. like, this is your worst character where you try to decipher what we say is a voice of reason because we're not reasonable people. Is, you, just, would you rather have this character where I just play sound bites of you saying silly things? I'm just, which no. character would you? Which, Lance's so, which character is worse? The one. <laughs> did where did I you can, see I got John into it though? Yeah. Now John's like, because, you know, I, I don't ever. Do I this. can just keep track of all the silly things you say and play them in a medley. Which one is worse? No, which character? I like, <laughs> that. I like that one. I like For that him? one better. No, yeah. no, no. I like the character. Yeah, of course, calling him, calling us out on the spot is pretty good too. I like. Ich bin der von Klon und Stein no, I like uh, I like Man of uh, I like the other one. So like which is that? Is Taylor Swift German song? What is that? <laughs> yes. I believe so. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know. It doesn't sound like that. Doesn't sound like anything she would sing. Honestly, no. It sounds it does like to me. It sounds That's like a, she sounds like to me. No, it sounds like something another charismatic person used to say. Oh, ow! Yikes! Wow! I'm talking about Angela. Oh he no! Just, he just put. Hitler I'm talking about Angela here. Merkel. What are you talking about? Oh, no. see, yeah, okay. Merkel. That's fine. Let's I guess. break it and stay on time. Nah, we're not doing that. But first, okay, let's talk about. We got we got stuff on the other side here, including a women's college announcer, or was that a coach? She was a former coach. She's an announcer now. She's an announcer now. <laughs> this is different than anything you're going to hear ever on ESPN but we'll do that on the other side first you got underdog well and so underdog the great thing about underdog fantasy is that they want you to make money I mean they really do that's why they're making it a hundred times your original play they've got that available for you on your pick em challenge I've told you about the pick em challenge you can you know, basketball's in full swing so you're you're playing the NBA you're watching the Rockets the Rockets get ready to roll on Thursday you're gonna you're gonna jump in with the Rockets well here's what you do you pick a player on your team and the other team, and and you can have as few as two or as many as five, and you take a look at all the stats they have available. Every player that they have on there has multiple stats available. Find one that you think is a little soft and go either higher or lower on it. And, you know, study the game. If you know the game, you're going to have a great opportunity. Go higher 
or go lower. And if you win just two, you win three times your money. If you win all five, you got a chance to win 100 times your money. But you've got to make a deposit with promo code Lance. When you do that, they'll match your first deposit up to $100. And you'll have a special pick in there, which is going to help you win and help you towards getting to that big payout. But you've got to play and you've got to use promo code Lance. So make sure you use promo code Lance and make sure you get that special pick for a chance to win 100 times your original play only on Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com or download your app today. Must be 18 or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms and conditions apply. If you feel like you have a gambling problem, call 800-GAMBLER or go to ncpgambling.org. Hey, time to talk about my bookie. All right. Where is your casino? Because, <clears throat> listen, still a lot of great stuff to bet on on the sports book. It's, it's awesome. Still a lot of great stuff. So you've got baseball coming up. You've got basketball. You've got the men's tournament, which is so much fun to bet on. All of these things you can still bet on. But what about live casino? You can play slots, table games, Texas Hold'em, and a lot more. Tons of cool games. Enter the live casino with real, in-the-flesh dealers on the poker, blackjack, baccarat, and roulette tables. I'm someone, maybe maybe you're like me, I'm, I, don't, I hate when it's a computer. I'm not sure that I trust it all. But when I see a live dealer giving out, out cards, that's a different story. Okay, so you're going to see a live dealer dealing your blackjack, dealing your poker, dealing back baccarat, all of these things. Just go to mybookie.ag, promo code BET975. You got to put that in there. Whether you're a new uh, customer to mybookie or you want to reload as an existing com uh, 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 customer, all you need to do is go to mybookie.ag, but you got to put in promo code BET975. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, mybookie. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John Granado and Lance Zerline. Hey, the Cougs win last night. Reginald uh, brings this in. He said, may have been a bit of hyperbole, but the broadcaster said last night that Jamal Shedd could coach the team for a couple weeks if there was some sort of emergency where the coaches yeah. weren't available. I don't even think that's not true. No. I think he has that kind of respect, too. <clears throat> we also had this. KJ said, John Granado is a man of the people. He was frolicking with the poors like myself last night at the Cougars game. Yep, yep. Frolicking the with people. the poors? Yeah, I was frolicking. Is that I your nickname in high I school? Saw, <laughs> I saw KJ. I saw Andrew Carlson. 
I saw I saw a bunch of people. Bill Alford. I mean, uh, but they're Plot. always Kooks. Yeah, you're only I saw Chad Kooks from H R P. You're HR&P Kooks when it's convenient for you. You what? You're Kooks when it's convenient and they're winning. They're always Kooks. No, I'm always Kooks. They're Tony Levine Kooks. You weren't a Tony I'm Levine Kook. This I'm. You, you weren't a Tony what? Levine Kook. You yes, were I was. Yes, LSU. You were yes, Oklahoma I was. State. Tony Levine actually was the first guy to offer J T. Oh well, okay. Yeah, yeah. And J T. turned him down for Rice. Guy. It was a big Tony Levine guy. He also pulled it out from under after the kid from <laughs> Waco said, uh, "Accept." Well, he couldn't. He's like, I, "I got a quarterback. You didn't accept." I mean, so yeah, yeah. So, but uh, then were you a fan of him? Well, yeah, I was still a fan of him. Yeah. JT made a decision. Tony had to make a decision. Tony had the to game make was his, the game. His call. That's yeah. all. Yeah, but does a man of the people originate the term "the pores? I didn't. Did I originate that? I, I don't think. know where it came from, other than you. John invented it nationally. <laughs> Well, I, the only person I've ever heard that from is you, and then people have like latched onto it. But I didn't hear the pores until you said it. Oh well, I mean, I'm with the pores. I mean, See? what am I going to do? So, or, I'm or one you of you. They're not poor if they can get to you. a cougar game. Or you just I'm say one, I'm one of the great say, unwashed. Or you just say I'm, in I'm the at the game up in the corner. Uh, you, man of the people's better than the pores. Okay. Don't, don't call people the pores. <laughs> That's got a very let the meat cake mentality. Uh, no. I'm with I'm with my people. Those are my people. The poor, the great unwashed, yes, <laughs> unwashed and poor. <laughs> yes. What Jesus. is this, Jesus? You gonna start cleaning some feet? Yep, I will. Yes, yes. Okay, I the, absolutely. The problem will. you're with tried your, at the game. The problem with your thinking is most people who are, I guess, in the category of the great unwashed don't refer to themselves as that. It's it comes from the, yeah, they're like the hey, we're just normal people. Yeah, we're just people. <laughs> it's you. You're the a hole. <laughs> yeah. No, they. We know. We know who, what we are. Mm. We know. Who we are. <laughs> We know. What, uh, we we got self uh, uh, a self awareness. Yeah. So, so la- was this last night? This happened. Yes, it was. Now there because the internet always has to take all the fun out of everything. Carolyn Peck is the woman in question. She's a former basketball coach, as you'll, as you'll hear her tell us. The internet has blamed it on her accent and said she was saying something else. But you can take a listen. It was the LSU A and M game. LSU, one of the best teams in the country. You meant we guys. We mentioned Angel Reese earlier in the show, I believe. Yep. Is but, she uh, British? Who? No, it's a different accent. That's she that from got New Zealand? Okay. No, she's a Southerner. So it's a Southern she's accent. She's Southern. During the game, at late in the game, here's uh, Carolyn Peck talking about staying in it. As a coach, I say, bitch, stay in this ball game. Stay excited. Stay enthusiastic. Pull your team through. Hold I don't on, care if the officials on. are telling you to sit hold down. Hold on. Hold on. Her How are you misunderstood? What they're suggesting is because of the context of stay in the game, stay in it, no matter what the ref tells bench. you. Bench. Bench. Stay okay. in it. She probably no. did because she wouldn't just say on a broadcast, bitch, <laughs> stay in this game. Well, let's Let y'all it. think to get your Wait neck broke and minute. all that stuff there. She must have said bench, but man, did it. Did I not hear the end? That wait, play it again. Listen and we'll the, see if they're if we're misconstrued. While you're laughing, this is, look, a, this is a well-respected coach. You think on a broadcast where she could get fired, she's gonna say, "Bitch, <laughs> stay in the game." That sounds like Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I told you already, stay in the game, bitch. Listen to the context and make a decision. As a coach, I say, "Bitch, stay in this ball game. Stay excited. Stay." Enthusiastic, pull your team through. I don't care if the officials are telling you to sit down. Yeah, oh, she's obviously you know what? Bench, she is, but bench. she just didn't use the end. This time, you got to use the. Usually, you don't use the end. <laughs> I N swear word. to God, you don't use the end word, but N- you do use the letter N when you say bench. And when 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 I heard this the first time, I said, "What does bench? she mean by?" What, what did she mean by tell, even if the officials are telling you sit down? Who tells you know, the, the, the girl on the floor to sit down? You know, oh. so she was referring to the bench. Stay yeah, because yeah. you know the officials when the Pull your team, team gets excited, they go wave you down and yeah. tell you to sit down and stuff. Yeah, well so, because they stand up and yeah, they, they crowd the floor and they tell the kids to sit down. So in this case, she meant <laughs> bench, bench. But, but Carolyn Peck in that accent, bench. <laughs> She's from Bench. Jeff- she's Stay in the game, Bench. She's from Jefferson City, Tennessee, so that accent oh, came out. Oh, yeah, you can't. She's got a mama somewhere. She's got a cinnamon roll recipe. Let that lady live her life. You I already got her. Paula Paula Dean already I, got in trouble. You got Paula. Let this lady say Bench. I wish she was saying 
I wish she was. I know. I know what you wish. I Carolyn mean, honestly, wants to, wishes to keep her stay job. Stay in the game. Yeah, the keeping the job is better with bench. Are if we, you listen to the context, it's clear what she's saying. Yes. But if you listen to the word, it's clear what it sounds like. <laughs> bench. <laughs> Stay kids, we're in the saying, game. kids, we're saying bench. If you're going early because you want to get dropped off early to get away from your parents, and she said it's, bench. Yeah, yeah, bench, 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 bench. She's, She's from, from Tennessee, yeah. sometime in the South. They say bench, bench. bench. They don't say bench. They say bench. There's you no such thing. Stupid bench. There's no. <laughs> this stupid bench over here can't fire up. Can't fire up nobody. Dumbass bench. Bench needs a new painting, you stupid bench. Stupid ass As a coach, bench. I say, bench, stay in this ballgame. Well, y'all's a dumbass I'm bench sorry. over here. She got Sitting me. there, crossing your legs at the same time. She doing needs- this nonsense. <laughs> stupid ass bench. I'm sorry. She needs to enunciate better. I'm sorry. She needs her own TV show. <laughs> bench. That is- bench. <laughs> See, I mean, I'll just I be mean, honest with you. <laughs> and the B, I mean, she hits the B so hard, too. B, do you hear that? Do it again, Del. Listen to the B. I mean, and she just blasts it out. <laughs> well, let's listen to the B pop. Bitch. What? <laughs> louder. Can't can't go louder. Till later. All right. That's why. Well, what is she? Now, how did you know she... What did what did the internet so the internet is are they trying to get her fired? They're probably just laughing. They like it. The internet. Well, the initial person who grabbed this like, what is going on here? And then everyone's like, well, that's her saying bench because they know Carolyn Peck, longtime announcer for women's college basketball. She's, she's not from gonna. she's from Tennessee. She's saying yeah. She's saying bench. Bench. <laughs> bench. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, she may need to be fired. Wait. I'm sorry. Listen to the B pop. I mean, she is saying it with her full chest. Bitch. What? That I mean, is, I'm I mean, sorry. I know she's saying am, she bench. might be saying to the bench. No, she may be talking to one person. One per- bitch, pull your team through. I don't care if they tell you to sit down. Well, that is. Did she say I don't care if they tell y'all to sit down or you to sit down? Well, I guess we have to hear the entire conversation. Okay, let's then. go. As a coach, I say, bitch, stay in this ballgame. Stay excited. Stay enthusiastic. Pull your team through. I don't care if the officials are telling you to sit down. Everything was singular. You, I don't care if they're telling you to sit down. She could have, she, she may have called, she may have been talking to a girl yeah. on the, on the, the One on girl, the bench. one particular girl. She may have been talking to <clears throat> one particular girl on the bench. Hey, bitch. <clears throat> All right, I'm we got to go back to it. ESPN right. 97.5 and 92.5. Listen to the bitch with John and Lance. <laughs> That's what we should be doing. That is what we should That's be doing. That's what we doing. should be doing. Uh, are we doing what did you learn oh, this week? Oh, we got some people want to talk about other Look stuff. Look at this. We can push that segment to a different time. Okay, we can push it. But All since right, everybody was off yesterday, and this is actually the first day of the week since yesterday was a holiday, yeah. we are going to do what did you learn this week in one sentence we'll at 8.15. Yeah, we'll 8 roll 15. it to 30. 8.15. All right, we'll do that. We're going to take all of these calls on the other side. Sam, Keith, Ryan, Dave, we'll get you all Oh, we have a little mix right and here match on of ESPN. topics. Good. 97.5 and 92.5. But right now, we got John Daspit. John Daspit, he's a man who was uh, – actually, he's got some Louisiana blood in him. And uh, and he's got uh, – who's his grandpa? Or he's got family who's like at the – Wimble at the at – the, the, the lawn club of uh, English Lawn Club. I can't remember what the name is. With Wimbledon. And he's all Texas up. And, I mean, he's got John Daspit's got, he's got family all over the place. He's got law firms all over the place. But he specializes in Texas. There's 10 offices here in the state of Texas. And that's important because many of you may know someone in San Antonio and Austin, Dallas, somewhere near the uh, – uh, ship channel somewhere headed out towards uh, maybe they're in Beaumont area and they've been hurt in an offshore accident. Uh, they've been hurt at a refinery. 
they've been hurt on the roadways. I mean, it doesn't matter where. If you've been injured due to someone else's negligence, John Daspit's going to make sure that your hospital bills get taken care of, that your um, your surgery, if you need one, gets taken care of, your physical therapy gets taken care of. Everything that needs to be taken care of that, are, that is not your fault, you shouldn't have to come out of pocket, and you should be compensated for your pain and suffering because in some cases, unfortunately, that pain and suffering is going to last you a long time and in some cases a lifetime. It's the sad reality, so you should be compensated for what you're going to go through uh, when – it was no fault of your own that it happened. It's it's my good friend, John Das, but he is ready to take your phone call with uh, uh, the biggest law firm here in the city of Houston for personal injury. It's 713-CALL-NOW. That's 713-CALL-NOW or go to DaspitLaw.com. We expect our information in real time. U.S. Med carries continuous glucose monitors, which provide real-time readings of blood glucose levels. U.S. Med is an approved provider for Medicare and over 500 private insurers. So call 888-665-0696 today for a free insurance and Medicare benefits check as easy as... That's 888-665-0696. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Wait, what? Add a Robinhood IRA on top, then they'll boost it by 3%. You can do that? And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. Is there a limit to the match? No limit. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfers subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. At the uh, game last night, HRMP was uh, front and center. Uh, they were sponsoring the uh, play of the game. There was all kinds of HRMP signage up there. Chad Plotkin was up there, sat near him in the stands. Just so much fun. Great Cougs. Mike Holly uh, played at U of H, left tackle. He was uh, a blocker for Andre Ware when he won the Heisman. Great in the community. HRMP is here for you. Also, big sponsor of the Ags here on our air. Just, just a great. This is a local company. Now, there's a lot of admin companies that are going to be national. They're not going to give you the same kind of attention that you're going to get here at HRMP, which is right here. They're going to come to your office. They're going to break down your business. They're going to give you the best deal that you can on the payroll and the HR and all the taxes and everything else that you're going to do. The technology second to none, but they're right here. All of your questions, you can go and see. They're right there on the Beltway. Beautiful facility, and you'll see all the technology that they have there. Do local. Be here. Here, if you're somebody that's looking for a payroll company, we got the best one, we think. HRP.net, 281-880-6525 or HRP.net. John plus Lance equals a damn good start to your day. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's John and Lance. All right. We got uh, full board, so let's get him in here. 8.15, we're going to do what you learned this weekend in one sentence. So let's go. Who's uh, first up? It is going to be Sam. Wants to talk about Alex Bregman. Hey, Sam. Hey, guys. Happy to be on the bench. Um, <laughs> just touching on Bregman's weight gain. I remember in 2021, he said before that season, he gained about 30 pounds in muscle. 
during that off season, and he ended up missing about 60 games, which is the most by far. Yep. I remember he also looked slower in the field, and I want to know y'all's thoughts on why he'd want to go that route again in a contract year considering that. Uh, thanks for having me on. Porky, hog, fat ass, double wide, butterball. He's Man. not any this of those things. He's actually show. in great, great, great shape. He's not any of those things. I think Joe. there is something, though. If you put on too much muscle, you lose flexibility sometimes if it's not done right. I remember when Donald uh, Hollis, former great at Lamar Consolidated and Rice Allen. Rice University. Um, he was at Oakland with the, or I don't know, L.A. Raiders. I don't know where they were at the time. And he had a strength coach when he was, like, famously big guy, 228 pounds, something like that, like 6'2", 6'3", 225. And he told me his uh, <clears throat> the strength coach, when he got to the, the Raiders, the strength coach made him lose weight so he could gain flexibility in his, in his pecs and his upper body so he was a more loose limb thrower. So he wasn't as tight in his upper body. So, I mean, there is, you know, you think about that with a swing, too. Now, granted, you don't want to have a long casting swing. but Well, he, he uh, doesn't have that. No, no, no. He's got as he's tight a shorter, swing as you tight, can. Yeah, yeah. He's a, no, he, he's got, like, uh, future generations will study Alex Bregman. Uh, people in the 2700s 20, will study Alex Bregman's swing. It'll be one of the swings that they study will be Alex Bregman's. Yeah. But, um. But you don't want to get too bundled up. You really don't. Like, you don't want to get too muscle-bound. you got to be able to – so, because if you get muscle-bound, it also can lead to tightness, lead to pull, <laughs> hamstrings, stuff like that. So We'll find out. Hopefully it's not a case. We'll see if it's the right thing to do. It wasn't the right thing for Pena last year. And uh, Pena has changed his batting stance, by the way. We saw it. He's resting his bat on his shoulder a little bit more like Michael Brantley did. So And he talked about it. He's not, a, he's not very outgoing. So, I mean, it's like – three word answers so it's not worth playing but he he said i basically changed he feels more comfortable to play and we'll see if he can't get a little bit more pop uh next up is dave dave's been waiting hey dave hey first off you guys are hilarious with the pitch and all that stuff but um listen real quick i just want to uh right or wrong i heard you guys talking about john cena and i can't see you and he's been getting credit for that and that was so old yeah out of the hip-hop Black culture. Uh, Tupac even had it in the song. I that's, think, what I yeah. that's, that's what so, I thought. That's what I knew. He, course, I had seen it. I had seen it before that, and I knew it came from hip hop. And John Cena, I guess, was into hip hop. I'm not a real big wrestling fan, but um, I know I had seen it before. But I don't know where it originated, though. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, it was already in the hood before it made it to the radio. Right. You know, what I'm saying? people used to say it all the time. Then Tupac took it and put it in the song, and. I don't know, eight years later, John Cena did it. Like, oh, John Cena started this new craze. No, he didn't start it. He didn't start it. Yeah. Now, he's known hey, as the – You guys are great. Now, he's uh, – Lamont said that John Cena took it from Tony Yayo with G-Unit. Maybe was, that's where – It was where, way before that. Maybe that – yeah, and that's probably where – and G-Unit would have been in the early 2000s. It probably was before then. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I knew it came before John Cena. I just don't know where – it originally initiated, but a lot of these people doing it now know it from John Cena, I'm sure. But yeah, it originated like a lot of things. It originated in in uh, black culture, no question. All right, uh, that's the history of I can't, you can't see you can't see me. You can't see me. Uh, who's next? Uh, Ryan, what's up, Ryan? Uh, excuse me. Hey, uh, how you doing, fellas? Uh, anyways. I was just wondering, other than the John Clay Wolf show, why is this show the only show that has instant classics old? Like, the bitch. Let me know. Later. Yeah. Instant classic what? I think just moments like that. Oh. Instant classic. Yeah. Well, it's because that's how we do things. Okay? It's pretty Other normal for us. shows we have, have instant classics. classic moments. Every, every. When no. Paul Gallant does his Southern Lawyer. Well. Yeah. Excuse me. Right. Well, I would like for both uh, both lawyers or both counsel to approach the bench. Well, well, that's, well that's, no, that's the bench. That's what I said. I'm from Tennessee. Bitch. <laughs> Maybe Which you don't do listen you? enough, Ryan. There's mm. classic stuff that happens every Which day Which one here. do you two like more? I mean, we have our current instant classic. Bitch. Or Stephen A. You bitch. Okay. Okay. They're One different. of them was talking One about a bench. A bench. Can we, the kids, He's not bitch. from the south. Stephen A. is not from the south. 
Are the kids going to school anymore? Yeah, actually, they are, Dell. They're going to nice school. Job. Don't nice do job. I don't know if you've heard, but we don't do this show for the kids. Okay. I yes, know. the kids are in the car FTK. right now listening. FTK. Luca oh. and Max are on their way Who to was school. That? They're Manny's kids, and they're sitting. Who, they listen to the show Manny? every day. Put John and Lance and Dell on. Trust me, who's if Manny? Mason's listening to the show, he's going to love this show. Well, I know because it's, it's, it's <laughs> naughty. Cause, yeah, because Dell is getting some This show's edgy. We don't play around. You know what? If you're a kid, you need to learn this stuff anyway. You need to get up on the streets. Mm. But sometimes. They don't need this. Sometimes. They don't, they don't need, need to be coddled. Education. We don't need to coddle kids. Yes, we do, John. The kids don't need to be coddled. We're already kids. coddling them too much. When you get into a media fight with a rather porky, hog, fat ass, <laughs> double wide, butterball. Who you think doesn't support people who look like him, you can do this. You bitch. No, you can't. That's no, not classy. No, these are all That's bad not examples for the kids. If you're not Stephen, if you're not Stephen A. Smith, you're 100 percent getting fired. Yes, that's bad examples for the kids, <laughs> Dell. You are a bad. That's you make a terrible no, uncle. See, no one's I, gonna call you unk. Thank God. I promise you. No, that. where's your brother at? Is he? he might have a bunch. He might of have kids a, right he, now. He might have kids. Home I don't know. Do y'all text Is each other? Is he sitting outside no, the don't. Home Depot? Do you talk no, to him at all? That happened like 30 years ago. He's not still sitting outside Home Depot. 30 years ago. 30 years ago, his dad dropped him off at Home Depot. I do not. And now he's doing day labor. Still, he might be out there. You don't know. No, he's not. No. He's not in the country. You don't know. Have you seen him since? He's not. Well, I don't know if they have Home Depots in Nigeria. Do y'all follow each other on Instagram? No. Uh, mm. No, I do not. What I, a saw, great, I, I swear, I thought I saw him out. What a great younger brother you are. Depot right there. What? The how beltway. much older is he than you? Like a close, like a decade, like ten years. Like ten years older. Yeah. Are you going to his wedding? No. Dressing you in traditional bitch. garb. Which thirty years ago, he's probably. So, you think he's married? I don't know. Dell doesn't know. Doesn't keep track of him. Well, we don't talk. Well, how, how many times do you go to Home Depot ever? Uh, I'm a Lowe's guy. He's not John. there. I've been traumatized. I'm he's a Lowe's not guy. There. Well, his dad said get uh, the car. Home Depot is kind of the Walmart, and <clears throat> Lowe's is the Target. Sorry, if I'm being honest. PTSD. Can't go to Home Depot. You can't. You flashbacks. Got, flashbacks. Like, to bad. My yeah. dad might drop me off there. <laughs> Never know. Got to go to Lowe's. My brother never showed up again. And I saw him. I saw him when he got on the. Pl- I saw him get on the plane because back then you could you could just yeah. walk up to the gate. Oh yeah, yeah. Well. Did you do this? Did you have a stuffed animal with you and you did you wave to him? No, I did that thing. Tear where, going down your eye. No, I have I have my middle finger in the air. <laughs> you I don't say? believe that. What'd that's you your say to t- him? that's like, your faux tough experience. No, I, yeah. I, I you was, really had your little blanket and your my blanket. And your dad what blanket? Said, Take the blanket and get in the truck. What? And then before you know it, you're in Las Are Vegas. You, Sleeping in a truck. No, we don't. Dad's throwing dice. That wasn't a double. My dad doesn't gamble. That wasn't a double header. Why did y'all go to Vegas? Why did you go to Vegas? Because I, because I was a kid. He wanted me to go to Vegas and play and see hotels and all that stuff. That was back when. That's a long ass trip to see hotels. Well, like all the sleep in the car. He was Wait, Dad. There's a hotel right there. Can we use it? John had to be something else. No, back when I back then it was a novelty for a kid to go to Vegas. It was, yeah, yeah. It's not so much anymore because kids don't care about that stuff anymore. But back then, seeing seeing a seeing a Vegas hotel was kind of a big deal as a kid. There's a, what they about had, staying? Yeah. They had arcades. Yeah, you see all those hotels? The Luxor. Can we go in one? We went in. We went in. Came I mean, out. I mean, I went to the arcades. All of them had arcades at the time, so we went in there and did that. And like, do you cir- have a basketball on the and circus? With you? Cir- uh, yes. Com- continue to butcher that story. Um, circus, <laughs> circus had uh, like back then they actually had a circus there. That. And we went to go see that and like amusements and stuff inside Circus Circus. Did you so drive we there. from Texas there? California. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, three hours. Yeah, three and a half, four. Yeah, yeah it's not such a big deal. I'd right. have just said, I wish we'd just turn around and come back, Dad. All right. I won't sleep we gotta, in this we truck. Gotta bre- we got to break Some of my here. best memories are on those trips to Vegas. Listening to Paul, what's his name? Paul Simon, Paul Graceland Simon? album. Yeah. 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 Me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Well, that's a different album, but it okay. was that was more of his Were you African listening to Bobby album, McFerrin? Graceland. <laughs> No, but no, oh. no. What? What am I? How? No. No. Okay, listen. How about this? Uh, I got this from I got this from Chase yesterday. How about this? Um, you know, Kill Cliff Fight Club. Uh, Conor McGregor is going to be fighting uh, Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler is that's from, a legit dude. That is a legit yeah. dude. He's in Kill Cliff Fight Club. Michael Chandler is? Michael Chandler is. Oh, wow. And he is, well, he called out Conor McGregor, McGregor on Raw last night, apparently. And they're fighting. And oh, Michael Chandler representing Canstead and Do Blend. Okay. Which one? You got to pick one, don't you? Yeah. No, you, you could go either. You can go either way. Okay. You can go either way. 
Uh, I think there is a difference between them. I'm not a chew. I'm not a, a chew guy. But yes, there is a difference, and I can get that. I can uh, discern that for you, Lance, difference at some point. Flavor, obviously. Yeah. Well, th- no, they got they both got fla- all the different flavors, but there's something different about them. So we will we can discuss that later. But right now, I want to tell you that if you're somebody who chews tobacco, at the the Kill Cliff Fight Club, which is in, uh, out of Florida, and they're in in every level, they're UFC. Uh, they're Bellator, Fury. They they fight at every level. They are backing the great people at Canstead and Dublin. And one of the reasons is is that it's smokeless, babe. Here's the deal: it's tobaccoless. It is nicotineless. I don't think those are words, but they're, I'm using them. Here's the deal. Well, I say I like to say nicotine nicotineless. Free, yeah. But here's the deal: is yeah, you don't want to. You want to get out of that nicotine? Yes, you do because it's dangerous. You, my friends, need Canstead. You need Dublin. Listen to Michael Chandler and go with 975dip.com. Stop already with the tobacco. Stop already with the nicotine. Hemp in a pouch made of hemp with CBD oil. CBD American Shaman says we love it. We're hearing it in our stores. Canstead Dublin. Let's make the change. 975dip.com. Your morning continues on its steep trail towards greatness. And these are your Sherpas, keeping you on the straight and narrow. John and Lance, live in the Veritex Community Bank Studios. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. We're just watching ESPN. And, Keith, we're going to get you in here, I promise. And we got, what did you learn this weekend in one sentence at 8.15? So we'll, we'll clear the entire so we'll board. Clear we'll get board. every one of you callers in. Okay, so um, Warren Sharp posted this. Average length of TD pass, air yards. Air yards. You okay? So Tyrod Taylor led the league. He had very few. Will Levis was second. Tyrod Taylor twenty three point six. Of course, I don't know how many touchdown passes did he throw? Will Levis twenty one point nine, average length of touchdown pass. Also a little bit limited in terms of playing time, but that's yeah. Fine. But he did play at least some. Kenny Pickett. 17.2. Nick Mullins, 16.7. How many touchdowns This did list Kenny sounds Pickett the most <laughs> invalid, like the most unimportant list I've ever heard. Trevor Lawrence, next, at 15.5. Another non-playoff guy. 
Jalen Hurts, 15.3. First playoff guy is Jalen Hurts, and they really sucked at the end. Derek Carr, Justin Fields, C.J. Stroud, 13.8. So it takes forever to get to a guy who's good. Who's good. Yeah, sounds right. like a – because well, you know Jalen was really good at the beginning of the year. But if you're move, yeah. But if you're moving the ball, you're going to throw more touchdowns, and you'll be in the red zone more. So it stands to reason you'll have more five and six yard touchdowns. Well, it's interesting because there's not good guys at the top. Here's at the bottom: second to last, Zach Wilson; third to last, Bryce Young; fourth to last, Taylor Heineke; Jake Browning; and then Justin Herbert. Sounds who like you, you want to be in the middle. Who do you think is last in the league? In average yards per touchdown pass. Uh the starters? Yes, yeah, starter. Um maybe it wouldn't be Jordan Love. It would be last in the league of all the starters. Uh it wouldn't be Tua. Might no, be, Tua be is at Allen. the near the top. Thirteen point two. Uh they're not gonna say Deshaun Deshaun Watson. Deshaun's twelve point nine. He's near the top. Didn't play enough. Um, I would say maybe Matthew Stafford? No, it would be Patrick Mahomes. Oh. 3.9 yards per average touchdown pass. Wow. Last in the league. That seems impossible. Well, how many times did he get? But John, Pacheco doesn't. Ju- um, uh, um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is not a is not a is not a is not a goal line back. Pacheco's no, no, no. not really a I thought you said back. this is per touchdown pass. What is the run? That's right. So they throw the ball when they're on the two-yard line. Oh, oh, yeah. But, I mean, one 20-yard touchdown pass he screws did, he up only the had, average. He only had two all year, 20-yard touchdown passes. That seems incredible. You know, he did not have the best year. N- but this is what happens when you win a title. It's like, Pat Mahomes, GOAT. He wasn't even very good. He was just – he was – a. He was above average this year, and by his standards, he was below average. Yeah. In the last two years, Mahomes has thrown a total of – oh, not this year. In the last two years, Mahomes has thrown a total of two TDs, traveled 20-plus yards. No, let me tell you, last year I thought it was a joke that he won it. I thought Hurts should have won it last year. But he got hurt, but Hurts was better to me than Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes had a stretch where he was not that good last well, year. Well, wait a minute. Is it – But he wins yeah. titles, so who cares? Yeah, right. But is it – a bad, I mean, it's not a great thing, but here's the deal is you you are so dependent on that dude. I don't think it's a terrible thing, especially when you don't have a you don't have a Derrick Henry or you don't have a a, 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 a guy no, who's going to You get, want it more than that, John, because their offense wasn't that. They, they didn't score in the second half of games. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's not good. That's a shocking stat, 3.9, because one 40-yard touchdown pass, which he didn't have, even with Valdez Scantling on the team, it does get to the point that, they need another receiver. Well, that tells you they need another yeah. receiver for explosive plays. So explosive plays is, I mean, two touchdown passes of that twenty seems plus yards in impossible. two years. Possible. How about this? In two thousand nineteen, his average touchdown pass seventeen point three. In two thousand twenty, thirteen. In two thousand twenty one, eight point five. Two thousand twenty two, four point five. This year, three point nine. It has gone down drastically every year. From seventeen point three, five years later, it's three point nine. It in large part because of the receivers that they lost. When you got Tyreek Hill, you're look at Tua, look at his touch the average touchdowns. It's long. Yeah, when you have those speed guys, and that's why I gave them Roman Wilson in my first mock. But really, Troy Franklin from Oregon with the thirty second pick could be that. Like you can say, well, they already got Valdez Scantlin. They, they already got gave Rashi him a free Rice. Guy. You got Rishi Rice. You got you, Pat Mahomes, and that yeah. offense needs an explosive option. That's why the Texans have one. And uh, Nico Collins, he can get down the field deep. Uh, Tank is an explosive player. But it's never – if you don't have a player who can stretch defenses, I mean, no other team could survive with that touchdown total. 3.9 per passing touchdown over the last two years. That literally seems impossible for a team that's winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they can count on him, though. They can count on him yep. in the red zone. Keith, what's up? Hey, guys, love the show. Thank you, John, for the shout-out to Tyrod Taylor, won a Super Bowl with the Ravens. My question today, um, you know, Steve Wilkes is a scapegoat with the Niners lost in the Super Bowl. And I'm thinking back, like, Steve Wilkes fired from the Niners late, fired from the Panthers, and he was an assistant there for a long time, fired from the Cardinals. There's no D.C. jobs open. Like, 
it feels like Steve Wilkes has gotten a raw deal like three times in the last five years. And who do you think is going to be the next DC of the Niners? Thanks, guys. So, well, you were looking at this too. You were going through his career. One year here, one year there, a lot of one year here, one year there. That starts to get on. What's wrong with Steve Wilkes? Yeah, some of it is just the nature of coaching. You'll take a job at a place where the coach is already on shaky ground. Um, and so there's nothing you can do about it. But when you look through it, I mean, look, he was he was what the Carolina thing. He had some success as an interim and they still got rid of him. Uh, they didn't keep him. That happens in coaching. You can't get too upset about that. But remember, he's a guy who was one year at Arizona as the head coach. And they were like, OK, this isn't working like they knew right away. Now, it's a bad look. But it also we've yeah, seen the start. What team does that one year with a head coach? And well, then- we did twice in the Carolina. It's usually bad teams that do it uh, because that means you didn't hire the right guy in the first place. Steve Wilkes wasn't the right head coaching hire. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say Kingsbury was either, but they realized quickly we can't, we do not want to have this guy here leading our team moving forward. And some of it may have been because they plan on drafting Kyler Murray. But don't forget, uh, the Texans had two one and duns, and neither one of them was the right coach. The the uh, just now Carolina had a one and done with uh, uh, with, with. I hate Peter. to put David Cully on Steve Wilkes, but uh, yeah, making that comparison. Oh no, I'm just saying the one and dones, but a bad team, bad yeah. organization with 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 Arizona. Great with two, organization, Lance. Two just with Houston at the time, and then you also coach. had uh, you also had Frank Reich. It was didn't even make it a year. Yeah, right. Didn't even make it a year with Carolina. Another not so great organization. So. Uh, but with Wilkes, wait, it's wait, like... Wait a minute. He was just with San Francisco. Really good organization. Good one. And that should tell you, Kyle Shanahan's like... Kyle Shanahan must win a championship. Yeah. His entire legacy is on the line. He's super close. If he thought Wilkes was the right guy, there was no way they'd make a, a move. And I don't think... Kyle Shanahan doesn't make moves for scapegoats. He, Kyle Shanahan's making moves because I think there's a fundamental difference of how to run a defense. Like... I don't think Wilkes does things the way Shanahan wanted him to. No. Shanahan's used to his guys, and he, they came up with him. D'Amico, Robert Salah. There's a certain way he likes it, and Wilkes is old school. I mean, Wilkes is going to do things the way he like, thinks it should be done. Yeah. You pronounce Salah like I pronounce in that East. Everybody else says Robert Sala. I think it is Salah, actually. Well, then why do you say Salah? Let's put a little extra something on him as, out of respect. Put some respect on Salah. See? Hmm. Salah. Salah. No, you pr- you're pronouncing his name like he's a striker for Liverpool. <laughs> Mohamed am. Salah. Oh, then maybe. Well, that's where I get it from. Then that's probably the real pronunciation. Well, I saw it last Except they're night. spelled differently. I don't know why. Oh, I saw, well, that's I saw I this, that Everton was behind Fulham in the standings. Yes, they are, yeah. as per usual. As in, in your right... You're near relegation again. Congrats. Our girl Melissa from the Spanish station got engaged. Yay! Oh, Melissa, Melissa. Congratulations. Is this, she's, the fir- she's a- is this her first engagement? <laughs> yeah. See, she's, she, I embarrassed her yesterday. Why? I was like, I saw the ring. I'm like, oh, yeah. Girl, girl. Have you given her no, the. We can't hear her. We can't hear have you. Have you given her the okay, first Okay, come here, on the show right now. Hurry up, Melissa. Come here, Melissa. Real fast, real They want to see you on the Sit on down. The, uh, you better go to Twitch right Quickly. now. Twitch, you better get in there right away. Here's Melissa from our Spanish station. Look at our, you got better. Look Look at at these microphones we got. See our microphones? I like it. I love it. (laughs) How are you? I'm I'm doing good. Excited for the baseball season that is around the corner. Yeah. So you're the one that got us Alex Cintron. Yeah. Yes. You go into the locker room all the time to interview the players. You're big into baseball. Are you excited about uh, the new manager? Yes, of course. Yeah. So I'm excited for that because wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Usually, this one. This one. Okay. okay. Usually, Very few Spanish speakers in the Astros locker room right now. No, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I covered the, the Latin players, not only right. for, from the Astros, but also the visiting teams. So I'm excited for everything that is Have coming up. Have you ever up. spoken Spanish to Alex Bregman? Yes, I had. He speaks. Back, he's, back he's, in 2017, when only few people knew that he was fluent in Spanish, yeah. I was one of the first person well, to, from New Mexico. to burn him. He's from what? New Mexico. He's, he's been, yeah, he's from New Mexico, but he's been fluent that long? Yes. All the way since 17? Yes. Actually, he kind of lose it a little bit because he got uh, married with an American lady. Mm-hmm. So I think he's not practicing the Spanish oh, as, yeah. as much as before, but uh, he speaks Spanish with the Cuban guys. I feel uncomfortable holding this for you here. No, um, I like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you look weird, but I like it. Okay. 
So how did he propose to you? How did, why would we have to talk about this? I want to, <laughs> come on. Because um, our listeners want to know. They yeah. don't know you, but they want to know they you. Oh, know. that's me. That's you, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying But no. I can't let you see well, what people uh, are that saying. Well, that was in Valentine's. This you what? Past, on Valentine's yes, Day? This past How week. sweet. Yes. What did he do? If we've been together for 16 years. 16? So, yes. What? So, Boy, get a move on, son. I, I wasn't. <laughs> no, but you know, I was good. Like, I like the boyfriend and girlfriend stage in my life. Oh, so, so she was oh. fine with it. Yes. Oh. You're telling her to get a move on. I'm not ready to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Uh, so but it but was, you couldn't say no. Well, you, okay. A commitment, maybe? 16 years, you I, think, okay, it's time. This is kind of... I know. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have good She's being introduced to our yeah. nonsense. Okay. We no, have bad Wait, don't, 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 don't say it. No. Oh, what? <laughs> no, I was saying she's being introduced to what our nonsense. Yeah, this is, yeah. this is what yeah, this is how, this our, is how show our show is. We don't go... No, no, no. Yeah. no like well, like our... Our... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's we, loud. We, he's loud, your guy. What okay, so name? you want me to tell the story? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, El Chero, El Chero. He's from El Salvador, and yeah, he has yeah. this uh, particular laugh that everyone can hear. What is in it? Their you do floor. it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes like that. I don't. I don't know. The, there That's was what it there is. was this Cuba, uh, cu uh, cu cumbia singer from Colombia, Niceto yeah. Molina. Maybe Spanish people know about him, and he used to laugh like that in his song. So he wrote a song for El Chero. And that's, he that's wrote a, song? a signature. Oh, yeah. Yes. Nice. Oh. So that's a signature on the on the song. So that's why he does oh, the nice. laugh. So yeah. finish your story. How did he uh, how did he propose? No, it was Valentine's dinner. He he invited my mom and dad, which I was kinda, you know, suspicious because they're not usually in this type of, of places. He was in downtown in Mama Juana, a Dominican restaurant. You okay. have to try it out. You are gonna love What's it. What's it called? Mama Juana Cafe. Mama, Mama Juana. Juana. Yes. Where is it? Uh, downtown. Okay. I'm gonna find the address for you guys, but it's delicious. So you know the the band who was singing the night, they're really good friends with us. And then he came to me, the guy who was singing, and he made me stand up to dance. And I was like, huh, <laughs> like <laughs> like why? And yeah, he then he kneeled in his knee and he gave me the ring and yeah. So did you cry? I I was going to, but then I saw him. Crying, so I was like, okay, no, one of us has oh. to be, <laughs> has to be okay. One of us has to be the man yes, here. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. Well, so I was like, no, it's okay. Yeah. Stand up, and then he gave me the the little box with the ring, and I was like, you're supposed to put it on. <laughs> like, what you want me to do to propose to myself? <laughs> so yeah, he was very nervous, and it was fun. It was yeah. It was I still, fine. I still shock. Like, I have to send it to get a fix because it was a little big on my finger. Uh -huh. So where are you uh, going to get? You you have plans yet or no? No, I have no idea what's going to happen next. No. Yeah. What is supposed to happen next? <laughs> no. I mean, you're going to get married here or you're going to go? No, we're going to do it here, here. of course. Uh, just in the court, something small. Uh, you know, when we work in this in this industry, when we're supposed to people, I think the private life, we want to keep it like really private. Yeah. So yeah. who's your favorite astro? Uh, that's to. a quick change of the I know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you feel well, more comfortable you talking about the Astros yes, show? Yes, yes, yes. No, I think so. It. No, I think I have to go work. But <laughs> yeah. Who's okay. your favorite Astro to talk to? Uh, oh, so many. So many guys. Did you uh, like Machete? Uh, he's kind of quiet, but mm -hmm. he has a nice personality. He's very into How his How about Fromber? You hear he's game. taking his braids out. He this cut year. his hair. Yes. Fromber Valdez he has an amazing personality. Brian Abreu, a Dominican, one Good of the pictures. He has an amazing personality. He likes to talk to media. Um, Luis Garcia, he's also a, a, a nice guy. He's kind of quiet, but when you get him out of his comfort zone, he's really good. Um, Gurriel used to be really nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. To, he doesn't like to talk to media much, but when he's in the mood, I bet he, was, he talked he to was you really though. Nice. Yeah, why? Why no, you yeah. say so? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good journalist, yeah. I guess. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I feel so weird because holding he this. likes talking to media. Yeah. Sometimes, yes, sometimes from yeah. Spanish-speaking stations. Yes, he's yeah. cubano. All right, we, we'll let you go. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't want to go now. We want I'm she, using my English. <laughs> we want, she, yes. used, she told me a good uh, Colombian spot. She's Colombiana. Yeah. Oh, she yes. told me the spot. It's not that far from my house. Oh, really? Paisa Twins, right? Paisa Twins, yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to visit Paisa Twins. You're going to love it. Yeah? We should, we should right go. Right down the street from my house. What's the best Colombia dish? I, every city has their own dish. The one from my city is called Ajiaco. It's like a soup uh, with different potatoes and chicken but then the most popular i would say bandeja paisa that is like beans rice beef uh it has everything yeah. like yeah, everything that you, it's huge 
And uh, it's one of the famous ones because, you know, uh, people from Medellin became really famous and popular because of the narco novelas. <laughs> yeah, and, right. you know, our background. But it's okay. We you, keep the, the nice stuff. very famous. We keep the nice stuff. Very yes, we, we <laughs> keep You got a whole nice Netflix stuff. out of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. With, with, uh, Medellin. Narcos. Yes, yes. with Griselda Blanco. She has my last name. Oh, but yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not oh, related Griselda, to her. Oh, Griselda, have you seen it yet? Yes, it's, yes, it's really good. She Sofia wasn't Vergara. as pretty as Sofia Vergara, the real one. Oh, no, no. She was she was really bad looking. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, his his uh, her son was trying to say that Sofia Vergara didn't represent the beauty of his mom. Oh, so what? We, we no, I saw think, pictures of his mom. Yes. She was she, way more beautiful. This is a very flattering yes. portrayal. Yes, yes. Very we always flattering. think our moms and dads Ex and sons and daughters are the most beautiful people in yeah, the world. But except all the killing and stuff. Other well, than that. that was yeah. Rough. yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Nice Thank talking you. to you. I Bye. Come back. I promise. Melissa. I like to use my English. Bye. <laughs> Melissa Blanco right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Time for us to break. Okay, we got it. Okay, we're going to have to do 8.30. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to do 8.30. Do what did you learn this weekend in one sentence? How many numbers of Twitch? How'd that it go? It got pretty high. Yeah. Well, our Twitch went away. People started going to YouTube. Oh, so yeah, right. Twitch got to like 170. Usually, it would have got to like 350. Or something. Well, then people yeah. on YouTube, too. We yeah, don't know what yeah. YouTube is. Yeah, right? so, I, I can't sign up. I'm so pretty sure. My, this this is an NFL computer, and it reads me as being in Mexico. So it, I, for some reason, I can't get to oh. half the stuff I'm supposed to. Uh, anyway, we got to talk about uh, hoops right now. The pro dunk is the best goal. I was talking. I forget why I brought it up. Oh, I think I brought it up yesterday on the show that somebody needed. They need the pro dunk, right? That you got to have the, the ability to dunk. If. If you are going to, like, oh, yeah, we were talking about the celeb basketball game. Uh, you know, Michael Parsons and all those guys, they can dunk. But the little actors that are squatty, they can't dunk. But if you bring the pro dunk goal, now all of a sudden they look like athletes because they can go up. Your kid will look like an athlete because he can dunk. You can put it at five feet, six feet, seven feet, eight feet. The kids want to dunk, Dad. That's what they love to do. When you go to the website, produnk.com, that's what you're going to see all the kids doing. All the pictures are kids dunking because they just love it. So your kid wants to be able to play, okay? If you, especially if you've got your little kids, you want to raise and lower the goal, and now it's just with a drill. Zzz, and it goes up and it goes down. It's so easy. You'll love it. The kids will love it. Everybody, mom will love it. Everybody will love it. Produnk.com. You want the best goal in the market, period? Produnk.com.
You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John Granado and Lance Zerline. <laughs> the bit with John and Lance. Here's our new. That's our new bit. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, uh, thank you to Melissa Blanco for hanging with us here this morning on ESPN 97. We see her every day. She is awesome. She's awesome. She knows a lot about the Astros. By the way, she's in there all the yeah, time. Yeah. Like, she follows it closely. She's the one that got us Alex Centron on the show. She is in there all the yeah. time. She's really cool. Really cool. Good person. Yeah, and congratulations on mm-hmm. uh, 16 years. Okay, um, we are going to – this is going to be a really I, quick – I asked her, I said, oh, is that a ring? I saw her yesterday no. with the other girl. Spanish stations don't mess around with her. Right. No, no, no. So they, her and this other girl came out yeah. and uh, – We don't have anybody that looks like <clears throat> what they have over there. Paul. We don't have anybody Paul's that looks. I'm going to stick to my version. original statement. You mean as host? Yeah, no chance. No. Paul's our man guy who is going to try to like roll up on the on the the ladies of the Spanish station. Uh, no, but yeah, he wouldn't. No, no. Wait, whoa, don't do that. He wouldn't. I'm saying he no. What? That he wouldn't roll up on women. No, Stop that's not it. what I. No, that's, that's, exactly that's not what I meant. He was that's not what that's he was what, saying. Exactly. Saying Paul isn't going to. I was going to reference Paul had had a classy I, manners. Had, no, had had I don't know if it was a significant other, but he had a date at our uh, our Super yeah, Bowl he thing. So, it didn't turn out well. well. I asked him about it. Why? <laughs> why? Because he was didn't. why? Because he was yelling at Pat Mahomes the whole time. No, to... he said they went out afterwards. It didn't go well. Anyway, wow. Really? That's I, may all. St- I may stick around for you to interrogate him over the air on that one on the beginning of his show. We could just stay in our spots and make him sit in this. It didn't tiny go well. That we have here. I don't. Know. Are we, bl- uh, are we just, blaming Paul just for that? It. All I'm doing is relaying. That's all. Oh, maybe he will have a conversation maybe. like that. I thought he was locked up with someone else. That's all. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. I really don't. Get we Abigail don't. on next, says Twitch. Abba- Shut up, Twitch. Relax, Twitch. Abigail. Well, she does she's work our, here. She's she's a, she does work last, here now. Yeah. I talked to her she's last night. She's, she's a producer, and she's doing lots of stuff. She's moving. She's going to graduate in May. Young Abigail, the uh, the intern who we thought she was our intern. Turns out she, she was, was never, never our intern. intern. It was an intern on captain ron or whatever so oh, really yeah she was yeah, never, she was our, never our, intern. our intern we just treated her we like just, she was we just took her in hey come in here intern hey what are you doing have you cut up the sound sheet? oh uh, yeah she was trying to be polite yeah yeah i'm working at, well i actually um <laughs> don't work for your station no. your show and also to, oh. the, to twitch we don't take requests for pretty woman to come yeah. on the show sorry okay that's that's creepy um tell you what we're gonna do here because we gotta catch up on breaks because uh melissa but that was well worth uh, a shorter segment here. When we come back, what did you learn this weekend in one sentence? So, since we had a long weekend, President's Day yesterday, a lot of you weren't here. We did it, but it, we only had a few uh, callers in here, and it was we got a whole weekend now. We got the holiday weekend, the holiest of holidays, President Day, President's Day yesterday. So now we've got you right now at 713-780-3776. You get one sentence to tell us what you learned this weekend. 713-780-3776. Fill it up, and we're going to do that. All right, let's go. What did you learn this weekend or on a Monday on a President's Day? Right? Well, that's the weekend. You're going to count that? It was a long weekend. Okay, so you could have learned something yesterday. Yes, because it's a long. It's called a long weekend. Okay, I'll, I'll do. I have one for that I learned okay. yesterday. So. Uh, I'm talking right now about Derek DeSola and the job that he does over at Houston Safe and Lock. And it doesn't matter if it's locks. It doesn't matter if it's safes. It could be a safe lock. It could be he could change the uh, the uh, digital, uh, convert digital into uh, dial or dial into digital, whichever the case may be. But as far as your business goes, you may need you may need a locksmith to change, or even in your house, if you got to change the locks in your house, something not great happened. But you need to change the locks. You need Houston Safe and Lock. Derek DeSola is going to give you the best. He's got key systems. He's got access control systems, smart lock installation. That's basically for businesses. Do you have four or more doors at your business? Are people coming and going and you've got no way to keep track of them? Well, yes, you do. You've got Derek DeSola and the great people over at Houston Safe and Lock where you could do key cards. You can do access control. You can do it with your smartphones. You can enter and leave, whatever the case 
is you have got that with with Houston Safe and Lock. And they have the best Medico is the best lock that you're going to have in the market in which nobody can make a key. And if you want that for your home, that is the best, that's the highest security that you could get. So you're looking for the best way to get those that lock. You're looking for the best way to get that safe. There's one place to go, Houston Safe and Lock or King Safe and Lock, two locations. One's at Westheimer on the Beltway, one's at Wirt 910. 975safe.com. That's 975safe.com. Hey, guys, I want to talk about the big party we've got coming up on Monday at Republic Boot Company. Rodeo ready. Are you rodeo ready? Are you ready to get your rodeo on? A lot of people like to do it up big, get the boots, get the hat, get the, the shirts. Do you know at, at Republic Boot Company, which has been there in the Heights for quite a few years now, for, for a good deal of time, they've got everything. You step into the store, and it's amazing. Their rodeo ready boots are their own uh, brand. They custom, uh, they, they're, they're made right there. In uh, uh, some of them are made right there in the very facility, but they've got their own brand, the 1836, that you're not going to find anywhere else. And these boots can be fitted to your foot. There are things they can do to get it right. So if you <clears throat> put the boot on, you say, okay, it needs to be this, needs to be that. They can make changes to that boot so that it fits you snugly and perfectly. They're all 100% leather, and they are built to last you a lifetime. That's the difference. And they feel great, and they look phenomenal. They've got Aggie boots there. They've got Longhorn boots right there that are rodeo ready on the shelf waiting for you. They've got, they can uh, custom fit your hat or shape your hat for you. They've got belt buckles, belts, but it's really more than that. It's a lifestyle shop and a preservation of the history of the state of Texas. Chris has done an incredible job of putting these things together in one spot. They've even got my own favorite Maestro Do Bell in there. When you're in there enjoying yourself, they have drinks. They'll just give you a drink. When you're sitting there watching a band play on a Friday, and Fridays a lot of times are big parties, as a matter of fact, but we're going to be there on Monday. You're going to have special discounts for people who come in. So if you're looking to get your boots, you're looking to get ready for rodeo, uh, or if you just want to get some some really cool Western wear, this is going to be your spot right there in the Heights. It's republicbootcompany.com, republicbootcompany.com. Currently in the Veritex Community Bank Studios, one is a renowned forensic blood splatter expert, the other an appointed master of haberdashery. It's John and Lance. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 at 92.5. Y'all aren't used to this. What did you learn this weekend in one sentence? You've got one sentence to tell us 
what exactly you learned from this long holiday weekend. 713-780-3776 is the number. You've learned something. It could be about your your family. It could be about sports. It could be about anything, anything that you learned from this weekend. Lance, you wanted to start. You said you had learned something. I learned that we've got our brand new um, conservatory gallery uh, food hall that's open up, and they got a bar in the upstairs. They got bedia. They got tres leches. That sounds like more than one sentence. Hot. It's I'm not ellipses. Okay. Dot, 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 dot. or dot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And so now I got a little place to get my drink on uh, when I'm done with my draft stuff. Oh, nice. Yep. Very nice. Oh, so they got. I also learned that parking's going to be really tricky <laughs> down there. Uh, well, yeah, because, right, there's not much out front. So that's going to be interesting. It doesn't open until 11, though, right? Uh, yeah. You got to wait till 11 o'clock? Yep. That's terrible for you. 713-780-3776. Brandon. What did you learn this weekend in one sentence? Guys, I learned that Granado is a better ally for women's sports than Kenny Smith and Jay Williams. Yep. Kenny Smith and who? Jay Williams. And Jay Williams. Yep. Kenny Smith said that she should have used the women's three she point line. Sabrina, I didn't ask you who made twenty yeah. who scored who twenty six points. Twenty six points tied the guys. For their first round, Damian Lillard, the four people hit 26, sh- shot crazy good from men's three, and then Steph just shot better, scored 29 points, which was a terrific total. Yes. Kenny's like, you should have shot from women's three. Like, everyone went, oh, oh you Kenny. just ruined the moment, Kenny. Kenny. I can't wait. And most people do think John's I can't a wait better till ally. Clark is in it with them, too. <clears throat> She'll be. That's what. That's yeah. the direction they're yeah. headed. All right, uh, Sam is next. Sam, what'd you learn this weekend in one sentence? Hey, what's up, John? Uh, John what's up, Lance? Hey, I learned if it's a slow week in sports, um, Josh will talk about how he can't go pee right or he keeps like he's dribbling pee and stuff. If there's nothing else to talk about in sports, who's who, who said that? About their dribbling. Pee? Who said that? That was Josh on so Josh and uh, oh. Connor and Beard. Ah. Josh talked about how he dribbles pee. Yeah. I didn't yeah. prostate better get I that prostate that. look. Yeah. Dr. Manavis better Man get in there. She get... doesn't use that handsaw like the other people do. No. I mean no, I think Yeah. Like, oh, why are y'all putting a blender in there? No. No. Doc Manavis is the way to go, especially if you're dribbling pee. Uh 713 What did you learn this week in one sentence? Alex, what'd you learn this week in one sentence? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, this weekend I learned that fat benches need love too, Craig. Fat benches need love too. Oh, he said benches. Benches. Yeah. Yes. Uh, everybody does. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody does. Bitch. No. That fat. For porky. those who don't know, that actually is the word bench from bench. a southern lady from Tennessee. Porky yeah. hog, fat ass, no, double wide, butter ball. Anything ball. having to do with that Tennessee? Bitch. Whoa, whoa. 713-780-3776. What did you learn this weekend in one sentence? Woods is up next. What's up, fellas? I learned that forgetting you taking nighttime meds and going out on date night and having cocktails would turn that into an absolute absolute ship show. Mm, uh, yeah. It's true. Yeah, that is true. It's true. Watch what you take on a... Yeah. Uh huh. Be careful. Uh huh. Be careful out there, kids. Yeah. Uh, no, you always have to make good choices. Absolutely. Absolutely. I learned this weekend that everything is more boring the first week of Lent. That's what I learned. You mean when you're not drinking? When you're you can't you can't enjoy a cocktail with yeah and and whatever you're doing. I learned yeah I learned that everything we do in, involves alcohol. Dell. <laughs> oh, see? John learned that alcohol. Is pretty much the nexus of it, his it existence. It pretty much is. It doesn't matter what we what we do. We're pretty much going to have a beer with it. Pretty much. Who is we? My, me and my people. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you mm. you didn't learn that before? I did not. Le- yeah, I guess I. Well, I I guess when you're in the middle of it, you just don't realize it. But when it's when you're out of it, 
Then, but you've been out of it at this time last year I and know, years but before. I forgot how, you, how horrible All the alcohol made you forget? Yeah. The alcohol, yeah, <laughs> washes away all those all those bad memories so how's of golf? not drinking. How's golf with no beer? We'll find out today. This, is a, this will be the first time I'm playing without this. This Actually... I get pretty good by the end of Lent. Imagine that. Not and being, then I start drinking again, and I like you know. Imagine that not being intoxicated helps your hand-eye coordination in playing golf. Yeah, but then you know what? Though, though you would be surprised when you're not playing well, a beer will settle two, a beer or two or twelve will settle. No, I'm your not swing surprised down. that you that you are freewheeling when you're not playing well. You should be a little less tense when you're drunk. Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. No, 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 no. That's exactly what happens. That is exactly I understand how physiology works. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's exactly. But why don't the pros just go out there when they're all stressed out of major, just pound a couple back and see how unstressed yeah, they are. Are you sure that they don't? I mean, they're walking around fine. You I don't, mean, you when don't they know. get interviewed, they don't they're not slurring their words. You don't know. They don't have. It doesn't matter if they're. You don't have a couple beers. Ain't gonna make you slur your words. I'm pretty sure that there have been plenty of guys who have had a libation or two. Another reason why you're just ruining good, good nature oh. by playing golf out there. Cal, so you can go drink and be better Calvin at it. Johnson said he was wasted at some games. Okay, who? Calvin I, Johnson. You can't know. We're not doing this where Calvin Johnson is the standard. You're not Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Calvin Johnson You're not was wasted. Mega John. Uh, uh, throwing a no hitter on acid. Okay, now that's, that happened. Now that's more impressive. Yes, that is more impressive. That is Doc and, Ellis throwing a no hitter on acid is one of the greatest yes. accomplishments. One of the most difficult accomplishments in the history of sport. What's harder, throwing a no hitter on acid or getting a hole in one? Oh, no hitter on acid. But you can play your whole life and never get a hole in one. Uh. Yeah, but I, I have one. So how do you? And I have no. How no do hitters. we not know one of Justin Verlander? There's a lot of there's a lot of hole in ones. How do we know that Justin Verlander? Okay, how do we know Justin Verlander wasn't microdosing? Well, wow. I'm asking. How do you know? Wow. You don't know. Wow. That's, Are you sure that Nolan Ryan? You're putting, you're Nolan putting, Ryan came up in the late '60s, early '70s. You sure he never <laughs> wow. just rocked back? He this, had like. Ten wild, wild pitches and eight. reckless accusations. I'm asking how you know or you don't know when a guy I would have like Nolan Ryan. nine walks and he's three from hit Alvin. batters in a in a no hitter. He's from Alvin. That doesn't help your case. But, but we'll hear what's what it's he's all about from Alvin. when we come back. He's from Alvin. That doesn't help the case no. for you, well, John. Listen, maybe. We're, well, we're, he's from like good Alvin. We're gonna find oh, out. Got a little rougher later. We're gonna okay. find out what it, how, what's the difference is when you're from Galveston in just a minute. Yeah, James but, has some. Thoughts. But first, let's get la raza que pasó, mijo. Uy. Gianni Granati, Lance Spitzel. Gentlemen, good morning. Balloon. Shout out to El Cherro, El Chorro, El Cherro, Charro, Chorro. That is what it sounds like. That's my people's, bro. That's my people's, man. But I'm going to tell you what I learned over the weekend, homie. I learned over the weekend when you're going away throwing the boss party for your boss and the drinks start going in, the racism comes out. Anthony, orderly. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Raises and rucas. They both come out when the drinks start going when the in. the drinks start he flowing? He said both drinks start going and the raises start coming out, he said. <laughs> Uh, finally, our last one, Not Lance, is calling <laughs> into the show. Hey, Not Lance. Hey, guys. I learned that the Trump shoes are going to be the best sneakers ever produced, the best. Many people are lined up to get them, so go out and get the Trump shoes before they are all gone because they're limited stuff. Uh, so very, Trump, very good gold shoes. Well, very good. So they tr Trump sold them for like $395? True sneaker head price. They're on eBay for three thousand nine hundred. Y'all some dumbasses. I mean, and they're no, they're selling on eBay. No, I no, they yeah. are. Yeah. I mean, Trump is literally a QVC host. <laughs> what well, he is? He just. I've got a new cartoon. It's like Marvel, only better. A lot of great Marvel comics coming out. I am a character who dispenses with old people. They're the worst. Uh. 
Yeah, he doesn't doesn't like old. Joe Biden. I yeah, he doesn't Trump, like he doesn't like old people. Well, no, Joe he Biden specifically Biden. Oh, one probably going to do something. Where yeah. he, but um, this is a guy who's been involved in professional wrestling, yeah. selling sneakers. Reality TV. <laughs> Reality TV. Selling yeah uh, cards coins of cards cards yeah had a had a college that didn't work out great for people who paid for it yeah well that happens sometimes does it people just start colleges <laughs> i'm going to start a college it's going to be the best college yes i mean now he's selling tennis shoes that at happens. sneaker con that happens all right we got to break it Thank uh, you. to be fair i mean i'm not buying trumps i'm also not biden i'm not going to buy the biden you know 8.4s or whatever. I'm not going to buy those either. <laughs> you don't huge, clunky. 84s or 8.4s? <laughs> you don't like the colorways? Yeah, for the I don't Biden like the 8. colorways, 4s? and it's not, frankly, I mean. They're not a comfortable shoe? Basketball shoe? It's not shoe? a comfortable shoe. Not a comfortable shoe. Are they 8 shoe. point or 8.4s? Eight, eight, eight huge lift in it. It's yeah. spongy for if you got to stand up uh, too for, long. Apparently, you, they're hard to walk in. But... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm not buying his yeah, either. No. I'm not buying presidential shoes. I got news for you. No presidential shoe drops or endorsements of shoes is going to sway me at all. Now, if now if John Quincy Adams had something that he was pushing, I might have bought something. I, I, I might have bought the JQs. You The JQs? I might have bought the JQ 3.0s. I don't think John Quincy Adams was selling any shoes. They're made of wood. I can on, promise you that. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, we got, that was the teeth, not the shoes were made of wood. That, let's break it here. When we come back, we will hear the difference between if you're from Galveston or anywhere else in the world. And we will do Galveston people. What does that mean? Well, you, you'll see. You'll, you'll, you'll hear. You'll see. Uh, One of but, our great philosophers. Yeah, I hope you aren't going to get reckless with Galveston. We don't need it's that. Not either, well, so. It's not us. It's someone it's, else. It's a, it is. It's a great philosopher. Uh, but first, I want to talk about Doc Linville. I was there yesterday, as a matter of fact. I got the PRP. So it's a three-step step phase. You get the PRP. You come back in four to six weeks. You go back again. I've got one more to go. But she was like, oh, yeah, we're already seeing those little... The little hairs coming in after I did the neo grafting and the, you got the, the the hair. Now you fill it in as well. It's just a, such a great process, such an easy process. Kelly is awesome. She does a great job. She's going to take care of you. You are going to have the. I'm telling you the best experience that you're going to get in this business. I did it before where they cut you, and it's so awful. I was supposed to speak for them. That's why I, I did it. And I just couldn't. I wouldn't do it. Not after not after the process that I went through that time. And then I did it with Doc Linville, and it couldn't have been better. The neo grafting is basically painless. He's got a three day anesthetic that'll last you now. It just it can't be better. And the the results are fantastic. So if you're somebody that is looking for the best way to get hair, you're tired of being bald, you're tired of that hairline, you're tired of that b- b- male pattern bald spot. One place to go: nine seven five hair dot com nine seven five hair dot com.
The recipe is simple. Take one part John because you know what you're going to get. And add like 50 parts Lance because you never know what you're going to get. Spike the spice with some Del Olaleya and damn, it tastes like the Veritex Community Bank Studios. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. So, um, Mike Evans is a free agent out there. You want him? I mean, yeah. Yeah. He's G-Town. That's exactly the point. That's oh. exactly the point. Oh. So, the great philosopher, the great philosopher, Jameis Winston, mm -hmm. was on a podcast, and he was hypothesizing about about receivers when where they're from and the kind of person that you are if you're close to water. And then he took it a step further. So here is Jameis Winston talking about free agent Mike Evans. So uh, I think Texas receivers, they just, I feel like, they're they're different, but Mike is different. Mike is from, from Galveston. I, 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 always, I always tell this to people. And this is something that me and uh, my trainer talk about a lot. If you are born around water, like you have a different way of life. You function differently. And I just I just feel like you function differently because water, like water has no soul. You know, it doesn't discriminate against anybody. You get in that water, it's gonna take you wherever it goes. Yeah. So I feel like people that are around water, they're they are very strong will. They're one with water, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And Mike is from Galveston. If you've been to Galveston, Galveston is known for, you know, I don't know what they're known for because I'm not from there, but I know they have a beach, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's it's not a pretty beach. No, you they're know? known for oil. There's, <laughs> uh, it, it's some of the dirtiest sand in America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it's not a pretty beach. So Mike is from that muck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It might be oil muck, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it's still muck. So, uh, so he he he's a little different. I don't I don't classify him as like the regular Texas receivers. The uh, but C D Lamb is a Texas receiver. And I know he had a dominating. So, Galveston, Jameis thinks you're muck. Okay, and that's generally considered when you if you come from the muck means you're tough. Uh, yeah. Means you uh, you fought your way out, and that would be considered a compliment to the person. Maybe not the area, though. I don't think it was a big compliment to the area, per no. se. You know, what with the dirtiest beaches and muck, your muck. Mm -hmm. Muck's a, an interesting word. Yeah. Um, Galveston? Muck. muck is a creative word. Like, muck tells you something. You muck It's rake. like, yeah, muck rakers. It's like, um, it feels like, is it onomatopoeia that feels like yeah. the word muck. is muck? Is the word set? It's the right word for what it is. Yeah, but is it the right word for Galveston? People might yes. not agree. Yes. When Whoa! People, wow. You believe that? Wow. You that, come from the muck. Do you? Did he say it? Did wow. Did he say? Isn't Jackie from the muck? No, no hold he's on from a second. Did, do you? Did y'all think that Jameis said Jameis meant that as a term of endearment for Mike Evans? He said, "Yeah, he, he meant it as a compliment. He's not like for, he's, he's dirty. Not for Galveston. You from the dirty third? You want to be known as being from the dirty third, the third coast, well, the, the dirty third coast?" Well, the yes. host of the show said, "Yeah, it's the dirtiest beaches." Yeah, find the facts that are incorrect. Oh, wow. Let me know when wow. there's incorrect facts. <laughs> wow. But the point is, that's not. That's the muck. I was. When was the last time Galveston's you were in Galveston? From the muck. I mean, God forbid, it's been a while. God forbid. See, I was just there two weekends ago. Okay. Beautiful. It was beautiful. Just gorgeous. How? I mean, well, you don't believe it? Yeah. I, he doesn't believe it. Now, yeah. Describe what was beautiful about it. It was, I mean, the the, the people there, the the, the people, the people. water. The water? I didn't, I didn't think it was mucky. Well, you thought, did you get in it? Did you think it was uh, clean? No, nah, you didn't get no, in it. Was it was cold. It was cold. I oh, couldn't. yeah. Could you see? Could you walk into the water? Like, I was at Port Aransas last year. You could walk into the water, see below you. Like, you could see the ground. Could you walk two feet into? No, I don't know. I didn't walk in there, but I'm not going to judge. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to muck. But it you're up. also not going to get your legs full of oil, and John will be yeah, in there I don't just want... like those storks with <laughs> Tell you oil what. all over him and nets on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't get I'm... the net off, John. He's got plastic stuff around his coarse light. One thing you don't want to do is walk in there with a cut of any kind. No, 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 no. But That's, thank you. But That's the muck. I don't. I mean. Is that a James Winston never even been there? I, I, he knew about the beaches somehow. I don't for, look. 
the muck when I hear that, I think of like South Florida and all the players that came out of there to get to, to the NFL. I don't think of Galveston as a muck. I mean, it may be the oil might be muckish, if that's well, that the word. that is a compliment, and you know that, Dell. He meant that as a compliment to, to Mike, Mike Evans. Like, he's it's gritty. The Mike, yeah. He's but, gritty. He's, but, yeah. he's, 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 yeah, it was a, it was meant as a compliment. But. I think he took all the, it as such. All the while, he was actually take. We didn't hear the context before, but it sounded like he wasn't very complimentary of Texas wide receivers as a whole beyond Mike Evans and Ceedee Lamb. He said, "Well, they born by the water, yes or no?" Those, well, I don't know if all Texas wide receivers were, but he didn't particularly. Stop. Are you eating a W? I'm eating no, you're a done. W. Um, but he wasn't. It didn't sound like he thought much of other Texas wide receivers. No, no, he doesn't. No, he thinks. Well, Texas. He did say they're different, but Mike is. At another level. Yeah, and CD as well. He gave CD a yeah, compliment CD as well. Yeah, CD gave some love. Yeah. Mike Evans, from the muck, apparently. Uh, from the muck. And a- I mean, Galveston, stand up. Homer wants to talk about Galveston. I hope he's representing. What do you say, Homer? Uh, all right. Well, I mean, he may have a little something. There have been a lot of NFL players come out of ball high. I mean, Casey Hampton, Eric Hill. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, baseball players. Uh, NFL players, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of athletes come out of Galveston. So there's something, you know, it's a hard hard place to grow up. The beaches, I mean, they're not the best. It ain't Florida, but, you know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. I know George Murphy who came out of there. He's not athletic at all, but. That's just one of your friends you want to take a shot at? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, hey, gee, how'd you know? <laughs> I don't know how, how I figured that out. Um, so Galveston produces athletes. And maybe they, despite John's view of Galveston, maybe it, it ain't as nice and as beautiful as Ga- it, it's John's beautiful. portraying. It's well, beautiful. We're hearing people say it's a little tough they to grow up there. They got a bubba there. That's true. They got. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. I think they would they, probably rather you mention other They've got a pleasure pier. they got a boardwalk that's they've, beautiful. They've got a pleasure pier. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasure pier. What we'll okay. goes down there? Okay. Is there pleasure? Tillman's Galveston and Galveston Muck. Are two very different things, that, says Jason. That is, there are two different guys. They are two different things, I think. Yeah, they're. like Richmond and Rosenberg. Rosenberg is, you know, it's dirty and filthy. Well, that's where Raheel lives. No, he lives in Richmond. Are you well, sure? Dirty yes. and filthy. Yes, it's, he's not dirty and filthy. No, I thought he lives Richmond. in. Sh- I thought he lives in Sugarland. Real now. ones live in. No, Richmond. I think he's in Rosenberg. No, he's in Richmond. I thought I'm he grew, y'all. He grew up Kombucha, in Richmond, Rosenberg. They changed our Richmond, but. Richmond used to be the home of Mud Alley, which, you know, we weren't proud of, but in a way we were like, well, we were kind of proud of it. The dumbest thing I've ever done is get in a car with Mark Edwards and drive down Mud Alley on, like, a Friday night. Like, oh, have you've guys done run up to things. the cars. What you need? What no, you you've need. done much dumber things. Much like, dumber Why things. Are we d- no, 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 no. You don't know what Mud Alley is. There was really no reason for a, f- a car full of four white guys to be driving down Mud Alley in high school. Hmm. It was an incredibly... But you do things when you're younger that you don't mm. realize how stupid they Is are. It, was it? I one time climbed into somebody's window in the middle of the night. Yeah, Dad could shoot you. That's that's a bad Dad idea. He should have shot me. He should have. I would have shot, I shot but you. But I was quiet. I would have shot you. Is it dumber than when you said this and gave it to me for, so I can play at any time? Chris is going to – I'm going to have to give him the full load. <laughs> you know, the fact that you keep <laughs> – Do you think that was dumber or this? What I just played, giving me this opportunity. That was dumber. Okay. That other one was dumber. Oh, let's, well, okay, let's the play. Kids I are, are the th- kids in school I don't while even Lance is giving out that? To Chris Jones. The f- Chris is going to oh. – I'm going to have to give him the full load. God dang it. I meant the f- a all the giant money, chunk of the all contract the money, money yes. of the salary cap. But that's not what it's going to sound like going forward. What's that labeled under? Chris full load. <laughs> okay. But you don't know how to delete stuff out of here. Well, I'll you don't figure know it. it out. You don't know how to do I'll it. Figure it out. You do know how do you to. You have talk- a passcode I need to know to get into it. <laughs> you do know. I, w- I will. I hope so. <laughs> you do need to talk about Craig to surf though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll give you the full load when it comes to making sure that you get everything you need for cars and trucks. But I got to tell you, there's something really special going on. It's brand new. Get a load of this. This is incredible. I'm I'm getting this for my son. If you like. The brand new, if you if you want a car at unbelievable prices for a lease, for example, how about this one? It's a brand new 2023 Buick Envision Preferred all-wheel drive SUV. How about this? 
It's a lease with, lease with zero down <clears throat> and payments of only $299 a month for a 24-month lease for only $99 a month. Now, you have to see dealer for details. There's some details in here, but if you qualify, can you imagine paying $99 a month on a 24-month lease or even $299 uh, on, on a longer lease with no money down in either situation? Here's what I know. General Manager Craig DeSurf and his team are going to make crazy deals to get you in a brand-new Buick SUV. They want to move those off the lot, get the 24s in, so they are doing this incredible deal, and it's happening right now at Gulf Coast Chevy Buick GMC in Angleton. Do not miss out on this. Get started at LanceZCars.com. That's LanceZCars.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John Granado and Lance Zerline. Welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. is the number. We haven't talked about the Cougs in a while. Cougs won last night. First place in the Big 12. And that that is saying something when you see all the rated te- the uh, ranked teams in the Big 12. They just beat the sixth team in the country, and now they got the 11th team in the country coming up this Saturday, have to go to Baylor. The Cougs are not a great – they're all three of their losses, uh, Iowa State, TCU, and Kansas, all on the road. They are a great, great home team. That building was electric last night. It was awesome. Love all the stuff that they do. Uh, it's a great presentation. The, the floor, lights, uh, everything about it. It's just T- Tillman, big ups to him. He has built the best arena that we have here in the city. I think it's the best. I think what they did in that place is just it, it's second to none here in this city, including Minute Maid, including NRG. I think it's the best facility we have. Uh, now it's obviously smaller and, um, but it, it couldn't be better for what they do. Uh, and listen, Dynamo's field is awesome. That's oh, a great facility. Yeah. Phenomenal. I've only been there once and it's, oh, I've been, I was there. I went again, uh, this season and it, it's just fantastic. But I think t- uh, for Tita center is the best facility we have in the city. It's the better than Toyota center, better than Toyota. Oh yeah. Much better, much better. Better than, I know I wouldn't rank Toyota the- better. I, do they have a train in it that I missed? No, I would say it's for Tita Center first, Minute Maid second, probably Dynamo third, NRG after that. You like the confines to be a little, a little small. Yeah, yeah, I do. It makes it a lot more intimate, and it you makes went it, with the most intimate confines. Yes. Well, then for the well, then why didn't you mention Autry Court? <laughs> smaller. It is smaller per se. Uh-huh. I like to say per se sometimes. And it's even smaller when it's not, per se. Even when it's not appropriate to say. <laughs> it is smaller per uh, se. No, they and, uh, and our, our and then, then there's the opposite which is Rice Stadium. 
Right. Not as nice. I had Cole Kubelik ask me, hey, I'm going to be doing some uh, XFL games there this year. Is it like, is it a nice stadium? I said, it's <laughs> nice isn't the word. Think of <laughs> the best stadium you've ever been in and then never think of it in the context of Rice Stadium. <laughs> I said, it is, it was updated back in the 70s, I yeah. think. Yeah. It's I said, awful. it's not... Uh, I was thinking, why don't you build a, 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 a dynamo-type stadium right next to it, and then you can tear that down? I uh, mean, Rice come on, spend, Rice, you've got Rice so didn't much spend money. Any money on anything. I mean, that's ridiculous. I've heard that they have a new president who's in with sports, so maybe that will change, and it'd be great, but give Mike Bloom going a chance. Give the basketball uh, he, program, baseball program a chance. Listen, man. he might be doing the best job in America. Oh, With man. what he has to work with? Yeah. He no, might be he doing a, the best job in America. He's a good coach. He's he's a good he's coach. He's a really good coach. It is hard. There's only so much you can do at Rice, but Rice is complete ambivalence to sports. I get it. That's not why they started their their university. But come on, now that you're there, can you help out your student it's athletes? It's not why too? Duke started. It's not why uh Stanford. Gonzaga started. It's not Stanford, Cal, all Cal, of these have yes. been competitive sports. Yes. You know, competitive obviously on the on the you know, on the academic circuit, but sports, I mean, just, you got people, you got donors who have to put floors in on the basketball court years ago, Bobby Tudor, who was a baseball guy. Um, it's it's embarrassing. So hopefully they make some changes. But anyway, <clears throat> to the Cougars, Cougars got out-rebounded by nine. They allowed the opponents to shoot 52.9% from the three-point line. All of that sounds like it should be a loss. The Cougars shot under 30% from the three-point line. That sounds like the makings of a loss. They won by eight. You know why? They turned over Iowa State 16 times. They attacked the rim and, and made 24 free throws to 12 free throws for Iowa mm -hmm. State. Cougs only shot about 41, 42%, I think 42% from the field total. But it was ugly it's for just, a while. you know, Houston knows how to win ugly. And these are, if you need everything to be right, if you're a bad defensive team, then you have to have your offense play well to have a shot if you're a great defensive team then you can stay in games even when you're not shooting that's the big difference and kelvin sampson's team always does that even when they're not shooting well they stay in games stay in games stay in games usually it's because they turn teams over they take you they force you to take bad shots and they beat you on the boards this time the opponent shot a high three-point percentage they beat houston on the boards and yet houston had more offensive rebounds than the cougs and yet Cougs still get it done. It's a great home court. Uh, Houston has a premier leadership point guard, and a lot of times that's what you need to, especially if he can make shots late, that's what you need, a backcourt that can make baskets. you got Cryer and Shed that I think gives you a, a – you got bigs who do their job, right? They rebound, they block shots, they they put a body on body, and they out-tough people, as Texas said. you got a backcourt that has the potential to score but will also defend. Like, Houston has everything it takes to win a national championship except, I think, just consistency from the three-point line. Most great teams that win national championships typically have one or two guys that are, you know, snipers from three. And that's just never been Kelvin Sampson's thing. He's just – he he recruits defense and attitude first, and I think he worries about the shooting second. Yeah. I wonder – is is uh, I mean, Jamal's getting a lot of love, and the one guy talked about. Well, I was at the game, so I didn't hear it, but somebody tweeted in and said, "If the if if Kelvin Sampson and his staff couldn't coach for a couple of weeks, broadcast team said that the broadcast, yeah. then Jamal Shedd could coach this team in an emergency. In an emergency, is is he a first team All America? That'll be interesting. Uh, I think more second team probably." I don't know. We'll the see. The numbers, I don't think the numbers Nobody be does there. more for What's their the team than he does. Huh? What's he averaging points a game right now? I don't, I don't know. Well, I you just had him. Oh, no, I don't. Scott Van Pelt, we played sound earlier of him talking to Kelvin Sampson. Here's Kelvin Sampson talking about the importance of Jamal Shedd. Well, I, I hear I hear a lot of um, people talk about who the best point guard is. I never hear him mention Jamal Shedd. Uh, I, I, I would highly encourage him to watch him play at least once uh, so you can get a feel for how good he is. Uh, I wouldn't trade Jamal Shedd for any point guard in America. Uh, I think we have the best point guard. He's... Um, he's a uh, winner. Um, he's been in this program for four years. 
Uh, he's what we stand for. Because he has a tremendous mother and father. He's going to graduate in May at 3.84 grade point average. Uh, That's awesome. Second semester. He's just one of those kids you want your kid to grow up and be like. So. Uh, he's a winner. I mean, the, do what he did tonight against this team when we had some guys not play their best. Tells you all you need to know about Jamal Shedd. He's averaging 13.3. LJ's leading the team at 15.0. Um, but uh, nobody does more for their team. Nobody does more for their team than Jamal Shedd does. He's got 5.8. Uh, how about this? 5.8. It's almost 3 to 1 assist to turnovers. He does it all. He's shooting 44% from the field, which is really good for the Cougs, 80% from the free throw line, uh, 35% three-point shooter. Um, I don't I don't know that. And, and the st stats aren't everything. This is the number two team in the country, and they're so heavily reliant on this guy. If not for Jamal Shedd, this team, if Jamal Shedd goes away, this team isn't a top 25 team. Uh well I mean you mean if they if he goes away this year? Well God forbid. I mean we've we've seen yeah. we've seen the Cougs have Yeah, I mean they got a lot yeah. of work to replace him. Yeah. It's it's not and really less on the basketball side, more on the leadership and intangible yes. side. You've created a culture there, but culture can slip away. The Steelers had culture slip away after you know, it took years and years for the wrong people to leave the building and just retire, stuff like that. And I, they've had culture slip away. Kelvin Sampson's got to find that next guy. Yeah. You know, that next guy. Well, and listen, when Kelvin decides to retire, Kellen's got to keep that same culture going on, and I hope he gets that same kind of respect that Kelvin gets. Yeah. And if he does and he keeps this going from his father, it'll be an, an amazing run that the Cougs will be on. I hope he's wrong about that nobody is talking about Jamal Shedd as the best point guard in the country. I hope he's wrong about that. You know how God, nobody believed in us, you know, that kind of thing. I hope that's wrong because Jamal Shedd, every every broadcast that we hear, you watch the games and the announcers just talk about him glowingly all the time. There is not, I mean, so I hope he's wrong about that. Is there, is, I, I don't know. Okay, Dick Vitale's six best point guards in 2023-2024 from February 7th. Of this year. Pretty quick, right? Yeah. Okay. Dewan Harris, Kansas. Uh, averaging seven points a game, two rebounds, six assists, and 1.6 steals. Tyler Kolek, Mar uh, Marquette, 15 points, 4.8 rebounds, 7.2 assists, 1.7 steals. Tristan Newton, UConn, 15.9 points, 6.8 rebound, 5.7 assists. Reed Shepard, Kentucky, 12.3 points. 4.3 rebounds, 4.2 assists. Braden Smith, Purdue Boilermakers, 12.4 points per game, 5.4 rebounds, 7.3 assists. And the last one of the six? Well, that ain't your boy Jamal Shedd. It's Isaiah Stevens, of course, Colorado State, 16.6 .6 points a game, three rebounds, 7.1 assists. Dick Vitale doesn't name Jamal Shedd as one of the top six, and this is just uh, uh, 10 days ago. A well, little more than that two weeks ago. Yeah, but he doesn't have any credibility. <laughs> I mean, he's got some credibility. No. I, not, not that I agree with him, obviously. No. I mean, that's, I think that's just ridiculous. I mean, I, yeah, I get Tristan Newton. Okay, I get that. I get I, – listen, he named the point guards from okay. all the athletic, Purdue. Do you trust the athletic more? No, I don't trust them at all. Okay, here's their headed into the list. I'm not looking at it. Right. Top 20 headed into the season. Number one. Uh, no, heading into the season is different than right now. That Jamal Shedd's got final four appearances. It doesn't matter. All right, well, let's see where they put them. Okay. Tyler Kolick, Marquette, Tyrese Proctor, Duke, Trey Alexander, Creighton. This headed in. Wade Taylor, A&M. Wade Taylor's pretty good. Is DeJuan a, Harris, really a... Kansas. Not really. He's not more really. Combo He's guard. A, yeah. Tyson Walker, Michigan State. Tyler Perry, uh, Kansas State. Oh, I love him in all his movies. Yeah. Which Santiago, is your favorite movie? Vescovi, Tennessee. Uh, the one where he's a woman. He dresses Medea as a Medea goes to Hollywood. That happens quite a bit. You don't have a favorite Medea of his Medea's. Medea goes to Hollywood. No, Medea's Scary of Night Out. Jamal Shedd, number <laughs> okay. nine. Okay. All, right. all of them, huh? All of them. Hmm. Can't name them, but all of them. Yeah, the one where he's 
you know, he dresses as his mom. Or you something. said that already, but you don't have a specific movie. John's a Madea I love guy. them all, Dell. The same. Can you name one of them that you love? It doesn't matter about naming. Things. I have noticed <sighs> that the, in general, Black Twitter is a huge fan of men dressing in women's Mm-mm. clothes to do make movies. Not Just. Cat Williams even talked about it on his Club Shay Shay interview. Like I remember s- being a little kid, like. Who's this guy? And it was Flip Wilson dressing up as somebody named Henrietta or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but we do that. Everybody does that. Dustin Hoffman Robin did it. Williams did it. Yeah, and Robin Tootsie. Williams. Yeah, Cat Robin Will- Williams, yeah. Uh, the two guys, well, Tom Hanks did it. Tom Hanks yeah. did it. Started his See, career. See, people do it too. And the, the pushback on that is, well, Tom Hanks would have been fine without it. Some people believe, some people in that industry say, some people. if you don't put on the dress... Your opportun- <laughs> That's insane. Oh, Cat Williams said it. Tell me the movie where Cat Denzel Williams. Wash- I know Cat said it, but I- Cat made it sound so weird. Like you've got to put he's the talking, dress on he's first. He's talking like, about comedic. What is he talking he's about? He's talking about black comedic actors. He's not talking about. Uh, Denzel. Oh, comedic actors. If you Martin don't, Lawrence. But, yeah, he put on a dress. Martin Lawrence did put on a dress. Martin, Martin Lawrence put up a dress. Eddie Murphy never. What yes, he this? did. Yes, he, he did put on. Hercules, Eddie Hercules. Murphy did put on the dress. That was bigger. He was already huge. I'm just telling you what Cat says. Maybe he's trying to make his comeback. I'm just telling you what Cat says. You put on the, if you're a comedic actor, Holy black. Holy crap! Put on, Eddie Murphy the dr- did it. They they want you to put on the dress, and if you don't put on the dress, your career takes a, a turn. <laughs> put the that, dress on. Is this some Hollywood secret? That's Eddie what he Murphy believes. did it, but he was playing multiple characters. Well, but he put on the dress. He also put on a old man Jewish face too in 1988. Yeah, he did, he did do that. Yeah, but uh, Martin Lawrence, Eddie Murphy, they put on that dress. Martin Lawrence did put yeah, on a dress. They put on the dress. Shanene, no. Is that what the, his character was? Yeah, he put on the dress multiple times. Yeah. The Big Mama's house, he put on the dress? Yeah, he did it. Yeah, yeah. That's he had my favorite characters. Tyler Perry movie. That's not a Tyler Perry movie. No, that's movie. not Tyler Perry's Big Mama's house. <laughs> it's oh. just another black comedian putting on a dress, though. <laughs> yeah, John, don't worry about it. Flip Wilson was the original. If I'm going to put on a dress, I'm going to I bet to... Richard Pryor never wore a dress. How did much Paul Mooney ever put on a dress? I bet Robin Harris never wore a dress. I don't think Paul Mooney did either. I bet Seth the Entertainer and Steve Harvey never wore a dress. Well, yeah. Steve caught his caught some shrapnel too but for different reasons yeah i if i was gonna put on a dress i need some tequila uh yeah i mean you might now if you're looking to take shots and you're waiting for that burn and you i'm gonna really punish myself here that's the greatest punishment you can give yourself is is maestro Bell. if you consider that a punishment it's distilled for years and years the añejo is its own type of tequila the reposado is much different the cristalino blends three different types of tequilas they charcoal filter it to to make it the you know give it the transparent uh, look that it has, and then the smoothness and the slight hint of sweetness at the end are just astonishing. Uh, it is it is a great the first time if you're not a tequila drinker, the first time you have Maestro Bell straight, you're going to be blown away because you're going to think this isn't how tequila was. I, this isn't how I remember tequila tasting. This is smooth and delicious. That's right. That's the way it should be. Don't settle for cheap tequilas. Get a tequila that's very reasonably priced, but it ends. It offers high-end quality. You deserve to have that bottle on your shelf. So go treat yourself to a bottle of Maestro do Bell wherever fine liquors are sold. If they don't carry it, demand it by name. It's Maestro do Bell.
John plus Lance equals a damn good start to your day. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's John and Lance. All right. 713-780-3776 is the number. So Kyle Tucker. Well, Alex Bregman met the media. For those of you that weren't with us a little bit earlier, he put on 23 pounds. Kyle Tucker, and, and we talked about it already on the weight gain and all that and what, what it might mean. Kyle Tucker met the media as well and talked about the the contract thing, right? And Kyle Tucker, um, I think he's open to, from what I, I, I listened to the whole thing, it was three plus minutes. Which, which, which cut do you have, Dale? A little talk about the contract. A little about the contract. I, he's open, but I, I don't know if I believe him. Here's Kyle Tucker talking about the contract situation. I don't know the exact date um, that he said that, but um, maybe a little talk, but not not like um, you know, like a hard offer or anything like that. But I mean, like I've always said, just you know, we're always open to have those conversations, whether it happens now or a little later, um, whatever it may be. But I mean, we're I mean, I'm always around here. Um, so, you know, I'm always open to having those conversations and just talk it through. Yeah. Um, yeah well, okay. he, ain't, he ain't doing it. His agent is doing it, and he ain't. I, he's hitting the market. And, you know, rightfully so. Get as much as you possibly can. Um, he he ain't taking that Jordan deal. He ain't taking that original Bregman deal. He ain't taking that original Altuve deal. Um you know, the other guys didn't. They didn't come to terms on anything, and they're gone. When they don't, when they go through they go through arbitration, they put in their six or six-plus years, seven years, uh, and they can't come to terms on something that is a, a little bit team-friendly, like Bregman did, like Jordan did, like Altuve did, then, you know, then they're gonna, it's, it's going to be over. You got Bregman for a few more years than you would have anyway. He's 30, going to be 30 years old. And you got him for uh, a nice chunk, and you won titles. But this is going to be it for Alex Bregman. Scott Boris already said it. He's like, this is a different deal. This ain't Altuve. Okay? Altuve's at the end of his uh, You'll get nine of years career. out of Alex Bregman. The reality is you take it. That's it. The reality is you take it, but it's, it's uh, still going to be tough. It's still going to be tough to see your favorite players leave every few years now. But that's what big boy baseball is going to look like when it's time for people to get paid. You either have to, you know, typically you're going to have to pay retail prices for the players. You 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 can keep them because they're young, and this is why you grow your own so you can have longer uh, stints. But the reality of professional baseball is that because of their salary cap or their lack of a true salary cap really in their structure, you just can't, like, your favorite players have to walk away unless they're going to go to one of, like, three to four teams, your favorite players eventually will walk away, and you just try to be smart about making sure you hold on to some of them. I think Jim Crane has done a good job of holding on to Altuve, although, you know, history will tell you Altuve, I think, is going to stay with Houston. I don't think he ever wants to leave at all. No. The question is going to be, can he ever hang on to core guys for well. their, their, their career, like, or for a majority of their career, or, like, the the – like the great a great majority of their career, Tucker Bregman, George, uh, Carlos. I mean, they're all going to be you know they're all going to be gone. Well, so. he's already okay. So he picked McCullers, and he picked Javier. Okay. Yeah, th those those are reasonable contracts. Yeah. Well, I mean, McCullers. McCullers well, well, you went in with open eyes to his injury history. You went in with open eyes, knowing that there was a problem. There was a chance that could be a problem. For a starting pitcher, 17, 17 five, I think it is, right? What? That's not the – for McCullers yeah. per year. That's not crazy for a starter that's, you know, No, healthy. but you pick, you might have picked the wrong guy. Yeah, I mean – In tell, Javier, you might have picked the wrong guy. So far, you Well, did. we'll see, but no one could have argued with the Javier deal when it went down. No. He looked like the best pitcher in Major League Baseball yep. when you gave it to him. Yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see what he does with Fromber. Uh, they're not afraid to give relievers money. We know that for a fact. Relievers get paid in Houston. Um, but the position players, you know, Jordan should never leave. By the time Jordan leaves the Astros, he better be washed. 
completely washed. Yeah. Well, I think you got the start of it. Jordan may be well be like an Altuve here. You know, he took that that deal that was a bit team friendly. He's going to be here when when he, that deal is up. He's going to be late twenties. They're going to give him another one. You you uh, he's on court. He's on track to be a lifer, as opposed to Tucker, who's going to do his six seven years. Uh, you know, <laughs> and then br- be gone. Correa Springer, those are different deals. Um. Jordan is probably good. He's on, he's on pace to be here for a, a long time. And, you know, it's just the guys that you picked. Okay, now you got Frombrook, too. Well, that's, that's another one we never talk about. Is Frombrook's coming up in a couple of years. I know. Frombrook's older, but Frombrook's a pitcher who doesn't rely on a big fastball. His fastball's good. It's actually faster than you, you give him credit for because he doesn't. He doesn't. It's he pops the mid higher than Javier, than Christian Javier does. And Javier looks like he throws way yes. harder. And yet, here every once in a while you'll see, boom, 96, 97 for Fromber. Like, what? Yeah. Uh, but Fromber has been excellent since 2000. You know, a couple ups and downs, but nothing unusual. You find that with most pitchers. But, you know, to get paid like an elite pitcher, he has to really, I think he needs to come up with an elite season this year, which is very possible. He's done it already in the past. But, you know, approach that 20 win mark, get to, he's going to have 34, 35 starts if he's healthy. Get to at least eighteen wins, post a, a sub three ERA. Uh, you know you want your WHIP right around one. Sometimes because he pitches around player, you know he doesn't like to give in. His WHIP's going to be a little higher because he's going to he's not afraid to walk guys. Uh, it usually doesn't come back to get him, but you know at any point it could turn into a disaster for him. So if he starts, but he also doesn't usually give up home runs. But last year he gave up over double the amount of home runs that he did the year before. The year before seven home runs. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He was outstanding. 24 consecutive uh, quality starts, wasn't it? Uh, was it 23, 24? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I think it was 24. And uh, so I feel good about Fromber, but you are going to have a decision to make there. Look, Lance Berkman has got to do something for you, or, or you're just waiting for his money to roll off the books. I mean, Lance who? Oh, McCullers. Lance McCullers, yeah. He's gonna wait for his money to roll off the books if he can't give you something. I feel bad for him when he's when he's on. He's got some good stuff, but right now it's just I'm I'm I've kind of written Lance off. And if you get something from him, that's great. It's Hunter Brown is the guy that I'm really Hunter and Javier, the two H's, Hunter and Javier. That that's a J. They are mm-hmm. uh, the different guys, letters, but okay. They're the guys that we they call them the killer H's. Uh, we're going no, to have to. No, we don't. Some people call them the killer H's. No one does. That's not because they're not H's. If the killer H's can get it back this year, um, you got a chance to be a World Series team again. No question. Your pitching staff will be the best in Major League Baseball. With with Presley, Abreu, and Hayter on the back end. and with, Oh, this team is going to be. And with Verlander, Fromber, the killer H's, and then, um, you know, who, whoever. Garcia makes it back. Lance makes it back. I'm missing another... Uh, Arkady, we'll see. You know, oh, no. there's no, there's no doubt that Houston has the potential, just like we said at the beginning of last year, to have the best pitching staff in Major League Baseball. Nothing changes other than you're not as sure well, when you're two up and coming no, young players. Yes, and, but you do have Verlander's on this one to start with. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't but, last year. But the flip side is you don't feel as good about Javier and Hunter Brown. Yeah, it's true. This is going to be the best Astros team ever. Oh. <sighs> It's just hyperbole. Turn, his, turn hyperbole. his mic off. The best no. Why are you saying that? This is going to be the what? best Astros. Why do you believe so? What? Because of the best, this is the best bullpen they've had. This is potentially the best rotation. And the lineup is going to be, ju- and with, without Maldonado in it, with uh, Jordan, Abreu's in this one, Bregman in a contract year. I don't care about Abreu. Pena's going to be back and better. Can't he's be worse. Wor- he, no, he's not going to be worse. He's going to be much better than he was last year. Oh. Altuve in his last. So 100. basically, we're taking our excitement from last year and we're just moving it to this year. Go look at Altuve's last. Well, he missed a lot of time, but the last 162 games he pl- he has played is one of the best seasons in Major League Baseball. So you history. say something that scares me a little bit with him. He missed a lot of time. Uh, one of them was an oblique. You know, that's not. He didn't get hit by a pitch. He hurt himself. I think swinging. 
Um, the two things that scare me a little bit, one is with Jordan, is it already this early in his career? He has a hard time. No, he's just going to get better. He's going to get healthier? He's just going to get better. C- Tucker is playing. How for- is Jordan going to get healthier? Healthy? Well, he's going to play. I didn't say bad. I he's mean, gonna the play, baseball he's gonna is pretty damn he's gonna, good. He's going to be dh a lot. But he hurts his hands. hands swinging. Well, did you ever swing as hard as he did? No. Yes. You don't know anything about it. Yeah, and I've never hurt my hands. No. How many wins, John, for the best team ever? This is going to be if they're the, the best, best team, team ever. ever. 110? They were 108. What did they win? 108? I think they were 108. No, but this one is going to be better. And win the World Series. And win the World Series. So, but can you give us an example? How many of- wins do you over under? This one's probably 102 or 103. Okay. Yeah. But they will be a better team overall. Yeah, they're going to be a better team overall. Yeah. So, you're, so you're saying ALCS is definitely a. That's a this is eight in a row. Yeah, that's already done. That's already done. That's already done. Their total is 92 and a half in Vegas. Yeah. And the under is minus 125. The under is minus 125. Good. Put your money on it. Instead of putting in its stupid stocks, put, put your put your money on the Astros. Instead of putting your money in stupid stocks, yeah, yeah, the market, or just go with underdog fantasy. You could do that. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. Underdog fantasy is real money. It actually pays off real money as well. It's a fantasy game because well, they have daily fantasy, they have season long fantasy, um, which is still a lot of fun. I like to tell you about the the pick'em challenge because this is where you make your your big money quickly i mean look a daily fantasy is a lot of fun too but and there's low there's low commitment there you can get in for three dollars five dollars ten dollars you can play a a big fantasy game a daily basketball game that they have but how about nba where you play the pick'em challenge where you download the app you use promo code lance for your first deposit they not only double your first deposit up to a hundred dollars but they also are going to um they're also going to give you a special pick and with this special pick, we could be talking about 100 times the amount of your original play if you hit all five highs or lows. You, they offer you a wide variety of players and statistics for each player on a given game, and you just pick, oh, I think that one's going to go lower than that from a rebound standpoint. Ooh, I like the points, rebounds, assist higher for that player. You do that for five of them, you got a chance to win 100 times your money. But you can do it for as few as two and still win three times your original play. This is a fun way to watch your game and play along. I love it. It's super easy to navigate the uh, the app, and I think you're going to have a great time playing Underdog Fantasy's Pick'em Challenge. You must be 18 or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms and conditions apply. If you feel like you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or go to ncpgambling.org.
You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John Granado and Lance Zerline. We've made listening and watching your favorite sports radio station even easier. We're officially streaming on the ESPN Houston YouTube channel every day. Now you can easily listen and watch anywhere and everywhere. If you listen every day and like us, clicking our YouTube subscribe button makes a big difference for us. It matters. Let us know you're listening. If you're watching earlier, you would have seen, is it Melissa? Mm -hmm. From down the hall on Spanish Station. Spanish Station. She get, came down to talk with the Astros, talk about her new engagement. I saw the stream, the YouTube streams shoot up. Um, we don't take requests for pretty women, but if there happens to be one, you should be watching because you pervs can enjoy. Okay, uh, let's get Tony in here, and we'll finish up with stuff that we have not talked about yet. What's up, Tony? Hey, guys. As uh, the resident uh, women's basketball expert, I wanted to call in and uh, defend Caroline Peck a little bit here. Um, and the reason being is that last week when Caitlin Clark, uh, the game she set the record, uh, and I had her, I had money on her, and went for 50, and she checked out of the game with 49 points uh, with two minutes left. Do you know what I said? You know, I screamed at my TV. What'd you say? Bitch. I said, I said, bitch, stay in the game. Bench? Bench. Bench. Well, that, well, well, hold on. Carolyn Wait. Peck is from Tennessee. She doesn't. Jefferson City, Tennessee. Where are you from? Where are you from, Tony? Uh, the home of, uh, you know, the, the very heartbeat of college women's basketball. Iowa. UConn? Iowa. Iowa. So uh, if no, you. Iowa. Oh. So, if you say bench, it should be pretty clear. Bench. Yeah, that's the home of loose meat sandwiches and saying dirty B words. Bench. 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 Tony, you should say bench. Bench. It should be pretty clear. Yeah. Bench. Yeah. Unless that's not what you meant. Oh, meant, meant. That's, that's really, meant, meant that is not what I meant. Mm. You know, Kaylin Clark has no control over that she checks in and out, right? Maybe, did you direct you that at her? How do you not get 50? Did you direct that at our coach, or did you talk to Kaylin Clark? How do you not get 50? Oh, she doesn't run that team, Dale. Come on. Okay, Tony. <laughs> she, she can't check herself. In and out. Uh, she she kind of she kind of does. She kind of does. Mm. does. You think you think that coach is calling for pulling up the from same the logo? Coach, the same. Yeah, you think that's a good shot? <laughs> yeah, when she makes it, the same coach yeah. who who ran into the Nebraska press conference, like, we got a plane to catch. Yeah, Do you this is boobly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that you, coach. Wait, you don't think that coach is going? No, no. Oh, a good shot. She's just thankful that Caitlin's on the team. Yeah, that's yeah true. she is. I had plus six hundred for her going for fifty that game. So, I, yeah, I, I maybe I yelled the uh, the real B word. The bench, yeah, mm -hmm. bench, yeah. Plus six hundred for going for fifty. That cannot have been a real number. I've looked for Caitlin Clark numbers, can't find them. You can't. I mean, you can probably find them on plus six hundred. Sounds like about right. It does. I mean, yeah. it sounds like he actually would have had that. Plus six hundred. Yeah, they're not gonna. And then, and then she goes sits ton. down at forty nine. Oh, God. But she came back, and then she went back out again. Probably 40-plus was minus 220. Um, I mean, yeah. what was, what were odds would you give for her Well, she was on, gonna a, get... on a record-setting night? 40 had to be the favorite. Yeah, I mean, she averages like 32 a game, I think. 31 and a half, 31.6. Yeah, 40 is, I don't know. No, it's, 40 was definitely in the average realm. average 32, there. you have to have a bunch of 40s. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. I'll I mean, you. usually. John, you're, you're getting some pushback on your comments well, for the last comment? segment. Okay, go ahead. People have taken issue. Um, well, first, Art laughs at Lance. Lance McCullers, make it back. Ha, 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 Child, please. Uh, so no one believes well, the one Lance coming McCullers back. coming back. He'll, 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 ain't going to be great. He's going to be back. Um, and Justin. For the H-Town burial, worst case scenario. Dustin, once again, implies that maybe you should be drinking because your brain is foggy. You think this rotation do? is better than the 2019 oh, rotation? Oh, those losers! Someone please get Ooh. Granado some alcohol. Oh, what did they win? Nothing. Is it this their team is winning the World is Series? Is it their fault or, or was it AJ Hinch's fault for that not? It doesn't matter. They won nothing. Those bunch of losers. losers. They did Johnson. get to a World Series. Losers. A bunch of losers. Yeah, Johnson. great bullpen. Will Harris. What? He said the rotation. The 2019 Even the rotation. rotation. Even the rotation. Garrett Cole. What did he win? What has he ever won? Nothing. So. Oh, I know this is now my job, I guess, but yesterday you destroyed AJ Hitch for not putting in Garrett Cole. Now you're blaming Garrett Cole nothing. for not winning anything. Well, maybe you, Garrett Cole told him, I don't want to go into this game. You mean the guy who was in know. the bullpen and was ready to go? You don't know. I feel like we do know because he was asked about it afterwards. I feel like we do know. 
and he had a Boris hat on <laughs> yeah. immediately after. I think That's we, how pissed he was at AJ. I think we know he was ready to play or yeah. ready to pitch. All right, how many Caitlin Clark 40-point games have we had this year? How many Caitlin Clark 40-point games? Yep. Six. Four. Four? Okay. 49, 45. How many double-digit assist games has she had? Double-digit assist games? Eight. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Did you, speaking of assists and shooting a lot, did you see Juju, Juju Watkins' stat line? Uh, she plays for USC. She's a freshman. Oh, she's good. A lot bro. of hype for her. She no, I want to. I'm not. I'm, don't take this the wrong way. She plays like a guy. She plays like a guy. I knew that she, was coming. She no. She her shot is. It looks like a guy. Well, what's the best way that you can say it without saying she plays like a guy? Like you can. Like what's the coding? Because I like to say fluid play. Like you. She no, can stand, she looks. She can hold her own in a pickup game at a like. I don't. Because I don't want to say she plays like a guy, but really it's like, like she no she she's got a like shot. she would beat my son Mason for sure. <laughs> Whoa, okay, <laughs> thanks for that acknowledgement. Well, no, what she played like in her last game was Jordan Poole. She went six. Oh. She went six for thirty-two. Wow, and one assist. Oh, she wow. shot the ball. God. And you know what someone said? Someone quote tweeted that stat line. It was like you know the rest of the team has a group chat without her. 18% from the field goal. 18%. She shot 32 times? Yes, yeah, 6 for 32. 18% from the field. And they, except, you know 11 what rebounds, is? 1 assist. They won the game, by the way. You know what that team is? It's her. Yeah, but if you go 6 for 32. Oh, she's Allen Iverson. What do you think her field goal Allen percentage Iverson is? Allen Iverson even would get is, to 14 to 32 to at some shoot, point. Is it easier to shoot in women's basketball, do you think? There's a smaller ball? Smaller ball. You're not going to have people playing over the top. You. She's 6'2". She shoots 41% from the field. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that ain't well she, but she's a volume. She's like Iverson. Well, or, or six for 32 ain't going to help the shooting percentage. No, that hurt. Yeah, look, Take that six for 32 out, Yeah, it's prob- she's a 50% prob- shooter. Probably better, but <laughs> six for 32. 30- many- When's the last time she didn't take 23 shots in the game? Oh, my God. She's a volume shooter's right. Yeah. She's Iverson. Eight, she's 22, also a 22, 22, 22, 27, 27. 26, 27, 25, 23, 25, 32. You know that. I mean, she gets shots up. You know her that. shots per Here's I'm going to do her minutes first and her shots second. 39, 32, 29, 25, 38, 23. She was unselfish there. Had four assists. Every minute 37, she's 25, a shot. 40, 27, 34, 26, 38, 27, 36, 27. 28 22. She's a good player, though, bro. Yeah, all that being said, USC is a top 10 team in the country. Yeah, How about this? 33 minutes, 33 shots. Good for her. 11 for 33. Well, you know what? Oh, One assist. How are they a top 10 team? Because of her. Juju. Volume Juju. shooting. But, She's a good player. Yeah, but she just had she had a bad night shooting. But, woo. Look, of course you can pass the ball and no one make a shot, but the ratio 32 shots up to One assist. <laughs> one assist. It's not that, great. That doesn't mean she wasn't giving it up. That's what I'm saying. The other players can't shoot. The this other is what I'm saying. She could have been passed. All the time. She could have passed on the ball. But at some point, who said, like Deion Waiter said, I'd rather go, I'd rather go 0 for 18 than 0 for 10. Cause Their group if, chat's because of all but her. Because if I went 0 for 10, it means I stopped. I, I quit. <laughs> so yeah. Got to keep shooting. Got to keep going. Yeah. No, you know what? They they have a group chat without her. Yeah, <laughs> that's what some guy was like. You know, there's a team group chat with her without her being in it. Uh seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. The number. Oh, we got news of the weird coming your way. Yeah, something good. Yeah, I do. I got some good. Try stuff. to clean it up this time. Lately, it's been really filthy. A lot of people doing filthy things. Teachers doing OnlyFans. Well, just dirty, filthy. dirty, filthy stuff. There's been a lot of dirty, filthy stuff. You want something clean? You want something wholesome? Chastain Ford. That's what it is. Chastain Ford. I can't believe John called an Astros team a bunch of losers. Losers. Uh, time for me to talk about winners. Yeah, he was and just that's defending the his point. <laughs> the Chastangs are the best. I love the Chastangs. I love Joe. I've known Joe and Patrick for a long, long time. Um, their sister and brother-in-law, the families. I've spent some time with them. I, I really, you were going to really, really like them as well. You may be dealing with them. Uh, there's a good chance. Uh, they've got the truck month going on right now, which is the best time. This is right now the best time of the year to buy a truck. It is truck month. It's all the 2023 Ford F-150s. You're going to enjoy exclusive discounts. 
fantastic disc. The best discounts, you're going to get them at, at Chastang Ford. 1.9% financing for 72 months. You're tying up their money for six years at 1.9%. That's a ridiculously low interest rate. This is the time for you to get that F-150. If you are need a truck, truck month at Chastain Ford, it's like no other. No dealer add-ons, no marking up, giving you all the discounts, doing it every single day. The best place to get your truck on right now. ChastainFord.com on 610 at Homestead, not Hempstead. Five minutes from downtown Chastain Ford. Lance Weird. News of the Weird. News. News. Weird. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5. So, apparently he'd been paroled before. A man in Las Vegas who was convi- convicted murderer. He had been paroled before, and he was up for parole again. Up for parole again just recently. She's 43. Uh, Jeremy Kelly. Well... They decided that they, he would go before the parole board again, but then they realized um, he's not here. He had been missing from the prison system, a convicted murderer, for over a year in Nevada. I don't know that they've got a real good grasp on everything that's going on in their prison system. If you lost a prisoner... <laughs> Y'all be quiet. We can't find him. to shut Well, why would they come out and say... Hey, where is he? <laughs> Probably because he was already found. Hey, wait a minute. How could you lose a prisoner? It was not until not last know. December the Department of Corrections realized Kelly was not in their custody. The realization came as Kelly would have been eligible for parole for parole in January 2024. Man. I just don't feel like <sighs> I'm safe in, in Nevada right now. No. Okay. Well, yeah, because of all the prisoners that could be out. Yeah. Because yeah. you just don't know where a convicted murderer or is. Or because it, Las Vegas is there and it could swallow you whole. Well, that could happen too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would not be, I don't, I'd be in a casino all day. Yeah, I don't think it'd be great for me to live there. No, it wouldn't be. It would be horrible for me to live there. Uh, have you ever been to Salt Bay's restaurant? No. Super Chotch Fest. Yeah. He comes out, you pay your $700 for your steak, and then he comes and slices it like this. Yeah. And then throw some salt it's on it. 700 pounds bill. for a steak. Yeah. 
That's what I said. Pounds even more. Well, apparently, though, uh, they're, it's, I don't know why they're doing pretty damn well. Because people want to be on Instagram and show. Look In at its me. accounts, they say they're sought to improve energy efficiency at an operational level with efforts including turning off central heating after closing or during peak hours when heating demand is lower. They're cutting the heat in the restaurant when they're and closed. charging 700 pounds of steak. Uh, yeah, because they know douchebags will pay it. Well, I said, look at me, everybody. Woo! He's doing this. Look at my Instagram. Yeah, and he's just, and all you're doing is seeing this nerd put salt on a steak. Hey, listen, he's better than me. I'm sitting in there writing offensive line prospects with, now that I got bad hips sitting in a chair all day just waiting for food courts to open. Yeah. And what's he doing? Throwing salt on a steak for billions. Yeah. Who wins? He wins. He wins. Yeah. He, Always. But you got to be He's a got douche. the sweet knife. I could do all this stuff. No. And then put salt on stuff. When you what cut about this? your meat after you cook it, you have to like no, saw it. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. That's a good one. But stop it. You know what? I'd be Pepper Bay. I'd be up here you with the a pepper grinder like this. What you're doing. I stand over your steak. Don't. Stand over your steak. Look what he's doing. What did he just do Woo. on camera? No, he might have been obscured by the desk. He might get I lucky hope there. So. But I hope the laptop didn't catch that. While you're chain, while you're chainsawing oh. his steak, he's doing other things with his hands. What I was being Pepper doing? Bay. Don't do that anymore. I just be a Pepper Bay. Pepper Bay is terrible. <laughs> Pepper Bay is a move. Why? Why is it so low? Wow. Shouldn't like Salt Bay has it above his shoulder? Why is your motion like waist level? Yeah. Because mm. I'm going to put the pepper on your steak. I don't want your pepper. Well, that's why it's most expensive. You want some You want some of that, what's the sauce, Bernays sauce? Yeah. Ooh, no, not I want not okay. if it comes from that area. And this, okay. Don't want any blue cheese. Okay. Nothing. Okay. No. Chunky blue cheese. Nothing. Okay. A bride was disgusted. Apparently, she caught the groom being breastfed by his mom before the wedding. Oh. Are you going to get what married? What country is this? It is in, God, is this in Westeros? You, no, it's in it's in is in U, the UK. Oh, mm. yeah. What's a place where people would breastfeed with their mom way too late? You heard them. The UK. UK. No, in Game of Thrones, Dale. What's one of those little oh. towns? Well, Robin. Well, no. Yeah, where was that kid? The Eerie? That was in... Uh, it was Little Robin. Yeah, it, was it, a, in, it lived on a mountain. In the Eerie, yeah. I don't know yeah. how that correlates to the real world. Because that's yeah. the only place you can get away with that except the UK. So... This one, the mother obviously was and lactating. How old was this man? How, yeah, how old was he? And how old was she that uh, she's lactating? Bro, that's just incest uh, at some no point. no age in the story. Old enough to get married. There's no age in the story. but it's, At some know. point, it crosses over from, you know, brain health, uh, food for brain health and, and bone growth into some type of really creepy incest. <laughs> so, apparently, she walked into the toilet. And what she saw oh, was no, it's in the he toilet? was being breastfed by the mom. She thought he was in there doing drugs. And in fact, well, this is she worse. Wishes it was a, <laughs> she wished it was a mirror full of Coke. She's like, oh, my God, I wish this was four uh, lines of Coke. Uh, I wish so bad it wasn't my husband on the mom's teat. <laughs> <laughs> on my mother-in-law. So that's off, right? Uh, uh, did, they, did they get married? Uh, I think they can. no, I we can't get married. I don't. I don't. I, let's see, building up the tents and an astonished. Why would you reflect it? I don't. I don't know. Everybody. I don't know. I don't care. Um, a a Florida man arrested after posting YouTube video of himself fleeing police. Can we not? Not. I've self seen snitch? this before. Yeah, running away, I, putting seen, it on YouTube. Yeah, I've seen that before. Uh, I mean, can we stop self snitching, everybody? When are we gonna stop? No, I like, I like for criminals to self snitch. That's yeah. good. It helps. It Did makes you it see? Easier. Have you seen this? Our Iran is claiming that they own Antarctica. What? Yeah. Um. Yeah, Iran claims. Is this gonna be another war starting? I don't know, but they claim they're claiming that they own Antarctica. Why? And, and but it's defying the global treaty, and they're preparing for a military operation on the South Pole. Oh, <laughs> Iran! What I, are we well, doing? It, what, isn't it just natural? Of course, Iran owns the South Pole. 
want it. Makes sense to me. They it want does it. make sense. They want I mean, it in a card same, game. Isn't it kind of the same? What if they want it in a card you know, game? You don't know. They might have. I know. I know. Uh, Eric Layden's grandpa won Astros four Astros tickets from Judge Roy Hoffines in a card game. He did originally four Astros tickets or a giant landmass. They yeah. Both can, can they both be won in card games? Like maybe. Maybe. You just never know who is running you Antarctica. We have property rights in the South Pole. We have a plan to raise our flag there and carry out military and scientific work. Okay. No, Iran. Can y'all y'all have done of too all much? Places are, that you're gonna. Put, Iran has been doing too much for years. Now. Just let them have it. It's <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> who cares? Let's let no, have it. give them like Patagonia or something. No, what? people actually like that the place. Patagonia. Give, give them Antarctica. Who cares? Who's fighting this? The Patagonians are like what? Lance? <laughs> okay. Give them New Jersey. No, I don't have New Jersey. Can't give them a piece of this country. <clears throat> give them. Yeah, you don't want that to. What give them give Russia. Them? Oh yeah, that'll go over well. <laughs> Well, there we go. Conflict. <laughs> that's, uh, Let's that's get that conflict You going. were worried about a war. Ooh, Ooh, Russia. He's Putin. Did you hear what Iran said about you? <laughs> but I don't want to be part of that because then those two you're are You're worried start. about a war. You're trying to start a nuclear yeah, war. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, just right, Iran, can y'all just chill out for a little bit no. and just leave everything alone for a, Just give us a decade of, n- of no nonsense. Okay? All right, we're done. I think, is Paul next? Yeah. Yes. Okay. He is still... Here. He's still here. He's not on vacation yet. He's he not starts on vacation. tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow he goes. Okay. So Paul's next right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. I think it's a legitimate question. Is Paul here? To be honest with you, yes. To, to For Paul honest. and because of recent events. Yes. But here's the deal is access vascular health is what we're talking about now. We're talking about Doc Manavis. We're talking about her greatness. We talked a little bit about it earlier in the show. The, there are doctors that are still performing surgeries on an enlarged prostate. Those doctors should be... They should lose their their doctor license, whatever that is. If you're if you're somebody that has an enlarged prostate, there's only one place to go, and that's a, a Access Vascular Health. Doc Manavis does not perform surgery. She has an IV for you. you. Take an MRI, an ultrasound. You go see her. It's easy. It's wonderful. The process is so simple. There's no pain involved. You put in an IV, and you and your prostate. Forty five minutes. And your prostate is shrunk, and you can go about living a normal life again. Are you? Do you have the uh, symptoms of an enlarged prostate? Peeing too often, can't start, can't stop. All, all there's all of those things. If you think you might have an enlarged prostate, there's only one place to go: nine seven five prostate dot com. Nine seven five prostate dot com.
Hello and welcome aboard the Paul Gallant Show on this Tuesday, February 20th of 2024. If you had a three-day weekend, I hope you had yourself a wonderful time. A lot of stuff to dive into on today's show. The Astros are really in the thick of spring training. We've got a bunch of updates from West Palm Beach. We've got to talk about a big game that took place last night. But in case you were living under a rock, yeah, there have been some changes here at ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. And I'm not going to lie, bummed out about them. Uh, this is a brutal, brutal industry at times, and it sucks to see people let go for something that wasn't in their control at all. I think that Josh Beard, who's been my brother in radio for a, a couple of years, is, is awesome. I, I think the show that he and Michael Connor were doing together was a very good one, and Andrew Carlson, the producer, all three of whom – I consider friends. It, it sucks to see them go among others. I feel very fortunate to still have a job. There's a part of me that wants to play How Long Will They Mourn Me by Tupac, just thinking about all the bodies that I've seen done in by the radio industry in my career. I, I did want to acknowledge that it happened. I, I think we here at ESPN 97.5, 92.5, and Gal Media were different than the corporate conglomerates that we compete against to just expect you to forget about these people as if they're dead after they take them out back. It was a budget thing, and we really do appreciate everybody who has been sticking with us on this station for all of this time. I really appreciate every single person that has been listening to me. and That's the extra little development here. So I'm about to go on a little three-day vacation to Mexico to go hang out with uh, one of my best friends who's getting married, really excited for it. But uh, – as you guys know it, this is going to be the final edition of the Paul Gallant Show featuring just Paul Gallant. I am not leaving the station. We got updates to come, but wanted to fill that in with you. Uh, Sean Mapes and I will still be working together in some capacity. Very thrilled about that. Sean, uh, happy Tuesday. Uh, we did a show yesterday. We did not have Monday off because we... We grind here at ESPN yeah. 97.5 and 92.5, but uh, how are you on this wonderful Tuesday morning? Doing, doing all right, doing all right. Obviously, second everything you said about Andrew, Michael Connor, Josh Beard. Uh, yeah, it sucks, man. It sucks. That's really all we can say. I know that we're going to do our damnedest to keep people listening, to put out an entertaining product. The show must go on, you know? It sucks, though. That's all I really got. So, um, probably talk about this a little bit more at 11.45, but uh, if you want to jump aboard, we will discuss all things with you today. 713-780-3776. we got to really make this the most interactive edition of the Paul Galan Show, seeing as this is the final one. But we got to start by talking about our beloved Cougs. Did you see what they did last night? They took out Iowa State. Got vengeance. For their loss earlier this year in Ames, Iowa, 73 to 65, they took them down. I have been of the belief that going into this year, that iron truly sharpens iron and the Big 12, one of the best conferences in college basketball, maybe the best conference in college basketball, joining the Big 12 was the best thing that Houston could do when it comes to actually giving them a fighting chance at winning a national title. Now, it's not to say that they've never had a chance to do it before. Obviously, they made a Final Four a couple of years ago. But I think that when you are battle-tested in college basketball, that's what really gives you the ability to go the full you know, tournament where you got to win two times, two times, two times, six times to get the Nets cut down for an actual national title, to hold up a trophy. It's really hard, and it's something the Cougs have never done, despite one of the greatest athletes, if not the greatest athlete in Houston history, 
because he played at the University of Houston and then for the Rockets, he probably does have a leg up on Jose Altuve. But Hakeem Olajuwon was never able to do it. The Cougs have had some great teams in their history, but they've never quite been able to win the national title despite, I believe, five Final Four appearances. So to see them do what they did last night against Iowa State, who's got one of the best defenses in all of college basketball, really has me giddy about their chances this year. Iron sharpening iron. Well, here is all the iron that the Houston Cougars have been, I guess, sharpening themselves with over the course of the year. Two games against Iowa State, who has, out of nowhere, become maybe the third best team in the Big 12. Remember the first time that these two teams played? I don't think we were looking at Iowa State as a serious threat in the Big 12. You were probably looking at them as a good team. They've historically been a good team. But you split games with them. You beat then number 25 Texas Tech, 77-54. You beat then number 21 BYU, 75-68. to 68. You've swept Texas, and you still got a couple of games left. A rematch against Kansas, who you lost to not too long ago, but that was in Lawrence, Kansas. And then you play Baylor on Saturday. They are currently 11th ranked. All of it adds up to, I think, the Cougars potentially having their best opportunity to win a national title entirely because they will be tried and true by tournament time. And... It was interesting watching the end of last night's game because Kelvin Sampson, head coach of the Houston Cougars, joined Scott Van Pelt on Van Pelt's late night edition of SportsCenter. And he broke character. If you've watched Cougars basketball games before, you know that Kelvin Sampson has a great deal of respect for Jamal Shedd, who was the Cougars' best player. But at the same time, you will see multiple moments in a game where it seems like they are perhaps, you know, getting on each other's case. I would go back to a game, I think it was against Texas a couple of weeks ago, where down the stretch, it really looked like they were having some sort of disagreement. But we know Samson is a hard ass. He's been going to his practices. Jeremy Brandon will tell you all about it. This is a guy who is one of the hardest coaches in college basketball, and there's a reason that the Cougars have been such a tough program over the last couple of years. But it makes it so different when you see what Kelvin Sampson had to say about Jamal Shedd after the game. He called him the best point guard in the country. Saying further, I wouldn't trade Jamal Shedd for any point guard in America. He is what we stand for. He has a tremendous mother and father. He's going to graduate with a 3.84 GPA. He's one of those kids you want your kid to grow up and be like. He's a winner. And he went further to say that he wishes that more people were talking about Jamal Shedd as one of the best point guards in the country. And last night, I mean, this was a game where he truly proved it. So he played 37 minutes and 39 seconds, scored 20 of his 26 points in the second half. In that second half, he was 5 of 7 from the field, 8 of 9 from the free throw line. And this was all against the number three defense in the country. And on top of that, Houston was dealing with some foul trouble because L.J. Cryer and Jawan Roberts, uh, Roberts they were basically playing very little in this one due to that foul trouble. And Cryer really couldn't get anything going from a shooting perspective. And at a point in the game where it was close, four-point game, Jamal Shedd took over, hit a crossover, stepped back for a three, drove inside for another basket, hit a bunch of free throws down the, uh, down the stretch. This guy is damn good. He is battle-seasoned as far as college basketball players go, especially with all the one-and-dones that you see out there. You would think that having a guy like this as their best player – gives Houston a huge advantage going into the tournament, as does, of course, having gone up against all of these good teams. 20 wins in a row, by the way, at Fertitta Center. There is a part of me that wishes I had gone. There is another part of me that actually felt weirdly superstitious, thinking that, you know what, maybe maybe I don't go to this one. Because the last time I was at there for a top 10 matchup featuring the Cougars and somebody else against Alabama, they ended up losing. So I thought to myself, all right, maybe I don't go to this one. But I wish I had gone. The atmosphere looked absolutely electric, much like it was for the Alabama game. I saw a bunch of people on my Instagram store on Instagram stories that were posting, but I was like, oh, God, should have gone. Should have gone. But our beloved Cougs have another dub, and I believe that they are as ready as they're going, as they're going to be for the NCAA tournament.
So, you want to weigh in on that? 713-780-3776 to call in and to text in. College basketball is getting really fun right now. More coaches keep melting down. You had a fight last night. And we're going to attempt to break the internet by playing a game of what did you actually hear here? It's the Paul Gallant Show, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Stick around. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's Paul Gallant. Join the conversation by dialing or texting 713-780-3776. 
713-780-3776. College basketball is getting fun. If you listen to yesterday's show, we talked about a couple of rants, specifically one by Rick Pitino, where he basically called all his players unathletic and slow and said that St. John's has terrible facilities. Leave it to Rick Pitino, who is truly one of the more unlikable figures in basketball history, whether in the NBA being the whiny runner of the Celtics into the ground that he was, or, of course, at the college level, doing some eh, frowned upon things. Patino was asked about his comments yesterday, and you know what? Bless this man's heart. He stayed true to himself, which is all you could do in this little thing that we like to call life. I don't think they move well laterally. I don't think they're going to pick it up in the next week. Um, I think they're slow laterally. I mean, Sean Conway gives you everything he can. He's slow laterally. About five guys are slow laterally. Even, even the Celtics, when we lost... I've enjoyed every minute being a Boston Celtic coach. Didn't like the fact that we lost in that following year, but this has been the most no unenjoyable else. experience I've had since I've been coaching. you have any second thoughts of taking this job? No, not at all. It's not St. John's. It's my team. I think they're very respectful. They hear, but they don't listen. It's taken me a month to get them to throw bounce passes. Actually, two months to throw bounce passes. Just thinking of getting ready for Georgetown because Georgetown could definitely beat us. I can't stand him. I, I truly can't. But I'll give him credit. He doubled down. He didn't walk anything back. He just did what a despot does at the college basketball program, even though being the head coach at St. John's is equivalent to being the dictator of Luxembourg, which is like this little tiny nothing country that I think is on the border of France and Germany. Yeah. I don't know. But... Leave it to Rick to bring up his time with the Celtics. Kiss my ass, Rick. You ruined the Celtics. My God, what a disaster he was in Boston. He's, say, he's saying that this is worse than that. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that's possible, Rick. <laughs> that's not possible. That was one of the worst things that anyone has ever seen. They're 6-9 and nine in the Big East. I don't think that is Georgetown true. might beat them, which is a funny <laughs> shot to throw in at the end. Right. <laughs> it's like more of an insult to Georgetown than to you. But but I, I respect the college basketball coaches, Sean, just not caring. Because that gives you something to talk about and listen to before the tournament. Penny Hardaway is the head coach of Memphis. I guess they suck, too. Here's what he had to say about yet another loss for the Memphis Tigers. Losing like this, this is terrible, man. This is not... I don't know what I don't know what's going on, but I'm not competing. Is that? I mean, there was you know the, the broadcast team on TV that brought that up, questioning effort and everything. So you're saying it's fair? Yeah, it's fair. Y'all saw the same game we saw. Right? I just don't understand why it's not competing. Every game we play is for our, for our life to make it to the NCAA tournament. That's how that's how I view that's how I view coming in every game. He also sounds like he's having a horrible time. All the college coaches are miserable. You got Tom Izzo every year. There's at least three Tom Izzo stories. Like, How can I reach these kids? And you will see the exact same thing from most of the hard coaches out there. Kelvin Sampson, for, for all his credit, Sampson's bitching about the team is very minimal. But the coaches across college basketball shot, it it's, it's, feels like it's more there than anywhere else where they are just constantly complaining about their job situation, their players, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And, and Kelvin Sampson, when he, like, will – because he will call out players from time to time, but maybe it's just the benefit of he's not under 500 in conference or, like, Memphis is 7-6 and six in conference uh, in conference play in the American, where it's like, well, he's actually the number two team in the country. of won 20 straight home games. So it feels more constructive, but that might just be, like, results-based. Where yeah. it, it feels more constructive because they actually win, unlike all these other guys who are complaining about their team. But, yeah, it, it, is, it is a weird thing where Sampson seems like he's the hardest on his players, but at least publicly. You don't hear it. You don't hear it as much. Right. 
You, you still hear it from time to time, but not as not as much. It, it's mostly they just lose so little. He has he doesn't have a lot of time to do it. If you go to practice, I'm told that you really see Kelvin Sampson for who he is, but in front of the microphone, not quite as fun. You know what else was fun last night? So again, we're focusing mostly on the Cougars and the iron sharpening the iron, you know, because they're looking very, very good as we get closer and closer to the end of the regular season. But there was a battle in a college basketball game between Texas A&M Commerce, classic Aggies, and Incarnate Word. This is how the brawl sounded like for two extremely uncomfortable play-by-play folks. With, oh no, this is not good. Not good. This is really not good. We've got punches being thrown. This is really bad. Oh my goodness. Ooh, full team fight. Coaches in the middle of it. Wouldn't be surprised. Someone got a nick on the face there. Nick on the face. This is not what you want to see after that close of it a has game. been a great game we've got it feels the worst game though this would be fun. <laughs> everything going on right now oh yeah we still have guys running after people that's the best part about this if you watch the oh video someone goodness. in the crowd was hurt and hit they were all just moving as like a giant group yeah. slash crowd oh, to every corner of the like of the court a and young girl it's like 50 people on this tiny. Well, we got court. a manager that right. has blood on his face. More people on the court got than in the guys stands. Guys that need to get to the locker room. Everyone's still rallying here. Rallying? What does that mean? Alex I Anderson. Don't I don't, no, 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 no. Ooh. We we need to get this. We need to get this settled. Do we? We it finally like have gotten to. some people to the locker room. So. Not enough energy in this call. I gotta say, not enough energy. <laughs> I I wonder what they're brought because obviously the, it was what Texas A&M Commerce versus uh, Incarnate Word. Mm -hmm. So this is on ESPN three only, and it's basically two like volunteers as the uh, yeah as the play by play and color commentary. I wonder where they're set up in the in in this tiny stadium. Are they like? Six feet away from all of these guys throwing punches. I think if they were six feet away, they might have been whispering it because they don't want to all of a sudden get don't just look at us. pulled look in at us. to the hurricane, to the tornado. <laughs> that's actually that's actually what it was like. It was like in the cartoons when there's like a dust up and there's like like clouds and all you see are arms and legs and like people's teeth flying out of it. Like that that's what it looked like on video. One of the funny things, Sean, just about play-by-play -play people in general is, for the most part, how most of them can't adapt to wacky stuff. And, of course, you have to go through it once or a couple yeah. of times, but I'll say this about play-by-play -play only, folks. I will say this about uh, TV anchors and reporters. Improvisation not their strong suit not their strong suit and there's nothing wrong with that but this could have made their careers and they yeah. failed if they like, failed oh my god right i mean to say like this isn't good how many times can you tell me this isn't good yeah. how many times over the course of this fight can you tell me oh i wish this wasn't happening how about let's get some play-by-play -play of the punches because we can't really see. It's just a, it's just a big old mosh pit, like a Travis Scott concert, okay? Let, let's see what's actually happening in the brawl. Who was throwing the punches? Who wasn't throwing the punches? Who was getting hit in the face? Mm -hmm. don't, don't bring me down talking about the small child that apparently got into the fight, which I'm not even sure happened. But, hey, let's focus on the fight and make yourself a career here, guys. You could have... You could have been calling games that aren't Texas A&M Commerce, which, no offense, is apparently a real school, or uh, Incarnate Word, which I'm sure there are six of. There must be six Incarnate of, Words. A lot of Incarnate Words. Yeah. There, there's got to be tons of them. Uh, full sentences of Incarnate. Right, exactly. So many words. So, so, so more fun in college basketball? This is something I'm going to leave up for you guys. You know how there's sometimes internet debates over, hey, what color is this dress? Or, hey, 
did they say Yanny or Laurel? Which I do not understand how your ears can hear two different things there. But okay, I guess people can. Tell me what you heard during this play-by-play of an LSU women's basketball game. As a coach, I say, bitch, stay in this ball game. Stay excited. Stay enthusiastic. Pull your team through. I don't care if the officials are telling you to sit down. So she's got a bit of a draw. Did she say bitch or did she say bench? 713-780-3776 to call into Texton. Did she say bitch or did she say bench? Bitch. I... I don't know. I I saw people afterwards, Sean Southern, explaining that yes, she was saying bench, but I kind of want to know if it was possible that she said bitch, because bitch would have fit there. Bitch, and it would be kind of funny to see a coach in 2024 <laughs> giving zero f's and telling a team of women that they're bitches, <laughs> and just like because also she's saying bitch, sit down. Right. That's what she's saying. Right. Because it's like, bench, get in this game, or bitch, get in this game. So you guys determine that. It's the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. The last show ever, at least as currently constructed. I'm not going anywhere. Up next, also, we got the 10 minute drill. Oh, God. It's just so good to see other teams dealing with quarterback issues. Paul Galancho, stick around.
For the most part, it be- I believe that most people think that she said bench. Banch. Bitch. Banch. Bitch. I don't, but I don't know. So we're going to leave that for you to determine all show long. Sean, can we hear it one more time? Bitch. Did she say bench or bitch? This is just bitch. a random broadcaster whose name we don't know. We don't want to We don't want to get him fired. Yeah, because if she did say the wrong one, oh, hey. she might be out. Yeah. She might be out. Or she might be coaching a college basketball team really soon. Yeah. I, I, I got to say, it does, does seem like the women's college basketball players listen a lot more than the men's basketball players. Also, you could tell me that this is a direct quote from LSU basketball coach, women's basketball coach, Kim Mulkey. Like, I, I guarantee you she's called her players the B word before. Well, what word put, hasn't she called her players? I'd, I'd put it on my life that, that Karen. she's done that. She just, she just looks like a Karen. So this might be A, a good-looking di- Karen, but a Karen nonetheless. <laughs> this might be a direct, uh, a, a direct quote. Shout out to Kim Mulkey's fashion. As a metrosexual, yeah. I really appreciate it. All right, guys. Quarterbacks. It sucks when you don't have them obvious statement but i love looking at other quarterback situations across the national football league of course i don't look at the patriots one because i don't want to cry but the other quarterback situations and the issues that are currently happening on certain uh, with certain franchises it brings a brings a little twinkle to my eye the minnesota vikings have a tough decision to make about kirk cousins They are saying they are not willing to give him a fully guaranteed contract this time around. Credit to Kirk Cousins, who got all of these fully guaranteed contracts and honestly played well enough to merit getting those 100% guaranteed contracts. He has never been bad. You always feel like you can do a little bit better. He, for me, is like if I'm on a dating app, and I match with someone, and she's great, and uh, awesome personality, smart, but like maybe, maybe the donk ain't popping, or like maybe like not like the the most athletic person. Like so, I'm always thinking I can do a little bit better. When in reality, I probably can't. That's how quarterback situations are, and that's how a uh, little game that we like to call dating apps are. Yeah, I think I think Kirk Cousins is like the worst quarterback you can be and still get 100% guaranteed uh, deals. Where he's like, he's he's good enough, but he also, you know, fourth down for the season, will throw five yards short of the sticks. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he will also do that. Like, the, there's a reason that he's not one of the truly greats, but he is certainly good enough. Also, I get why the Vikings aren't going to give a 35-year-old coming off an Achilles a fully guaranteed contract for more than one year. I get it, too. (laughs) But it's crazy that against all, I guess, advice that was thrown by we pundits his way, like, no, you got to take the biggest contract you can get. You got to protect yourself. Cousins just kept on taking these short-term guaranteed deals, and this is the year that he finally got hurt. That dude is laughing yeah. all the way to the bank on that front, and props to him because he's one of those quarterbacks where, especially with the way that the rules are, which, yes, are geared to protect quarterbacks like Tom Brady, when you're a pocket passer like that, you're not really putting yourself in harm's way all that much, and assuming you are decent at turtling, you should be able to protect yourself and continue to get these fully guaranteed contracts, which leads to the next question. Would you rather have on a fully guaranteed contract for next year, Kirk Cousins or Deshaun Watson? Oh, Kirk Cousins. A thousand, I would do. A thousand percent. I would do. I, I would rather have Kirk Cousins on Deshaun Watson's contract than Deshaun Watson. Like, not just for next year. Just sign me up for I, five years. I think I would, too. Now, I don't feel a little gross about the fact that he's the starting quarterback given all the stuff that took place here. But the other dynamic is, and this is a report from Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com, Deshaun Watson is set to begin throwing again next month could do so towards the beginning of the month in just a few weeks after a fractured right shoulder socket during the Browns' Week 10 victory over Baltimore. He has played in just 12 games for the Browns the last two years. They were 5-1 and one in the games that he started. One was effectively won by P.J. Walker. 
there was one game where he finished the game very strong, and I think he completed all of his passes in a row. And then it was announced that he's done for the year. I am curious if he's ever going to be good again. I don't think we know the answer to that. I think David Mulligetta deserves a lot of credit for somehow finding a way to get a guy this controversial. All of that guaranteed money. Maybe you're not the biggest David Mulligetta fan, but there is no denying that that guy pulled off the heist of the century to this point because Watson has played in 12 games due to suspension and injury for Cleveland. And the Browns made the playoffs without Watson, which lends itself to the belief that, all right, maybe the guy ain't good. Yeah. It, I mean, if the whole reason he w wasn't good last year and wasn't good this year until the very end, like literally the last half that he played, is that, well, you know, he, he hasn't played in any games since 2020. How would, like, the offseason make it any better? Yeah. Yeah. I like it, it, if if that's the belief is that he has to play in games to get better, then he won't be good until the next time he can play some games and get into a rhythm. So you're already it, it, it's just a crazy, crazy situation. Crazy that he just like stopped being good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he he was people people were like him or Mahomes. <laughs> we were saying this about him when he was the quarterback of a four win team. They, they were wrong, we, but they said that about they him. Did. <laughs> they did. They like he was in that conversation. He the, was in like whatever top five list you wanted to put together. He was in there. Thing I got crushed for when I was over at the flagship for being early with saying like Watson is not Patrick Mahomes. He's just not. And people got so pissed at me. You don't know that. Y yeah, I do. I have eyes. I have the sight, especially because that first Mahomes year, Mahomes threw for like five thousand yards was so and so good, fifty touchdowns. And, and it's, it was nothing against Watson. People took it as an insult against Watson, and it's really funny. Every now and then, I go back to that tweet that I put out there and see some of the really pissed off people responding to me. You should and just I, retweet them. I, I, at some point, I might. I <laughs> just, might just randomly. You know what? Like while while I'm in Mexico, like drinking a margarita, I, I might and smoking a cigar. I'm gonna go and just retweet random responses to that tweet. Speak, speaking of that tweet, I remember when. I think it was after his rookie year. It was uh, someone was like he had he's thrown for fifty eight percent of Troy uh, Troy Aikman's career yards mm -hmm. in like thirty percent of the game, and that's why Mahomes uh, or excuse me, that's why Aikman said get back to me when he's got three yeah. rings. And how everyone retweeted that after the Super Bowl when he got to three rings. Oh in, boy, <laughs> in six years, and that's just after the three. Honestly, Troy should delete it. He should delete it. I, I, I respect him not deleting I it. I do too, but he but should delete it. He should delete it. He should it. delete but that, it. That's a low stakes version of what you're doing. It's, it's just retweeting all all the H Town uh, critics that are like, hey, yeah. No. Watson is better. Yeah, may as well. Just flood, flood the timeline with goofy stuff, you know? Uh, more terrible quarterback situations. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are expected to use the franchise tag on safety Antoine Winfield and not. Baker Mayfield. Well, <laughs> can't wait for him to sign with the New England Patriots. I cannot wait. Super Bowl. Baker Mayfield got to the divisional round of the playoffs. He did. You know? Was it his fault that they lost in the divisional round of the playoffs? I can't say. I can't. They got close, right? Yeah. Until he threw two interceptions. Hey, but. Who's to say who's. who's you who's know what? Maybe this offseason, if he works with a few more zins in his mouth than yeah. this time around. Adds a couple chips to the shoulder. Hell yeah. More chips on the shoulder. By the way, I saw a random video that went viral of a man who is just throwing zin pack pouches in an anthill. And uh, let's just say the ants aren't doing so hot. They've become nicotine addicts. It's pretty funny. All right. One last quarterback situation to discuss, and hopefully Joe George has not uh, offed himself seeing this one, but the Bears are saying, quote, we will have a quarterback plan in place by next week. Justin Fields, meanwhile, has unfollowed them, and the Bears also want historic compensation for the number one overall pick. Well, you did that last year, and you got pretty good compensation for it. I think if I'm the Bears, I am just going to consider myself lucky for being in this situation again. I am imagining that the reason that they are saying they will, they will have a quarterback plan in place by next week has as much to do with 
Caleb Williams potentially not wanting to be a Chicago Bear as it does with something along the lines of, like, oh, well, hey, uh, we're actually thinking about bringing Justin Fields back. Here's the thing with Fields, and it's one of the trickier dynamics, I think, with some of the quarterbacks out there. People really want to like Justin Fields. And I suppose I'm going to sound a little bit like Rush Limbaugh when he got canceled for what he said on NFL Countdown about Donovan McNabb and saying that he won't, like a lot of people want a black quarterback to be successful. I will say that publicly it felt like there were a lot of people who were maybe rooting for Justin Fields more than correctly guessing that he was going to be good this past season. And I don't know what was attached to it, but I do feel that was a strange dynamic with Fields. He's fun to watch. There's no denying it. But this is a guy that relies far more on his athleticism. I I feel like there is not much of a discrepancy between he and Daniel Jones. And take that as a shot against Daniel Jones or take that as a compliment to Justin Fields or vice versa. I don't know. I don't care. I think they're very similar players. I think both fan bases or both people who like both those quarterbacks would both take that as an insult. They both would. <laughs> they both would be like, like that's so insulting. But they're two the, quarterbacks the quarterback who are like. very athletic and their athleticism yeah. actually gives them a chance to stay in this league. But do you really want to have them on a 17 Sunday a year basis? No, and, not really. You could do better. What's what's nuts about Justin Fields is that he was good throwing the ball at Ohio State and he was a better quarterback back at Ohio State. Than CJ Stroud was. That is pretty crazy. <laughs> and now look at wh- where they are in their careers. Just it it, it is just absolutely nuts. CJ Stroud is him. Yeah. I. By the way, I think the, the Bears having a plan by next week. Can they? Would it shock you if they just announced that Justin Fields been traded next week? No, not at all. Like that. That feels like that's what the plan is. Is to trade Justin. Steelers Fields. should. Steelers should make the move. He would be fun on the Steelers. Right? Yeah, it, I mean, anyone that's like not in the top ten who needs a quarterback, which is a lot of teams, it is. Uh, they should at least you know see what it takes. Got to roll the dice. Yeah, because he is a he is a worthwhile dice roll. I do feel like if you're he's in a still spot young. exactly, and if you're in a spot where you can't draft a quarterback this year, is it really going to hurt you that much to trade a second or a third round pick for Fields? He's not worth a first round pick. No. Anyone thinking he's worth a first round pick is crazy. If, if he, if the Bears were offered a first-round pick, they would have already traded They would have traded him already. You're right. Paul Galancho, that's Sean Mapes behind the glass. It's the last Just Us show. And then I'm going off to Mexico. Will I return? Will I be decapitated by the cartel? That would be kind of funny if it happened. I, I know I'm putting that out there. Okay, I'm glad you said it. Listen, if it happens, if it happens, you can play this audio. Uh, I, I think it would be really funny. It's like, oh, classic Paul. Make sure to make sure to retweet those Watson takes uh, before, <laughs> before before you get on the plane. Before that happens, I I don't yeah I I'll, I'll you know what tips for Mexico okay uh, as we continue the uh, last edition of the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. Don't worry, I'm not leaving the station. Coming up next, a key Houston Texan is telling them exactly what they need to do in free agency. What am I talking about? I don't know. I guess you're going to have to stick around and find out. It's the Paul Gallant Show. Don't go anywhere.
back to the Paul Gallant Show, coming to you live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Most interactive sports talk show in Houston. If you have tips for Mexico, for Cabo, where I am off to tomorrow morning, please let me know. Staying at an all-inclusive resort. I have never done that before. Also, I don't speak a lick of Spanish. And one of my friends actually texted me this today. And I'm not going to lie. It's not. It's, it's not something that I liked. Because I, I joked saying, I'm never coming back to this friend. He says, yeah, because the mafia will chop your head off. I said, yeah, I know. There's a <laughs> it's dark, man. It's dark. I like how <laughs> that's like something you uh, that they people think can happen to you, like to you specifically, Paul Gallant. Like, oh, who's, well, do who's, I blend in in Mexico? Would I blend in? No. Why wouldn't I blend in? Well, you'd been blend into the all inclusive resort, probably. <laughs> I don't even um, know about that. I'm so white. I I I'm like a just a shining beacon yeah. of like, hey, rob me, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. With yeah. my elaborate Hawaiian shirts and, and the the uh. You know, they can smell the private school on you. Oh, one hundred percent. And so they're like, "Oh, look at this some cake money, eater. Get some money for this guy. Ooh, little, little do they know. Me. Yeah, yeah. It's Sorry like to make jokes a condo about that. And a cat. But I'm literally, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, I got equity. <laughs> yeah, I got equity. But, I don't know. Maybe you step on the wrong guy's shoes <laughs> at a bar, and then. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm gonna have to not be a asshole when I step off uh, down on uh, Skid Row or whatever it is, Squid Row. I don't know what it's called. There's there's like a there's some bars in Cabo. I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. You know. Paul Galacho, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. We got uh, my guy, Q-Dog, on the line with some advice about going to Mexico. What's up, Q-Dog? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, first and foremost, uh, Cabo is a pretty, pretty nice area. You don't need to worry about speaking Spanish because uh, a lot of people there speak English. Oh, uh, that's nice. Also, the beaches the beaches there at Cabo, at, in Cabo are okay. There are certain places where you can't swim. Right. They have signs everywhere. And uh, if you get a chance and you want to do a little excursion, there's a place called La Paz about two hours away. I highly recommend it if you get a chance to head out there. Uh, all right, Q-Dog. I appreciate that advice. I'm not going to lie. Anything that's two hours away from the resort sounds like it's just a ploy to get me kidnapped. So, I, listen, Q-Dog, we appreciate the advice, but I, if I'm going two hours away, uh-uh. Hello, uh-uh. hello, senor. I'm looking for La Paz. Q Dog sounds like he wants some. Like he's like, oh, I don't know if I want Paul Galant to be a part of me. SPN 97.5 and 925 going forward. Ulterior motives. He's uh, there's an ulterior motives here. Like, oh, Paul just disappeared into the jungle and never came back. It'll be like that one guy in the Sandlot. I love the end of the Sandlot. How they talk about like, hey, here's what everybody's doing. And then one of the guys, he just got lost in the '60s. It's like, oh, so he did drugs, huh? That's a cute way to say that in a kids' TV show. It's not quite. At the end of uh, Stand By Me. Have you heard the end of Stand By Me? We might have to play the clip at the very end of Stand By Me where he does like a little post epilogue. And then all of a sudden he says like, that was the best. That was the best summer of my life with my friend. Two days ago, he got stabbed in the neck and died. Not kidding. This is the most abrupt end to a movie ever. Stand By Me. Thanks, Stephen King. Paul Galancho, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right. We're running a little bit behind because your boy has a little more ADD than normal. Is Paul Gallant already in Mexico mode, a la Doc Rivers calling out his players on the Milwaukee Bucks last week? Am I uh, effing softest show at the station? For Like Ime Udoka said about his Rockets? I don't know. But it is time to focus on the Houston Texans because there's some decisions that they're going to have to make very, very soon. Let's continue. Texans free agency watch. Swarm! Okay. Titus Howard is supposed to be the Texans' right tackle. And yet, The man consistently finds himself playing guard, despite that big extension he signed last year. An unfortunate season for him last year. Began the season injured. 
ended the season injured. He has updated his Twitter bio. All caps. Right tackle only for the Houston Texans. He is reminding the Houston Texans what they need to do in free agency. Now, I'm not one of those people who's going to go to pro football focus and say, these interior offensive linemen are good. These aren't. I don't want to draw the ire of George Fant, who got annoyed with an article like that. Pro football focus, I do not believe to be a very effective way to measure trench play. I just don't. I think Lance Zerline knows what he's talking about when it comes to studying offensive linemen. I think very few other people actually know what they're talking about. Brian Baldinger might, but it's a very nuanced thing, I think, to study and know what a player is supposed to do and to know how a player should be better. So I'm not going to BS you and say that I know who's good and who's bad as far as free agent offensive linemen go. But if the Houston Texans go after anybody in free agency, more importantly than a defensive tackle, more importantly than a wide receiver, a safety, I do think interior offensive line help a veteran is maybe the most important thing that they need to do. They were hit by an unbelievable amount of bad luck when it comes to injuries on the offensive line last year. The odds are that won't happen again, but you just need depth on the interior because with Scott Questenberry going down, with um, the uncertainty around Kenyon Green and everybody else who they threw into the mix in the interior, you can do better. So what I'm looking for reasonably priced veterans who have played in a Shanahan style offense. And the good news about that, because back in the day, it was actually tricky to find guys who could do the zone blocking that Mike Shanahan's offense wanted. Kyle Shanahan's dad. I'm talking about Kyle Shanahan now. It's God, I feel old saying that. It was very difficult to find guys who could fit that scheme for Gary Kubiak in a post Mike Shanahan world. It is a lot easier to find guys who have played in a system familiar with that uh, these days. So there should be options, which means that they maybe won't have to spend that much money. But I'm not going to tell you whether or not the signing's good or bad. I'm just going to say I hope that they bring in somebody at that position that has played in the Shanahan system before. And there you go. We'll continue our free agency watch at 1130. There's something that the Houston Texans are reportedly considering that I don't think is the best. But up next, we go to West Palm Beach and continue our countdown to the Astros regular season opener. New news when it comes to a Kyle Tucker extension. And we got to see the newest Houston Astro in action. Let's overreact to a couple of videos sent out by beat reporters. Paul Galancho, stick around.
Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's Paul Gallant. Join the conversation by dialing or texting 713-780-3776. One hour left in the Paul Gallant most interactive sports talk show in Houston era. That's it. Once this hour's done. It's giving solo era. Yeah. Pour one out. Talk like someone on TikTok. It's, it is giving. That's for sure. It's giving a lot. But I'm not going anywhere. Just Things are changing up a little bit. I am going to Mexico. So assuming, again, a lot of, a lot of potential changes are entirely dependent on whether or not I die in, in Mexico the next couple of days. And I got to say. We might need to put together something. MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975. What's likely to happen to Paul in Mexico? Kidnapped by the cartel? Becomes friends with El Chapo and builds a tunnel? Oh, wait, he's in the United States now. I think yeah, I think his, think isn't his wife. Extradited. His wife's running stuff, if I. Marry his wife. If and, I'm late, up to date on El Chapo news. What if, what if I come back and, and I'm as, running things? What you're if not, I come back? <laughs> what, you're, what? Not the, you're not the stepdad to El Chapo's yeah. children. You're the dad who stepped up. Listen, we would be we would be a fearsome radio station in this city if I came back a, a mob boss. We would be fearsome. Now I would do mustache. just like every every dumb uh, you know Italian mob movie where like everyone who ends up getting got does something just completely idiotic that like involves like having an IQ of like in the threes. Uh, I, there's a very good chance that like that that would be what does me in like just something really dumb. But uh, will I get kidnapped by the mob? Will I join the the mob? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Bring uh, bring a paramilitary back? I don't know. It seems like it's pretty easy to do that these days at the border. But hey, that's that's not me. If I'm doing uh, mob boss uh, draft comparisons for you, it's gonna be hard to overlook the Santino uh, Corleone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Santino Corleone. Yeah, because I say something, because I like say something really dumb. Yeah, and you fly off the handle, and you're like, you know what? Let's sh- let's show them what we mean. And yeah, then you go to a toll booth and. Bah, 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 bah. I'll do what I did before the show this morning. And Sean was like, "Hey, did you send that audio?" And I was like, "I forgot." And I just threw my phone at the wall. The two interns are looking at me like, "Oh Jesus, we work with <laughs> we work with a disturbed person." That that was my first thought. I was like, "I wonder what these interns are thinking." You know what? They gotta know. This but is this is. That was like a kids. You're you're in the real world now, and you're working with a completely unhinged person. Yeah, and that was like he's not on medication. A seven out of ten, maybe an eight out. Oh, of Oh, that 10. wasn't a seven. That was a four. Come on, I've done. I've done what? Yeah, because you didn't like it. Didn't lead to like a full. No, I didn't go down. on a rant. Didn't go yeah. on a rant. Been on been uh, on a lot of rants recently, but yeah. did, did not. Maybe yeah. Did maybe not like go on a four, rant. Yeah, four or five. Yeah, because then I like I actually like very calmly yourself. transitioned into yeah. saying like I don't have the audio, Sean. You didn't do that. It was so calm. <laughs> well, that's just your recollection of it. And no, you calmly but very sternly said that something about uh, OneDrive you can't access from your phone. My computer. That's right. Yeah, I can't. This piece of crap right here in front of me. Don't oh. throw that, please. Honestly, I should. At this, least, uh, here's throw what's it crazy. In another fifty minutes, please. This, surf- this Surface Pro would survive me throwing it at a wall somehow, some way. But like, that's a why good, you still have it? A good computer. I know. I've. Dro- I actually have dropped it walking into the studio multiple times. Uh, anyway, guys, it is the Paul Galan show, and the Houston Astros—they're not in Mexico. Mm-mm. They're getting ready for a season that's going to lead to a World Series title, number three, and then. A trip to Mexico. That's eight months away for them. It's time to continue our countdown, though, to the start of the Astros' regular season. Give me that bone! All right, 37 days away. Still feels too long. Shane Reynolds was a Houston Astro from 1993 to 2002. When he first broke into the majors, he wore number 38. 
He was 103-86 and 86 with a 3.95 ERA and 1,309 strikeouts in 274 games with the Astros. That's a lot of strikeouts. Good for Shane Reynolds. Kyle Tucker is one of the two contracts that the Houston Astros are going to have to figure out in the near future. Alex Bregman at the end of the year, but Fran Valdez and Kyle Tucker are the two contracts that they still have some time to work with. Tucker was asked yesterday about the latest with his contract. Here he is with video courtesy of Brian McTaggart of MLB.com. Maybe a little talk, but not not like um you know like a hard offer or anything like that but i mean like i've always said just you know we're always open to have those conversations whether it happens now or a little later um whatever it may be but i mean we're i mean i'm always around here um so you know i'm always open to having those conversations and just talk it through yeah i mean obviously i'd rather not prolong it forever but um you know it kind of just depends uh just having those conversations, work it out, and you know, see what's best for me and the team and every, everything. Um, so you just got to kind of take everything into account and uh, just kind of see where it goes. But you know, I, I enjoy my time here. It's been great. I'm looking forward to the season, um, looking forward to going on a World Series run. So that's, that's what we're here to do. I mean, my focus is here with this team. So um, I'm trying to win a World Series with the Astros, uh, another one, and you know, hopefully another one. Um, so hell yeah. You know, my focus is is on this team and this group of guys in this clubhouse and this team and this organization, not really any other team at the time. Born winner. You know, ask him about the contract. I got nothing new for you. I'm focused on winning another World Series here. And then another World Series after that. What's his favorite World Series? The next one. The one after the next one. That's even more hardo than Tom Brady. So that was cool to hear from Kyle Tucker. As far as other updates from spring spring training in West Palm Beach, um, Josh Hader got his first work of the year. Bullpen session, 30 pitches against Alex Bregman, Jeremy Pena, and John Singleton. We also noticed that Jeremy Pena got a new stand yesterday. Jeremy Pena looking different at the plate. Here's what he had to say about his new stance. Quote, I feel like I'm a little more consistent at putting the barrel on the ball. And when I do put the barrel on the balls, I have true spin. It's not slicing or topping. And that's what you want as a hitter. You want true spin. That sounds like something that you could also hear somebody say in the Fast and Furious movie franchise. I was just thinking that. I was like, ask any hitter, any real hitter. (laughs) doesn't matter if you... Slice or your topping, what you want is true spin. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, uh, what do you have to say about your playoffs in 2022? Forget about it, cuh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw that and I was like, that sounds right, but I don't know. I have no idea what he's talking about there. You want more spin Forget on the ball? Yeah. You put, you're putting spin on the ball when you hit it with the bat? Yeah. All Top right. Spin. Interesting. Interesting. I guess, yeah, if you hit, like, a ping-pong ball, the ping-pong paddle, you could, you could put a little spin on it. Yeah, and it comes at you with spin. Tennis racket, you can do that, yeah. too. Yeah, it's weird. For whatever reason, I think it's a lot easier to do that with a paddle than it is with a bat. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a bigger surface, so it's a little bit easier. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, I... I we are not experts when it comes to physics here, but no. spin. No. That's no, what no, no. Jeremy Pena. True spin. He likes spinners today when he hits them. No, 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 no. I mean, just... I didn't say anything about topping either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Speaking of topping, Joe Espada says the top players for what? You said top. I don't even know what that means, Sean. I'm, a, just, a, I'm just a naive boy. Per Joe Spada, the primary players will all play from the get-go in spring training. So, no more of this rest day BS. You know what? What if the Astros actually have all their starters play like 150 games? Are they going to be gassed by the postseason? And then are we going to start bitching about Joe Spada like we were bitching about Dusty Baker because he gives so many guys so many off days? That does sound like the first sign of, Hey, everyone's going to play a lot and then wait until someone gets injured and 
the effing armchair managers that are in this town that think they know way more about baseball than they actually do. I at least admit that I don't know that much about it. I can't wait for Joe Espada to get second guess. And listen, then when that happens, I will stand with Joe Espada. I will stand with Joe Espada. I will stand with the decision-making of the Astros of too many people start going, what's going on here? They're playing in too many games. Because I, as I said yesterday, talking about the all-star game and how terrible it was. I think that we've gotten to a really bad place in sports when it comes to the idea of playing in every single game. It, it, it is in 2024, outside of football, and even in football, it's starting to not become a thing that you necessarily want to happen every single week. If your team sucks, you want your team to tank and not play its best players. If your team's good, you're hoping that they rest their players for the last couple of weeks of the regular season. Or if they're up big at the end of the game. That too, right, Sean? There's a lot of people out there that are like, oh, you got to arrest them because they might get hurt. Yeah, they also might not get hurt. They, they might just play the game that they're supposed to, where injuries don't happen all that often, you know? Again, I, but you did knock it, you know, you kind of knocked the the head of the nail when you said it's like they might be tired for the, Good. for the postseason for a team like the Astros. It's like all that matters. It's like how, how far you go in the playoffs. That is all that matters. So th there is a little bit of like, I, I I understand that there needs to be rest days. The problem with the Dusty Baker ones is that they would come after they would hit like two home runs in a game. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's that that part. Or or fair criticism. Or it would be like four, like you're the four best hitters all the same day. And you're like, okay, so today's a loss. Like, <laughs> thanks. We have Greg Kessinger hitting second. It did seem <laughs> like at times they were spinning a wheel. Yes. And, and a very strange wheel with Martin Maldonado versus Yanni Diaz. I can't. I just can't wait until the first controversy, whatever it is that Joe Espada has to deal with, like whatever game in April where he seemingly mismanages the bullpen or brings in a pinch hitter or something. Mm -hmm. I just well, welcome to the big leagues, Joe Espada. <laughs> the first time Astros Twitter is having a meltdown, the first twenty five games of the season. <laughs> Sean, do we have time for this caller? Uh, yeah, we can do it quick. Billy has an opinion on Nike jerseys. They are not good. The new baseball uniforms, for those who don't know, a collaboration with Fanatics. Billy, what you got? Yeah, I heard the, the customers don't like them. The players don't like them either. Fanatics have single-handedly ruined sports merchandise, and the Nike jerseys oh. are garbage. I'd rather bring back the majestic ones. Um, I, hang up a list I, I appreciate that thought, Billy. Yeah, they, they've done a horrible job with them. I've taken a look at them. They're they're essentially just printing and pressing numbers on jerseys yeah. these days. There's no stitching. It is amateur hour Mickey Mouse stuff. And I would encourage you, if you have the ability to do so, if you're looking for a new jersey, I would be looking at stores nearby to see if I can find clearance deals on specific jerseys, because I'm sure Nike is instructing a lot of these teams to get rid of as much merchandise as they possibly can. So you might end up seeing it out of like Academy Sports and stuff. But the Astros team store this year, I am very curious as to the quality of the stuff that's in there. It's going to be expensive. And this stuff that they're putting out there, it, 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 it isn't just that the quality is poor. It doesn't look good either. Yeah. And what's crazy is that like last year was fine. <laughs> Last year was fine. Then they where they went wrong, where uh, fanatics and Nike went wrong, is that they gave the crappy stuff to the players. Yes. If you just gave the players all the good stuff and us all the crappy stuff, no one would notice. Or we would notice, but no one would stop buying jerseys because of it. Uh, <laughs> like, Lone Ranger comments that the Today Show started talking about how bad the jerseys yeah. are. I mean, that's pretty bad. Again, because they pissed off the players with it. They made the players wear this garbage. Baseball's run so horribly. It really is. Like, they're, they're, It's a good thing the Astros are good. I mean, if they weren't good, we this show would not talk about them. It would not talk about baseball either. That sport is just, it's just not what it used to be. And I got to say with fanatics, like the monopoly that they have over sports memorabilia 
is depressing because there's some really good companies out there. Um, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt from Homage right now. It's so soft. It's so comfortable. Look look how sick this is. This is a University of Houston Cougars shirt. I know Home Field Apparel has some good ones as well. But when it comes to getting stuff that's officially licensed professional sport things, it's really difficult to get good-looking shirts. And I'm a T-shirt snob. Like, you know, I if I'm wearing a sports T-shirt in some way, shape, or form, I think it is good. Fanatics has just half-assed it. The quality has gone down, and now the price, thanks to inflation, is going up. So it's making it even worse. Anyway, Paul Galancho, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. We're going to continue taking a look at Astros spring training because, guys, they're finally doing what I was pushing for all year. At least one player is. I can't believe it took them this long. What am I talking about? You'll find out next. It's the Paul Galancho. Stick around. Back to the Veritex Community Bank Studios and your favorite 10 to noon sports talk host, Paul Gallant. Give him hell, Paulie. It's really funny seeing the comments section on our YouTube channel, our Twitch. Some people are suggesting places that you can buy knockoff jerseys. Who would have thought that buying a jersey from China is actually the better option than buying the official ones that are made by baseball, Nike, and fanatics because now those are higher quality and they're like actual good quality yeah like they're not just higher quality than the crap that no. is getting put out there you are rolling you're rolling dice sometimes but 
when it hits, like you get actually like you, you, like really well made jersey. You do have to, and, and you should do this anyway. For those who don't know, you, you should if you have jerseys or you have sports memorabilia you like, you should put it on. You should put it inside out, put it on cold wash, and do delicate on your, whatever yes. your washer yes. cycle is, and then hang dry. Yes. Hang dry everything. It is it is the key to longevity with stuff like that. But w- with with China, you could buy. I bought like a Larry Bird uh, Dream Team jersey from China for like forty bucks, and, and it lasted a while. But it does it does die quickly. And yeah. yet, these Fanatics jerseys are so bad that you're like, you know what? This might not last as long as a thing that I would buy from China with no possibility of returning it. It's also the difference between spinning. 40 bucks on something and like 190 bucks on something. So if the if you don't have a long shelf life, at least buy the $40 one that doesn't have a long shelf life. Is is the biggest issue in our country, Sean, that baseball jerseys are better made by communists? Is this like the biggest problem facing our country? And I know like the border and like wars, but like mm. the commies are building yeah. And I say building with a purpose. They're building better baseball jerseys than us. I will say, though, at least, you know, let's dial it back with the people getting mad about the big uh, patches on this on these lo- on these jerseys. I-, I like the Oxy logo. Yeah. It's not big enough. I think they should actually make the Oxy logo on the front of uh, the Astros jersey and then the Astros writing or, or Houston writing. Put it on the sleeve. Mm-hmm. You know? Like let's soccer. Go- let, yeah, let's go full Premier League, yeah. right? I'm I'm just glad that OxyContin's finally getting its uh, its shine <laughs> in the world. Of- I used to think that that's what Oxy was for the longest time. And I had a couple not. of friends that worked there, and and I, I've even spoken with them before, and I just never asked any further because I'm an idiot. And I'm just like, oh, so you guys are the reason for <laughs> the opiate crisis, huh? <laughs> You we're just just out there in the open wow, with it. Taking, taking blood money, huh, Craig? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. oh, sir, we are we're a different kind of blood money. We're oil. <laughs> we're oil. All right, guys. Uh, continuing, the Paul Colacho here, ESPN ninety seven five and ninety two five. I said that a Houston Astro is doing something that I was calling for all last year, and and Sean can confirm this. Jose Abreu is doing Pilates with all the effing oblique injuries. That the Astros had last year. He should not be the only one. And as someone who, on my phone, I could pull up on my Instagram, friends of mine, acquaintances of, of mine, I could probably pull up, I bleep you not, 15 different Pilates instructors who would actually respond to me if I sent them a DM. These aren't just ones that I am, I'm maybe creeping on or something like that because I want to slide in. No, these are people that would actually respond to me. We have more Pilates instructors than we know what to do with. You know, that could save the economy. And the Houston Astros need more Pilates instructors. I don't know what's going on with their training staff. I'm not a doctor. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell them how to do their job. But with the sheer amount of oblique injuries that the Astros dealt with, you know what helps work your obliques as someone who has done Pilates twice in his life? Pilates. Pilates are great. And good for Jose Abreu doing something to strengthen his core, which will hopefully strengthen his back, which will hopefully keep him playing as well as he possibly can and as well as he did in the postseason next year. Pilates, the key to the Astros' success in 2024, some are saying yes. We need to get some of these Pilates instructors a sewing machine, make some jerseys. <laughs> I know, right? Con- I know, <laughs> convert right? them. That's a little sexist, Sean. No, a little. Oh, oh, these. Oh, I didn't know these Pilates instructors were women. Are there any men? You Pilates said you weren't creeping on them. Uh, well, that and is you true. Said, you I said they're friends and acquaintances. I, you didn't say anything that these were women. And, well, also, some people might assume that if they were men, uh, that's what I would be oh. creeping on them, sliding in the DMs. You didn't say DMs, by the way. You said I'm trying to slide in, and then you well, just yeah, kept the going. Well, DMs. I, I just I the j- DMs. Okay, come on. I respect everybody, <laughs> as everybody knows. You know, uh, King of All Twitches says Pilates is for chicks. Uh, you should do it sometime. Be the one guy at Pilates. They'll be asking questions about you. Oh, hey, who are you? What are you all about? 
seriously happened once. I'm not kidding. It wasn't exactly a conversation I wanted to continue, but it happened. It happened. What? Why are you laughing so hard? I, I don't know. I'm just picturing you doing like a plank or something as people are asking you these questions. Is no, that... no. It was afterwards. Oh, okay. Was, everyone was like, oh. Who, and you're like, I don't want to continue this conversation because your forearms are shaking. Well, no. They, they were asking. They're like, oh, wow. Like, so how do your inner thighs feel, huh? Oh, my God. What? They, that, did not, they did not ask you that. They did. This was not the start of a- I swear a, to God. Internet video. It, I, it, this was. Uh, that's not what it sounds like. It was about to turn into. No, if you've ever done Pilates before, okay. Women have crazy strong inner leg muscles, and some of the things that they can do, you just are completely effed compared to them trying to do it. And they they like to know that they are stronger than you somewhere. So you know they see me like pretty in shape guy and they're like oh yeah well your inner leg muscles <laughs> like it was kind of like a talking down to you know <laughs> like clearly you haven't been here that much and i haven't i've done pilates twice uh both times i've done pilates it's been with uh a pilates instructor that i may have been uh interested in and one time i did yoga on a date and i spent the whole time uh staring at the person i was on the date with and uh, I got to say, fun time. But the actual yoga part, that sucked. All of that sucked. I was going to ask, is, is it just yoga? Is Pilates yoga? Oh, uh, no, it's different. Okay. So Pilates, you got this, like, thing. It's like a machine, and it, like, slides back and forth, and there's bands on it and stuff. Oh, uh, okay. Right. And uh, yoga, you're just on a mat. Yeah, and, you're. And... it's more like, whatever, body, body weight stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, both terrible on my crappy knees. Uh, absolutely horrible. If I had to pick one or the other, Pilates over yoga every single time. Yoga, it's you always end up, and by always, the one time I went, you end up with a, I ended up with a soft-spoken person at the front who was just saying a bunch of things. And I was like, what are you talking about? And, and that this person had a little bit of an accent, nothing against people with accents, but this person had a little bit of an accent and was like, I want a dog. And like, I'm like, what? What? A turtle? And I'm like, what? What are you? Huh? What? And, and 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 then everybody around like they know exactly what's going on, and I'm like I don't I don't know I, I just want to stare at the person in front of me. Yeah. Anyway, good for Jose Abreu. Good for, for Jose Abreu. We're <laughs> doing Pilates. Good for him. Oh boy, man, I didn't think that would burn up as much time as it did. Uh, what else do we have? Lance McCullers and Luis Garcia not doing Pilates, but they they had a catch on the field a couple days ago. That's good. It's so funny when it's. Wait, so can you throw up the mound? No, no, but they had a catch. Uh, but they had a catch. Like, how, how serious of a catch was it? Was it 75%? Was it 50%? Yeah. Was it just lobs? <laughs> was it hot potato? I, I need more specifics, person who reported this. It is the Paul Galancho ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Coming up next, the Houston Texans are reportedly thinking about doing something that I don't think would be smart. I'll tell you what that is next. First, let me tell you about my friends at mybookie.ag. Yes, we all love betting on sports. Hopefully, you took the Cougs in last night's game against Iowa State. But some of us like to play games to chance. Shuffling cards. Balls rolling on a roulette wheel. A slot machine. You can have all of the sounds and activities of a casino in your home, on the couch, in your home office, on the patio, without pants, thanks to my friends at mybookie.ag. They've got all sorts of online computer games, slots, table games, Texas Hold'em, and a lot more. You've got blackjack with real dealers, also for the poker as well. It is an awesome next-level online live Casino. So go to mybookie.ag to get started. Your first deposit, you get a bonus if you use that promo code BET975. Turn your home into your casino. With mybookie.ag, use promo code BET975. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with mybookie.ag.
Welcome back to the Veritex Community Bank Studios. Here's your host, former Shorecrest Preparatory All District Safety, Paul Galim. Only 30 more minutes of the most interactive sports talk show in Houston in its current form. Who's going to announce the changes? Not me. I'm going to Mexico. Now, I'm told that John and Lance discussed a person that came with me to the Super Bowl party that we had at Warehouse Live on uh, Sunday. And, you know, it was uh, the Sunday before this past Sunday. It was a great time. I had a blast. Uh, me and this person had a blast for a while, but things got things got a little dramatic afterwards. I'm going to keep things between us, although I have, I have uh, <laughs> I guess, vented behind closed doors to the point where it made its way to the radio co- side of things. Uh, we have... Someone calling in. I, I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is real. We'll 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 see, because this person does listen to the show occasionally. Um, is is this my date from Sunday that maybe wasn't a date? What's what's going on here? I can't believe it's your last show, Paul. Oh my God! I mean, I feel amazing right now, but I'm like. I'm also sad, but like I'm like I can't believe it's your last show. But I just have one question. What's that? Do you have any water? <laughs> Do you have any water? I don't. I don't have any water. I think. I think you got to stop driving, uh, person. Yeah. I theoretically know X because that that you, wouldn't you, be good. Do you have any gum? I I don't have any gum. I don't. I don't. I, got, I love you guys so much. I, I don't you, have anything Sean, for you. So okay, yeah, I don't want I'm you in my life sad. anymore. I, I Can you please get out of my life? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're, you're mean to me. Okay, that was it was unnecessary when you got mad at me for no reason. Very unnecessary. God forbid we have a conversation or hang out like adults, you know? God forbid. Anyway, we, we appreciate the... the that person contributing to the the show, because you know we we want the last hour of this to be just an absolute train wreck to remind people of all the good times, of all the times where I wasn't about to go Cabo on Brie. One, two, three, Cabo. <sighs> all right, guys. Um, there's something that the Houston Texans are supposedly doing in free agency that I'm not thrilled about. This is a report from Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, ESPN ESPN.com. Fowler writes this. If the Texans are one player away on offense, maybe they should make it an exciting tailback option, such as Saquon Barkley or Derrick Henry. There's buzz league-wide that Houston could try to improve at running back to help second-year quarterback C.J. Stroud. Most of a quality starting offensive line is under contract for multiple years. Several key players are pending free agents, including pass rusher Jonathan Grenard, tight end Dalton Schultz, corner Steven Nelson, defensive tackle Sheldon Rankins, and linebacker Blake Cashman. Houston likely can't keep all four, but should prioritize a few. If Grenard leaves, Houston needs to backfill an edge rusher who has upside opposite Will Anderson Jr. So these are all of the many things that the Houston Texans could potentially do. I want to focus on one thing. The first two sentences in this report. If Houston is one player away on offense, again, wrote Fowler, make it an exciting tailback option such as Saquon Barkley or Derrick Henry. There's buzz league-wide that Houston could try to improve at running back to help second-year quarterback C.J. Stroud. So here's where I get a little bit concerned. It is clear to me that the offense that the Houston Texans run is not compatible with every single running back. It's not. Damian Pierce was really good in 2022. He sucked in that offense last year. Is that Pierce's fault? Is it the interior offensive line's fault? I don't know. I think Pierce is more talented than Devin Singletary. Singletary, by the way, also a free agent, 
did pretty well in certain games for the Houston Texans as their lead running back. There were other games where he didn't do all that much. I think Singletary's a good player. I think Singletary's a good guy to have as your second running back. Am I going to go so far, though, in saying that, okay, Pierce isn't a scheme fit, Singletary's probably better as a number two running back, that the Texans should sign a Saquon Barkley or a Derrick Henry? I'm not going that far. I'm just not. You're going to have to spend money that could be spent on the defensive side of things, that could be spent on the interior offensive line if you sign a running back. And I don't like that I now am one of the people that believes that running backs are findable. I won't say that running backs don't matter like a lot of the analytics folks will. I think there are some guys who are truly difference makers, but they get hurt and you often find yourself having to replace them. Is a running back like a Saquon Barkley or a Derrick Henry, Barkley a guy who's been injured a couple of times, Henry a guy who is getting up there in age, who takes a lot of time to get moving forward, are those two guys going to be the difference for the Texans team that we saw this past year? It would help if they could run the football more effectively, but I just don't know that the issues with the offensive line had to do with the running backs on the Texans. Maybe in the case of Pierce, yes, as much as it had to do with interior offensive line that wasn't good. And to go back to what we talked about a little bit earlier when talking about the Texans in free agency, you saw Titus Howard, change his Twitter profile to read right tackle only. If he is a right tackle only and the Texans are looking at that, interior offensive line is what they should be addressing. And signing a running back to a short-term deal is not going to give you a whole lot of flexibility to sign someone that could be an impact player there to potentially sign an impact defensive player that is not on the Texans already and to re-sign Jonathan Grenard. It just makes it a little bit more difficult. So there you go. But sounds like, from the sound of things, as I said that twice, I was a little bit repetitive, that the Texans are at the very least thinking about signing a running back to help out C.J. Stroud. So there you go. There you go. It is the Paul Galan Show, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. While we're talking about the sports, back on topic. I'm going to shift a little bit here. I have a question for you guys. Who is more real between these two people? Mike Trout is back with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I think they're still called that. And was asked about his future in L.A. Now that Shohei Otani has gone cross town to the L.A. Dodgers. He is on a team that does not appear to be competing anytime soon. He was asked about perhaps trying to go and play for a contender at some point in his career. Here's what he told The Athletic. Quote, I think the easy way out is to ask for a trade. There might be a time, maybe, I really haven't thought about this. When I sign that contract, I'm loyal. I want to win a championship here. The overall picture of winning a championship or getting to the playoffs is the bigger satisfaction than bailing out or taking the easy way out. I think that's been my mindset. Maybe down the road, if some things change, Trout said that it could change. So he says all of those things. He has a massive contract with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. It does feel like he is just eternally F sticking in L.A. Do you read those comments and say, yeah, hey, he's a real one? He's a real one for sticking it out with this terrible team. I feel like in saying that he will stick it out with this terrible team, I kind of actually am okay with him potentially, you know, forcing his way out of town. The sort of the same way that Damian Lillard finally did this offseason, leaving the Portland Trailblazers after saying he was never going to leave because he wanted to do it the hard way to go team up with, Milwaukee, uh, with Giannis Antetokounmpo in Milwaukee. There's a part of me that feels like, okay, well, this makes it a little bit cooler if he were to leave. You know, it's not like he's abandoning everybody. But also there's a part of me that thinks he's full of it. Like, really? You want to stay here? You don't want to ask out? It just makes you question, like, 
What do you know? Do you know how this thing works? Like he <laughs> it doesn't feel like it, Sean. Because there's also reporting that he he was pushing uh, Angel's ownership to like sign one of the remaining free agents uh, that are still out there. And it's like, wait, <laughs> you've been on the Angels, right? You know, you know how that goes, right? Like, hey, also, he, the, whoever you sign is not going to replace Shohei Otani. Nope, <laughs> he is literally one of the best hitters and pitchers. In baseball, so, you lost two guys at yeah. once. It does feel like uh, it, it just always feels like the right thing to do is to be like, I'm loyal. Whenever, whenever anyone asks you a question, just say, you know, I'm loyal. But I don't, so I, I, I don't want him to be loyal here. You know? Yeah, exactly. But the right thing to say is, I'm loyal. I, I'm never leaving. But what if you're loyal to Bozos? I mean, what, what? At least you're loyal. I guess. You're not a snake. Well, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of loyal. There's been a lot of loyal people in history. Yeah. Do you think that they have regrets about the loyalty? Hey, the 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 captain of the Titanic was loyal to that ship. Well, he stayed on that thing. Guess what? He's dead. Oh. He would have died of old age. But he by was now. loyal. Unlike unlike that 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 bad bad man, uh, Billy Zane. Billy Zane survived. Picking up to pay and all. Picking up a kid just to just to get on. Honestly, a life yeah, it's survival instincts, man. I, that guy's a natural-born survivor. Yeah. Mike Trout, okay, cool. He's willing to go down with the ship. Is he more of a real one than Anthony Rendon? Anthony Rendon went viral a little bit earlier this offseason because he said this very accurate thing about baseball's regular season. If you could change one thing about Major League Baseball, if I gave you that power, what would you do? <laughs> I'm going to say something very lighthearted so I don't get in trouble when I get to yes. spring training. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to give you all an Anthony Rendon answer. Um, <laughs> the first of the day, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got to shorten the season, man. It's too many dang games. 162 games in 185, three days, whatever it is. Man. No. <laughs> we got to shorten this bad boy up. Let's go. <laughs> A lot of people are going to get mad at him for that. That's what I'm taking a deep breath at. But everything you said there is right. There's too many baseball games. And he was asked about his status with the Angels and his thoughts about baseball uh, this morning. Or excuse me, yesterday morning. Here's what he had to say. This is just a fun Q&A. Last year, you would said you'd consider retiring. What's your mindset now? My enthusiasm has been the same since I got drafted, to be honest with you. I'm going back and deleting old emails, and I emailed myself a pros and cons of why I wanted to stay in the game in 2014. My thought process of the game has not changed since then. The questioning continued. How does your pro and con list compare to 10 years ago? It's different. I'm married. I have four kids. My priorities have changed since my early 20s, so my perspective on baseball has been more skewed. Another question. Is it still a top priority for you? It's never been a top priority for me, says Rendon. This is a job. I do this to make a living. My faith, my family come first before this job. So if those things come before it, I'm leaving. The follow-up question. Is it a priority? Oh, it's a priority for sure because it's my job. I'm here, aren't I? Next question. Do you want to be here? I don't want to talk to you guys at 7 in the morning or whatever time it is. Do you want to be here playing baseball for the Angels? I have answered your question, so why do you keep picking at it? This might have been a case of where keeping it real goes wrong. And here's the thing. What he said for anyone with a family, that is true. I would imagine. It's not the case for everybody. Some people prioritize their career over their family. Or some people in the pursuit of providing for their family and believing that they are providing for their family, make the career more of a priority because the career provides for the family. I'm not judging anybody. It's one of the reasons I don't have a family is because I'm, I don't exactly feel like I'm going to be able to support kids and a wife, you know, the old radio salary. But I feel like Rendon's more real here and more people are going to respect Trout but I respect Rendon here because Rendon doesn't care. 
he is getting annoyed by those follow-up questions afterwards. Imagine following up with somebody who said, like, yeah, this is not my biggest priority. My faith and my family are my two biggest priorities. That's what it probably should be. There's a lot of people that take their jobs a little too seriously. It's one of the reasons I just don't go on Twitter, you know? Twitter's terrible. A lot of people in our industry, they're so married to the game that they sit in front of their effing phones or a computer for hours and hours looking through that hellscape. And, and I'm like, yo, prioritize something else. Prioritize your cat, for God's sake. Yeah, imagine like, yeah, of course Anthony Rendon's going to be like, yeah, I care about my, my, my family more than, more than my job. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I, I get that he's a guy who like has uh, – his love of the game or whatever has been questioned, but it's like, I don't, I don't know. Ask, ask the Washington Nationals if, the, if he loved the game enough when he won the World Series for them in 2019. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, at a certain point, it's like, he gets paid, I mean, he gets paid a ton of money. He signed a $250 million contract. That's the other part of it, too. It's like, well, it's not the biggest priority because I know I'm going to keep on making money as long as I play. Yeah, it's like, well, I can do what I want. It's like the pros and cons list thing. It's like, I can do what I want and make way less money, or I can do this job that I, maybe I don't like as much, but make $38 million a year. Uh-huh. Tough living. Yeah. Would you do a job you hate for $38 million every year? <laughs> I would do it for a lot less than that. <laughs> I would do it for a lot less. Paulie can be bought. He can be bought easily. Anyway, it's the Paul Galan Show, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Oh, my gosh. The last segment. The last segment, potentially, of my solo career in Houston. Wow. We'll discuss. Stick around.
Welcome back to the Veritex Community Bank Studios. Here is your ambiguously gay host, Paul Gallant. Last chance to dance, as Gus Johnson would say, for the Paul Gallant Show solo project with Sean Mapes. I'm not going to make the announcement as far as what's next because I'm not sure what I's have been dotted, what T's have been crossed. I do want to say one more time, I'm incredibly bummed out for my friend Josh Beard, who I've known for a really long time, plus other guys that that used to work for this station who are, are no longer a part of it. Michael Connor, who... I, over the last couple of months, I've, I've really come to enjoy to get along with. And Andrew Carlson, who I've also known for a very long time. Um, not the only people that are no longer a part of the station. And it's all budget reasons. And that's something I 100% believe. I, I know that a lot of fighting has have been done to try and keep our lineup the way that it was. I, I felt like we were making some headway, but... One of the things that you come to learn in life and you accept it as you get older and older is that you just don't have that much control over anything. Now, I will say that what bums me out the most about this industry is how many people get essentially phased out of it through no fault of their own. If someone works hard... You like to see them continue to have the ability to work hard, but I, I get how you know this country of ours works. Capitalism is capitalism. The bottom dollar is always going to be the loudest voice in the room. It just bums me out that it went down like this, and I'm, I'm just tired of of seeing people that I'm close to in this industry just leave. I mean, I got a long list of people that I've been co-hosts with who have been my producers that aren't doing it anymore. And, I mean, I've been got a couple of times. I'm really thankful that I'm still working here at ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. That will continue after the end of this show. I will, I will be in another spot. Again, I, I'm not going to say everything that's going down. But I am bummed. And at the same time, I am excited. I know for some people that you've probably come to, if you've been sticking around for a really long time, my style, which is definitely weird, a little bit all over the place. I know I love working, not by myself, because Sean Mapes does an awesome job behind the glass. And Sean, I'm so thankful for the last, like, basically year and a half that we've had just the two of us hanging out. It's been so fun. This truly has been this solo side of things, but with you as my uh, partner in crime. This has been the most fun I've ever had doing radio in this town. I'm not kidding on that front. And we're going to continue to do stuff together, but th things will change a little bit. And I think for some people, you're going to really come to enjoy what's next. I think for some people, my ADD gets a little bit annoying. <laughs> I have been told that by multiple, <laughs> multiple people across the country while trying to get a job. Paul, why can't you stay on top? Well, I think I'll have a little bit more luck on that front going forward. Um, I'm very thankful to everybody who has listened to this show over the last couple of years since I've been in this time slot. And again, I will still be here at this station. I'm also thankful to all of our sponsors and everything like that. And um, yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to Mexico for a couple of days. I'll see you on the other side. I'll still be at this station. We'll continue to put out fun sports content. And occasionally I'll get serious, you know. Occasional political hot takes. Huh? Tucker Carlson impersonation. Huh? All sorts of stuff like that. But uh, in the meantime, um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. I'm going to be completely off the grid in Mexico for uh, like five days or so. And assuming I make it back, guys, it's been real. I've had a lot of fun doing this thing in this time slot. So. So long. Farewell. Big thanks to Sean Mapes behind the glass. You'll hear from me again when you hear from me again, but it'll be right here. Have yourselves an awesome day. Peace.
bitch.